Yes, man. All righty, all righty. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom to everybody. How's everybody doing today? Let's see here. I'll praise the most high. I'll praise the most high for another beautiful, glorious day that we get to see. The Lord has woken us up today and given us another opportunity to get it right. All praise to the most high. All praise. I just want to say good morning. I'm Brother Yabril. Yabril Yehuda. Yabril in Hebrew means God's son. Yehuda is Judah. And um, this is the name that the Most High gave me when he came into my life. And he gave my wife the name, Sister Micaiah. Micaiah. Um, Sister Micaiah, what does that name mean? You want to go ahead and tell it everybody? Means who is like the Most High. Who is like the Most Which High. Is very interesting because Michelle uh -huh. actually means the same thing. Isn't that something? So the <laughs> English name and also the Hebrew name correlate the same. Um, that's amazing to me. This is how the Lord does things. Even my American name, Harold, means valiant warrior. And also, Harold also is another name that I was given. Harold is also, whenever there was battles coming or something would happen, there would be a Harold who would yell and let you know and warn you that there's trouble coming, there's trouble coming. And that's my first name, Harold. It's amazing. That's my so-called American name. But what it is, it's a warning. And uh, what we're doing right now is a watchman. We're warning you what's coming on the earth. And we're warning you about the things that are coming because a lot of people are going to be deceived because they're not learning. They don't have understanding. And the Most High is not giving them visions or dreams to interpret the things that are unseen. And the way you tap into dreams and visions and not only that, but also to the truth that the Holy Spirit gives you is by walking right. And the only way you're going to walk right is start studying to show yourself to be approved because these words will convict you. They'll make you want to do right. They'll make you want to wake up. They'll make you want to see the light. And so it's so important. Um, and right now, our biggest thing is to wake our brothers and sisters up. Yes. That's our thing. You know, that's the whole purpose that the Lord has us here. And he wants us to share knowledge and wisdom amongst each other. Um, there's, a, there's a movement going on right now, a great movement. And that movement is the children of Israel, the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes are awake right now. And now that we're awake, we have so many different nations that... Um, you know, they, they, they are coming in and they're trying to stifle what the Lord is doing, but you cannot stop biblical prophecy. It's like a freight train, you know, it's like it's full force and nothing can stop it. And, and this is why right now you see on this earth that the so-called Japan, you saw the great earthquake happen on the first of the year. Now, this is so ironic. Now we're also seeing some other things that are going on. Um, on my TikTok, it's crazy because I've been posting and trying to post some, um, you know, I, I'll go out and I'll talk about current events and things that are happening relating to scripture, but they will not let me post my videos. It will, they won't let it they're upload. Circulating. They're not, they won't, no, not circulate. They won't let me post it, period. Oh. It won't even go on. Yeah. So what they're doing is, because we know that China also, you remember they, they're banning the Bible and they're doing some things. So I don't know if they really want the word to get out. I think it might be a go against their principles there. I'm not sure because it's not making sense when I'm not saying much. Let me give an example. Um, I was just posting yesterday and I was posting about the thing that happened in Miami. Everybody know what happened at the mall. And I was posting about that situation and how they said these so-called dark creatures were straight chasing everybody. And um, so I was posting my thoughts about it and they would not play. Now saying that hindsight is 2020 because I did get a lot more clarity after it wouldn't post on really what's probably going on. Um, we're going to read something. We're going to read Zechariah 5, chapter 5, and I want to read that because there's a lot of people who don't understand something. Um, and before I get into that, I'm going to say a prayer real quick. Sister so McKay, let's say a prayer okay. for everybody. Dear Heavenly Father in heaven, blessed be you, Adonai Yahuwah, El Shaddai, God of God and King of Kings. For you are Yahuwah, he who breathes life, nail in hand. Father, thank you for breathing life into us, Father. For we've been the lost sheep, Father. For three days, Father, we've been in gross darkness without your laws. Thank you so much for waking us up, Father, giving us understanding and giving us dreams and visions. And not only that, Father, but lifting skirts so we can see what's really going on, showing the private parts of these men out here, Heavenly Father, who are doing things and that are in the dark. But yet, you're bringing all these things to light. Father, we're seeing right now that these pastors, these deacons, and these elders are being exposed for who they truly are. And now, Heavenly Father, all these rap stars and these artists and these movie stars who sold their souls to Satan, Beelzebub, Lucifer, or the adversary, 
Now he's calling this marker in, and so many of them are leaving this earth. So many are being exposed for the dirt and the garbage they're doing. Thank you, Father, for your promise that in one day, one day, Father, you will wake us all up. And one day you said that there will be no stone unturned, that you will flip them all over so we can see the truth. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, right now in heaven, I pray, Father, with your servants. You said, Heavenly Father, that if it was possible, if it was possible, in the book of Matthew, you said that you can fool the saints. But it's not, Father. You said it will not be because your children are giving your spirit. They're giving your grace, Father. They're given ability to repent so that you can get them visions and dreams of what's coming. And not only that, just give them, Father, wisdom within. Father, I pray right now with this alien deception that's coming and all these different spirits and these hologram machines and all these things they're pulling out to put fear in people, that you give them wisdom and understanding so they don't just jump and run and fall out of a window or follow the wrong person or jump into the wrong vehicle or jump into the wrong UFO or ship because they're worried and scared as they're so scared because of lack of knowledge, Father, that they do the wrong things. I pray right now, Father, today, with all that's going on, that you give our people, Father, the visions and the sight and the eyes and the ears to hear and the eyes to see and only the things that you want us to see and the things that you want us to do and the things you want us to hear. For, Father, the enemy, Father, has come in. He's made this day a cloudy day, Father. He's mixed good for bad and bad for good, oil for water and water for oils, salt for vinegar and vinegar for salt, Father. He's turned things upside down. Now our days are cloudy, Father. It's like a fog we can't see clear. But I pray, Heavenly Father, with your grace and your spirit, that you take those four winds, Father, for you said you are El Shaddai, he who breathes life. You said you're going to breathe the four winds into us, Father. I pray that you breathe those four winds and wake us up out of this deep sleep. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you blow those winds and blow that cloudy day away so we can see clear, Heavenly Father. For we are the lost sheep, but thank you for finding us. I pray, Heavenly Father, those who seek you with their open hearts father who've been lost for so time so long for such a long time father that you come into their lives and show them your truth show them your light show them your urine and your theorem heavenly father truth father i pray that you do this for right now we know that the holy spirit shows all things and avails all things i pray that you put this spirit in those who seek you father i pray heavenly father for that bright light that only you can give I pray, Heavenly Father, that you heal any sickness amongst the people here right now, your flock, Father. We're in a group prayer, Heavenly Father. We're all praying together for all of us. For you said we're one body, one mind, and one spirit. We follow you and your son. I pray, Heavenly Father, right now you put your spirit in us so that we can be part of that body, Heavenly Father, so that we can be with you and you with us. I pray these things and ask you bless this lesson as we go through this deception that's going on and read about the ancestors now adam and eve was deceived by lucifer from the beginning and he never changes heavenly father i pray that you put in their hearts to understand he doesn't change i pray for wisdom a just tongue and understanding and i pray these things in the name of your son yeshua i pray amen, amen. oh praise him on sir hallelujah just because there's anything you want to say before we get started um well if you're new here because i see some of the same old questions uh -huh. so. Uh, let's just get those out of the way. They still ask the same uh, questions? Well, it's people that come in that's new all the time. Okay, go ahead. Um, I see a question about what religion are we? We're not a religion. No. We do believe in the Bible. We believe that the Most High sent His Son to say for our salvation. And we do believe in repentance and water baptism as well. Right. Uh, we do believe that, um, well, we know. It's not a belief. We know these things. And we right. also know that um we are a part of the 12 tribes absolutely yes okay and our identities were stolen yeah you know, we don't have to guess yeah. if we're the 12 tribes <laughs> our history in the bible it, when it breaks down the bible prophecies we're the only people on the planet that fit it so there's not a thing where we got to guess who we are it's not a thing where we got to prove who we are this world is proving who we are. The place where we at is proving who we are. The people who are above us, Edom and Rome, the donkey and the camel, that symbolize, you understand, proves who we are. We are the lost sheep. We are the 12 tribes. We are the indigenous people of the Americas. We are also the ones who ran a part of Africa. When you called um, Israel that's over there right now, in 70 AD, General Bassman and Titus put a slaughter to our people. And a lot of us ran out into Ghana, Nigeria, um, Igbo, Igbo, and other nations in Africa. 
But a big portion of us ran into what you would call Britain, France, Germany. Also, they were in what you would call, um, or we ran all of what you would call Russia for a long time. They called us Moors. Moors simply means black. Um, when you say Indian, Indian simply means you're indigenous. You're an indigenous person to that land. That's why Malcolm X said this. He said, we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. Dr. King said, we'll exile in our own land. And they took him out. Why? Because they were speaking too soon. We are the so-called ancient people. Um, when you deal with Mayans, Mayans means he who brought us over the water. Then when you learn about the Omnac, the Omnac were the ancient people who were the original people of the Americas, which you call Atlantis, Tamaru, Turtle Island. You understand? It had many names. And so these people were the progenitors of our race because um, Abraham was Phoenician. And so when you start learning these, you learn that the Egyptians also sided with the so-called Mayans. And they sided with them and they learned a lot about um, the Onex taught them and the Mayans taught them the things they knew. They tried to imitate the pyramids that we use for worshiping. When you come into the Americas, you'll learn that there's 2,000 over 2,500 pyramids in America. This is, the, this is why we got to get rid of this deception. This is what this lesson is on deception because there's a lot of deception going on right now. And so what our job is, is to bring you guys light in this darkness because the Lord says he's coming on a dark and cloudy day. Now, when you say the Lord said we're going to be in darkness for how long, Sister Micaiah? Three days. Yeah. Three days, a time, a time, and a time and a half. So that simply means we'll be without his laws for a time, a time, and a time and a half. But then he said he's coming on a cloudy day. What does it mean, cloudy? It's a physical and a spiritual, just like the Bible. When you read that Bible, the Old Testament is what you would call carnal or physical. The New Testament is spiritual. So when you read the word, it's actually carnal and it's also spiritual, just like the Bible. So when he says he's coming on a dark and cloudy day, that means he's literally coming on a day when it's dark and it's going to be cloudy. But he also means something else. It's spiritual. It means that everything right now will be cloudy. It will be clear. They would be mixing truth with lies. And so that we'll be in a fog. We couldn't see clear. So all of this is why he's coming back. He's coming back because right now we've been without the laws. Right now we've been in a cloudy day where we are. Everything is mixed. You know, they take salt for vinegar, vinegar for salt sugar for water you understand it's just like everything is turned upside down and so right now we got to understand that we got to come out of this and know what's coming on around us because you're going to have fear and once you go into fear you're in bondage and we know that a lot of people took that so-called miracle medicine because they were fearful mm -hmm. and so once you become fear you're like haran when abraham haran went into the fire haran had bands on his hands so did abraham and all they had was their underwear but Haran's heart, he said, this is what Haran said, this is Abraham's brother. This is Lot's father. He was 87 years old when he went in the fire. Abraham was about 67 years old. But when he went in, his big brother went in, his big brother said this. He said, if it goes well with, with, the, with the king, I'm going to side with him. But if it goes well with Abraham, I'm going to side with him. So his heart was halfway. It wasn't all the way with the most high. But Abraham's whole heart was with the Lord, just like ours should be. And so since his heart was not with the Lord holy, when he went into that fire, he burnt up. Did not the Lord, our Father in heaven, say, I wish that you were hot or cold, but since you're lukewarm, I'm going to do what? Spew you out of my mouth. So since he was lukewarm, he burnt up in the fire. Mm -hmm. On Abraham, the only thing burnt up was what? The bands Man, on his arm. He was set free in that fire. What do those bands represent, Sister Micaiah? Bondage. It represents bondage. And so in this world, when we believe the doctrine of these men, when we start listening to what they tell us about science, about mother nature and about evolution, and they start showing us these heart machines and these these um, images that they project with their so-called machines out here. And even these so-called we're going to read about their so-called UFOs, which are real, which are under unidentified flying objects. Um, we call our ships chariots. It's totally different than a UFO. When a UFO can be shot down, it can be hit. You understand? But a chariot, you can't do anything with it. So saying that, there's a lot of deception that's going to come on this earth. And that Miami situation, um, with that mall situation where the, all those cops was there and they said these big dark entities was fun, uh, following them and chasing them. I want you guys to kind of get this. And I'm going to go into some things to give you something. It's twofold with that. There's a physical and then there's a spiritual. The physical aspect of it is this. One day when I was, you know, I always give my dreams and visions, and I'll go over this one when I've been over before. One day I was in the home, my home, 
And when I was sitting there, and this is what the Lord does, Job chapter 33 and one tells you, visits you in a dream. And he comes in and he seals a man's instructions in the dreams and their visions. And he does this for a reason. He does it so the people, his children, will not be bamboozled, hoodwinked, ran them up. And he doesn't want them to be led astray. So he'll come to you in a dream and a vision to give you instructions so you have understanding. And so as I was sitting there and I was in the house, and um, as I was in the house and I had my dream and my vision, you know, it's crazy because all of a sudden, the Lord took my Rowak, or what he calls the Holy Spirit. He took my spirit. He took my, my spirit, Rowak of my spirit. And when he took it, I so I couldn't believe it. He, he, I woke up. When I woke up, but I was in my house. And I'm in my house. I'm like, man, what's going on? What, what is this? And I don't know. But some say, go look out the window. So I opened the curtain. And it wasn't something the Lord said, look out the window. And I remember, it was a voice I heard, look out the window. So I opened the window up. When I opened the window, there was a ship just sitting there right in the sky. I kid you not. It was a UFO. It was round. It was metal. It was round. It was metal. And I could see that it had like this fire coming out of it or whatever it called the vapors from the bottom. But I was like, oh, my goodness. I couldn't believe it. So I ran. I ran and got Michelle. I said, Michelle, Michelle, come, come look. So Sister Micaiah came to the window. And when she came to the window, she looked. She said, oh, my God. She's real animated. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. I said, calm down, calm down, just calm down. She said, oh, this, this is Cherry, this is Most High. You know, and it was like, you know, and I'm like saying, no, no, I don't know, I don't know. And it was like one of those things where I didn't know. But all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the ship did this. It turned this way. So I could see the top of the ship, and it had a six on it. What does six represent, Sister McCarty? Man. It represents man. It represents man. And 666, you understand, is man when he's in sin. That's his symbol. And we know that Latin, all Latin language, or what we call the language of Edom or Esau, is Latin. And Latin is Satan's language. That's why the so-called miracle jab, the first patent numbers on it, Google it yourself, is 666 on it. So saying that, the Lord was showing me that there's going to be a deception. And that don't be fooled, because we're excited. But he told us straight away, don't be deceived in Matthew. And we're going to read that. So while we was all excited and thinking that, you know, we about to be gathered, you understand? The Lord's like, no, that's not how I'm coming. That is not me. I need you to understand, son, that that is man. That is Edom. That is Mount Seir. These are the ones who are going to fool you. So saying that, a lot of people think when they saw these things in Miami and they saw these things, nobody took pictures. Nobody got anything to substantiate the stories. So my thing is this. When there's something real going on, even when we in the heavens, or when we got these so-called things going off and even ships, everybody got pictures. Everybody got a phone now. Something on this show. So you got hundreds of people and nobody saw nothing. Nobody took a picture of anything. Come even on, folks. Footage, where Come were on. people at front that were in the mall? Like, you yeah. don't see any people well, just running in groups or anything. Like, you just see the cop cars. Exactly. And it's we really, know a lot of false flags yeah, going on. Yeah. And a lot of this is so that you guys have fear. And we want you guys to understand this. Lord, right now, the demons right now on this earth, there's 10% that are here, 10% that are loose. When you really start seeing the ones that are really going to be coming out, this is when the Lord's going to gather his children. When he gathers us, he's going to release the other 90%. They're going to see all this stuff for real. So what they're doing is they're showing you things that are going to happen, but they believe they're showing you with these so-called, what type of machines are those things called? They have this, uh, it's called Project Blue Beam. Project Blue Beam, yeah. That up, but they yeah. have holograms and all that. And they can emit stuff. them inside, outside. And remember, they own places, so they can put cameras up early and fool you. And so we got to understand that a lot of things, and this is why they would be solid and then they disappear. They'd be solid, they disappear, because that's how those machines operate. And if you shoot at them, you shoot at nothing. You shoot at a blank area, so you're not going to hit anything. Now, seeing that, I won't, I'm saying this because I know that a lot of this stuff is to bring fear upon people because once you're in fear, now they're going to bring in martial they're law. Manipulate. They're going to manipulate you. And now what they're going to do now is they're going to say, you need us so that you're protected. Right. Well, we need the most high. We have a living God that's protecting us. We don't need man to protect us because man is the reason why we're in this boat we're in right now. Man is the reason why we got this so-called education system that deals with the Darwin theory, deals with evolution. 
and telling you that man came from a tadpole, a tadpole to a frog, a frog into a monkey, a monkey to a gorilla, and a gorilla to a man. A bunch of bull hockey. I don't care how long you live, and when you read that scriptures and you go to Genesis 1, the Lord said he made everything according to his what? Kind. To his kind. He made gorillas and all of them according to their kind, the monkey species. He made frogs and amphibious animals according to their kind, you understand. He made snakes, which are in the same because they're cold-blooded animals in the amphibian uh, community. He made everything according to his kind. And so everybody who's been dealing with this Darwin theory, evolution, who's been dealing with mother nature when there's no mother in any of this, what's going on? Then they say science, or Second Timothy say falsely so-called. Science is six experiments. You first, you got a hypothesis or a theory. Once you got those two, you have a theory first, and then you got hypotheses on how to do it. So now you go ahead and start doing six experiments. And then once you do them, okay, after six experiments, you have what? A conclusion. Everything today is based off of hypotheses and a theory, but there's no true conclusion. This is why we're in a cloudy day. Everything's all mixed up right now. Everybody's been lied to. And now we're learning that America is the oldest continent on earth when we were taught that America is the new world. When America's the oldest continent exists. Then we're finding out that Egypt, ancient Egypt is here and that the one that's in Africa is way younger. We're finding out that there's more pyramids in America than anywhere else on earth, 2,500. And guess what? They're all step pyramids where so you walk up and do sacrifices on top. Africa doesn't have that. We're finding out that when you go to Tennessee, that Tennessee has a pyramid so large, it covers the whole town. Google all of this stuff, folks. Then Miami, where you saw these so-called aborigines or these, these, uh, these demons supposed to be coming out, these spirits. That land is ancient. When they dug up an old building there, guess what? They found a building that predated ancient Phoenician time. And we know that Abraham was what? Phoenician. So saying this, folks, I want y'all to understand, we've inherited lies. And now... We all knew this in the 1940s and the 50s. Remember, how did we used to dress in the 20s and the 30s? We be sharp. How would we dress? Clean. Clean. Dressed like so kings and priests. And, and they was jealous of that. Yes. That is why they, they put our men in the movies with their pants hanging down. And now our daughters are walking around naked. In the 1930s, the 19, excuse me, let's go to 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, even up to the 1960s, we dressed as kings. And priest. Listen, even our children have bow ties on. When you go to Black Wall Street and you look at how we dress, we will dress fly. But what did they do with the movie industry? They started giving us Foxy Brown and Dolomite and all these characters you understand that dress any kind of way and do all these different things. And then later on, they start giving us these mafia movies and then start pushing Scarface and all this stuff on our people. And then the next thing you know, they start showing these young men walking around with their pants down there. And what do our people do? What do we always do? The end thing. If it's the end thing, we copy it. They know who we are. They study us. We are something they study. Why do you think they all want us to join them? Why do you think they keep saying, hey, what do y'all think about this? And what do you think? If we don't salt this earth, there's no flavor. Speaking of, yes, ma'am. The I won't turn them off. All praises. All praises. All praises. All right. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go. Um, yeah, they dress like pimps. Exactly. And this is how our children, people have been. I'm going to turn the comments off on um, TikTok so the moderators can go ahead and, and that another thing so we don't sit here and have to go through all that drama with these people trying to cut us off. All right, let me go ahead and do that real quick. And we want to turn the comments back on TikTok. Once we um, go back on, we're going to get some questions. So I'm going to turn them off now because what we do is we've had we a lot of questions at the, at end. the end. Yes. Yeah, we answer questions at the end because what we found is we begin cut off on TikTok because these other nations come in, they get on here about 20 or 30 of them at a time typing, and they talk in that other language, ish language, and they'll say, hey, we need to get them off of here. We need to get them off of here. And they start going back and forth with each other. And then they, what they do is all of a sudden they lie and say, we're saying something we didn't say, and then they kick us off. Then you got a whole week before you can get back on again. And sometimes it'd be two weeks. So saying that, you guys need to all join me on, you guys all need to get a YouTube page. I'm finna get on, um, uh, what is it, Rumble, Rumble or, or Patreon. Or Patreon. I don't know if you guys can recommend which is better, Rumble or Patreon. Um, I don't know which one is better, but if you guys can kind of tell, matter of fact, let me turn well, this setting YouTube on. Settings. Yeah, I'm going to send these settings on real quick, comments. So everybody here, if you guys can tell me real quick, I got you on my YouTube page and I got you on here. Who do you guys think is better, Rumble or Patreon? 
if you guys do your experience, this is a question I want to ask you guys because you may know. Um, welcome everybody on my Facebook page, Gregory Clark, Shabbat Shalom, Neil Yah Israel. She said Rumble. All praises, she Neil. She's she's a she's a soldier, boy. She's always yeah, here. Yeah, from London. Neil, we all love praises. you. Neil is from London. Uh -huh. Oh, praises. So, folks, we have people from London, from Britain, from Africa, from Germany. We have people from all over the world that comes on and learn. And, they, and it's been such an outpouring of love. All praise the most high. Um, uh, who is this? Yafa, Aqua, Yawanda. Uh, praises. <laughs> Can you read that right there? Yafa. Oh, uh, Yafa, Aqua, Yahawada. Yahawada, all praises. Uh -huh. Peace and blessings, all praises. All praises to you guys. All right. Praises to you guys. All praises. Uh, we want to thank you guys so much here uh, for coming on today. And if you guys said, we've got people from Japan also here. All praises. we got people from Japan. Wow, we got oh, people from all praises. over the world. They just told me they're from Japan. Okay. Uh, shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. shalom to our moderators this morning. We love you. Give a shout out to my moderators, please, yeah. Sister Makaya. Fancy seed planner, Jojo Dancer. Fancy seed planner, Jojo uh, Dancer. Zuri, child of Zuri. Yes, yeah, Zuri, child of Israel. Uh, let me see. I don't see Shalon on here. Shalon, you don't see? Uh, uh, oh, praises. See oh, okay, no problem. Let me see here. Settings. Moderators. So we have um, oh, I see Shalon. Welling Shalon Woman, hey, Jojo Shalon. Dancer, Fancy Seed Planner, um, Dr. Kimberly. All oh, praises to the Most High. All yes. oh, praises. Bless you. Just want to say hi to my moderators. I love them so much. There's some beautiful women. Do, do beautiful job. women. We love you guys so much. And um, who we got on moderating on our YouTube page here? I just called them out. Shalani, okay, I'll pray. Hey, Shalani, Zuri, blessings to you too. All praises. We don't need them here on our Facebook. We've been doing pretty good there. So yeah. did you guys give me an what you think, Rumble? Or what do you guys use, Rumble? Or do you use Patreon? What is better? I'm thinking. Hell yeah, saying rumble. Rumble. Here. I don't see any response. No other sponsors. Yeah. Nobody says anything. Okay, so we won't worry about. It. Someone else just said. Well, any woman said rumble. Also, she said rumble. Everybody said rumble here. Oh, I see rumble. Rumble. Okay, rumble. so I'm gonna go to rumble platform, um, eventually because they're stifling me oh, so much on this so-called TikTok. They're stifling. Yeah, when I, I'm yeah, about YouTube's been mm -hmm. doing something too that's weird. Like the last yeah. time we was on. And people were saying that um, they can't it froze and they can't and, subscribe. Yeah, a lot of people saying they try to subscribe to my channel, they won't let them. And oh, really? Yeah, I had it on oh, YouTube, wow. and it was more so on TikTok. I think they've been trying to subscribe because I'm at fifty four point four thousand people. Right. So the closer I get to sixty, they just keeps like stifling it. Yeah. And so some people say they can't get on. So we do apologize, folks, for that. Yeah. Um, you're the child of Israel. Blessings, life. blessings. Shabbat shalom to you. Yeah. Anthony uh, Davis, I think um, I think I sent the money for feeding the homeless to the wrong account. Okay, Anthony, um, we'll we'll straighten it out later. We, if you did, we apologize. Um, yeah, it's dollar sign Y A H S Yas Mana M A N A. So if you send it to the dollar sign Big H fifty fifty, I don't use that anymore. It's dollar sign. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it does. So I don't know if you can send it to the wrong one. No, because my grandson, I sent them some money. And what happened was um, he changed his, 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 his thing and it went through. No, he lost it. So you might be right. He lost his phone. But we'll work on that later after the lesson, folks. We won't yeah. worry about that stuff right now. I want to I wanna yeah. say shalom to Kathleen Reed and Mother Pantica. Oh, yes. Blessings, Kathleen uh, Reed, Mother Pantica. Blessings, yes. yes. Oh, All praises. Kimberly, Dawn Dills. Right. These are some of our regulars here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because... There's a lot of people here, and you know, you get these negative comments out, and this is why don't my moderators even dealing with this stuff. Right. All right. As if somebody said here about being a real Hebrew, well, let me educate you first of all on something. Um, comment settings and turn them off. First of all, let me explain something to you about a Hebrew. When you say a real Hebrew, now you say you're not a real Hebrew. That's what you just said. And I heard somebody say that, and it's okay. I'll address some of these negative comments. First of all, what is a Hebrew? Hmm? You tell me since you're so educated. What is a Hebrew? A Hebrew term was given to us, you understand, by the so-called Ish people in 1891. Not Hebrew, we're Ivri. So first of all, you telling me I'm not a real Hebrew, you don't even know what the term means or where it comes from. We're Ivri. That's who we are. We come from Eber, which comes from Shem. So we have a bloodline 
This bloodline, you understand, is 12 brothers who had 12 sons. They had 12, Jacob had 12 sons and one daughter, Dinah. We're of the bloodline. We're the only people who fit the biblical prophecy. We're the only people right now coming back on telling the truth and stop filtering out the lies that the so-called religion has brought in. Constantine, the Christianity, the Roman church, the Vatican, and all these other institutions. We're the ones bringing the light. We're the ones bringing the truth where everybody else has distorted it. That's why the Lord says he's coming on a dark, which means no laws, and a cloudy day, which means everything's distorted. And that's why he's coming back like a thief in the night. They're going to be eating, sleeping, marrying, and partying. And folks, I'm telling you, he's coming right around the corner. You think that stuff at the mall just happened in Miami? It happened for a reason. They know the time is short. They're trying to bring fear upon the people. Once they get you in fear, they're going to put you in bondage. And once they got you in bondage, they're going to take you and do things with you. This is why you got to wake up. You got to wake up before you run into a burning house. And a lot of us have been sitting in houses that the roof has been smoldering. Mm. It just ain't fell in on you yet. But I'm telling you right now, if you don't wake up, if you don't stop with these semantics and all this negative stuff, these so-called other nations that are coming on here, you guys are going to be the chaff anyway. You're the fire. What you say don't matter or mean nothing to us. Why? Because the Lord said you like spittle, like a dewdrop on a leaf compared to Israel. So what you think or what you feel means nothing to us. This is for our people. This book was written by our people, to our people, for our people. Y'all just hijacked it. And then you came with these other religions that revolve around it. And now you want everybody to follow you and your gods. We don't follow false gods. There's only one God. That's the God of Israel. There's no other gods. Everything else is fake. It's false. It doesn't even exist. This is why we're doing this lesson, because there's too much deception out here right now. We're going to read the book of Matthew, chapter 24. And I want to go through some things and give you guys this because you guys got to understand right now, you got to wake up. There's a lot of people stuck on television and movies and all these things and not understanding that Hollywood was designed to keep you deceived. Now, we also know that the so-called um, big brother, as they call him, works with Hollywood and they work with Hollywood to put a lot of things in the movies. And another thing they do is this. They have certain machines and, and, and they have certain things they do to bring deception. They can give you holograms to look like things. And this is why you shoot at them and do things. They will, you, it won't work. They're going to be putting look like kingdoms and things in the heavens. And they're going to be having, this is what they're going to do. And then I read this. They've already started in some places. Exactly. I read the Rockefeller writers. I think that's what it was. And it says what they're going to do is they're going to be putting their holograms out. And at the same time, they're going to have real UFOs out there. Because they got about seven or eight different kinds that they actually have manufactured and they've been learning to control. And my dad is a military guy. He couldn't speak much on it, but he told me, listen, Junior, he calls me Junior. He said, Junior, listen, when I was in 1970, I was on a military base. And he said, when I was on the base, they had a UFO, but they couldn't control it. They was trying to learn how to control it. It was bouncing around and it, they couldn't, it was erratic. And they was trying to figure out how to control it. Well, folks, they figured it out by now. That was back then. Now we're leaps and bounds ahead of that. And they supposed to have seven different types. So what they've done is just reverse engineer the vehicles that the ancients, what you would call fallen angels who came to earth, they had children. These children were demonic, which means they had a de demonic spirit in them. They died. When they died, their spirits couldn't go to hell or it couldn't go to what you would call heaven. It stays right in the middle. So saying that, they were called demons. These demons teach them when they find something or they go into people, it teaches them how to reverse engineer and how to make these ve vehicles. Why? Because these spirits were in the past and they also know the future. They know exactly how to get them to do things. And then you'll learn that these so-called aliens that you call in aliens are actually demonic creatures. That's why if you pray, they scream and they holler. If you mention Yeshua's name, they run, they scream. If you mention Yahuwah's name, they scream. As a matter of fact, it's been said that if you mention Jesus, because they know that a lot of people, when they say that name, they're thinking about Yeshua. And so there's power not in the name, but power behind the, the faith in that name. That's what's the power come from, the faith in that name. And so when you call on that name and those names, that demons scream, they holler. As a matter of fact, and this is what the guy just said. He was just had a testimony. He was a He worked for the military. He said when he went down about 20 or 40 feet in the basement or in the bottom of the so-called um, base, because they have bases, we're going to read that about Mount Seir. Because Esau, Genesis 25, Esau was given Mount Seir. So, so when you deal with Seir, Mount Seir, you're dealing with Esau, Edom. 
they built bases. That's what they built bases. We're going to read this in Zechariah. And so they built bases all over. And this is where they keep their so-called UFOs. So the guy said when he went down, he saw a giant about 25 feet tall because they've already taken the DNA from fallen angels, children. That's why they take Smithsonian comes in, takes all the giant bodies from America mm -hmm. and they take them into the and hide them. They go into the bone marrow. And what they do is they take that bone marrow and they start splicing it with little. With, um, they probably splice it with something like a frog and then they put it into a, a mouse and into a mouse, into a monkey, into a monkey, into a so-called dog and from the dog they put into a cow and this is how they start doing things until they get the embryo and then they, what they do is they take that and they inject the embryo of a, of a probably a human and then what they do is they create these offsprings just like the fallen ones did so they have beings down at 25 feet tall but guess what he said he said one thing they had to do before they went down there and they could not even go around them they had to sign a disclosure saying that they could not mention yeshua's name and they could not mention yahuwah's name and, and they could not mention even the name Jesus down there. Because if they mentioned those names, you understand, it would cause hell and havoc down there. So they were not allowed to mention those names. But he straightway said that Yeshua and Yahuwah, listen, he said, if you mention those names, period, these demons quake. Remember in Miami? Uh, was that Miami where those people saw those spirits, those so-called aliens behind their homes? Uh, uh that was in uh, I think Arizona. Arizona, okay. Mm -hmm. One thing the young man said, he said they all went in the house and they began to pray. When they began to pray, they heard them in the backyard screaming and hollering. It was burning their souls. So I want y'all to understand that we're dealing with a demonic of demonic entity and demonic creatures on this earth that they've harnessed. And these creatures, you understand, um, it's like when you have AI. What is AI? AI is basically, and, you, and they actually ask AI, who are you? And he said, I'm from a Nephilim. I'm, I'm a Nephilim spirit. You know, I'm a demon. And I'm the one who's here, but I'm a friendly demon. So and there's no such thing as a friendly demon. So AI is basically a spirit that's coming from the fallen ones that's in those computers. So let's think about it. If you have a creature that is demonic and they've, and they've been made to do certain things and they're sitting in a body, what is that spirit going to do? It's going to keep making other creatures like it, and it's going to keep trying to increase it and better it, just like AI. The more information you give it, the more they multiply their intelligence and to the point where you understand that 20 times, 15 times, they say they're a thousand times smarter than humans. This is what's going on with these so-called creatures underground and these giants that are going to be, folks, giants will be released. Enoch said that. In the last days, they will be released. They're here. You guys have seen videos of giants doing push-ups on mountains, caves opening them, opening the door, and you can see them. They're here. The reason you're starting to just see this stuff now, because we're in the end times. And now that we're in the end times, they're about to show their face. All those things that were hiding, these so-called UFOs, these giants, and even these evil spirits under the river Euphrates that are loose are starting to manifest. Now, saying that, they know these things are coming, so they want to put fear in you. And so we got to read and start learning about this stuff. We're going to go over the deception, and then I'm going to read out of the book of Adam and Eve. Because these are the first ones to be deceived. By who? Lucifer, Beelzebub, or the adversary. And you guys need to get this book, the first book of Adam and Eve. It gives you a deeper account of what happened to Adam and Eve. And another thing it does, which is beautiful, it shows you all the workings and the trappings of Lucifer, Beelzebub. And even us and how we think and how we fear keeps us in bondage and makes us do things we shouldn't do. And this is the main thing this lesson about not having fear, knowing if you are walking with the most high, if you are walking with the lamb, his blood covers you. You do not have to have fear. And if you have a little bit of fear, and this is something I went on my wife the last lesson, if you have a little bit of fear with them, they can come in. So you can't show them no fear. You got to let them know. Remember Haran? Haran was fearful. His heart wasn't all with the most high. Abraham's brother, he burnt in the fire. Mm -hmm. Did not the Lord say we're going through what? The fire. We're going through the fire. You'll burn up. That fear will have you consume. You will be the chaff instead of the wheat that's in the storehouse. And this is why we're going over this. I'm going to read the book of Matthew, chapter 24. And we're going to elaborate a little bit so you guys get a little bit of understanding here. And Yeshua went out, excuse me, Yahushua went out and departed from the temple. And his Talmudim, or disciples, came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Yahushua said unto them, See you not all these things? Amen, I say unto you, There shall not be here left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. And the Talmudim came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? 
and what shall the, be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? So they're asking him, tell us, we need to know when it's going to be the end of the world. Oh, one second. Yeah. All right. Verse four, this is Matthew chapter 24, verse four. And who should answer and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. Folks, take heed. Don't let these men deceive you. Let me keep going. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. So these wars and rumors of wars, this is normal that we're hearing. But he says, don't be what? Don't be troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes and diverse places. So this is why you're seeing a famine right now. This is why you're seeing a pestilence. What is pestilence? That's that shot that they gave to everybody. That's why people are just suddenly dropping. Not only that, we're talking about gonorrhea. We're talking about AIDS. We're talking about a lot of diseases that are out here right now. Then it says earthquakes. Even on the first of the year, we see Japan was hit with a major earthquake. That is a precursor of what's getting ready to happen. Then he said he's going to happen in what? Diverse places. This is going to be happening all over the world. It says all these are the beginning. Get this. This is just the beginning of sorrows, folks. It says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted or shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my sake. Because he was talking to who, Sister Micaiah here? He was talking to uh, his people. He was talking to Israel. So he said, just like I'm hated, Y'all going to be hated of all nations, not some nation, but what? All nations. This is why when you get on these channels and you got these people from so-called the Palestine and these people from Gaza, these people from Ish, the Ish people, and these people from um, um, all these other nations, you understand, they get on here with hate. They hate us. They get on here even though they're going through perpetual hell. They're going through hell themselves. The same people persecuting them are persecuting us, okay? But they get on here and they hate us. They don't want you go into that land, they persecute our people. But then they want us to join them with the same people who are persecuting us. But the Lord told us in Zephaniah that he's destroying them. He said that he's doing this because they sold us to the Greeks and the Grecians. So a lot of these people want us to join them, but yet they hate us too. The Lord said, All nations hate us. Read Psalms 83, verse 1. It says they all were what? Confederate. All of them. Where we at here? Where we at? All right. Verse eight. Verse eight. Oh, it's, no, nine. nine. Oh, nine. Then shall you, it says, then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. What is happening right now, Sister Micaiah? All of these things that are listed here is happening. Right now as we speak, so many people are offended. And a lot of them are offended by this word that we're speaking right now. You know what I mean? A lot of them offended by what each other's saying. And they'll, what they've done is turned on each other. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because transgression of what? The Torah shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. The Torah is simply the first five books of the Bible. The Lord said, if you don't know them, you don't know his ways. All right. It says in verse 12, it says, and because the transgression of the Torah shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And this is why there's no natural love on this earth. It says, he shall endure, it says, but he that shall endure until the end shall be what? Saved. Will be saved. It says, the besora of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and the end shall come. 15, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation. What does that mean, Sister Micaiah? That's pretty much the false uh, religion. Catholic, yeah. False religion. That's the Catholic Church. Go ahead. What'd you say, sweetheart? I'm sorry. They own our religion. Yes. Yes. And so we know they're set up. They're the ones who everybody go to kiss their ring. And we know that all roads lead to what? Rome. So the abomination desolation is set up. This is when they're taking the Lord's word and they're changing it into what is abominable. It says, spoken of Daniel, the prophet, stand in the holy place. Who It says, who reads, let him understand. And this is why the so-called your Pope stands in what? The holy place. And they actually call him what? Father. But our father in heaven say call no man father. You only have one father and that's who in heaven. This is how you know he calls his blasphemy. He says, then let them which be in Judah flee into the mountains and let him which is in the housetops not come down and take anything out of the house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to get his clothes and woe unto them that are with child and woe unto them that give suck in those days. 
But I pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. For there shall be a great tribulation. Now, when he says this, it says, and I want y'all to get this. It says, it says, where it says this. Then you shall, there shall be an abomination of desolation. It says, let's see, then let him be free into the mountains. Yes, 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 yes. It says in 16, then let him which be, it says, let them which be in Judah flee to the mountains. Who's in the, the old land of Judah right now, Sister Micaiah? Yes. Who's in the land of Judah right now? The old land? Yes. Remember, yes. Judah was in, when, when you deal with that land over there where the ish is, that was Benjamin, Levi, and Judah. That's who it was there. They were called the Jews. So it says, let them which be in Judah flee to the mountains. Let, let, let him which is on the housetop come and take anything out of his house. Mm -hmm. Neither Now, this is not talking about in 70 AD, and we're going to get this. This is talking about now. Neither let them which is in the field return back to take clothes, and war to them are with child, and give suck in those days. Pray that your flight not be in the winter, neither on the Sabbath, for there shall be a great tribulation. Now, the tribulation has not happened yet, but when they come and go as holy mountains, and these missiles start flying, Gog, Magog, and Moab, Remember, he said that's Bastion Square and Ashdod. Ashdod is a small town in Jerusalem. Get this. For then there shall be a great tribulation, such was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor shall there ever be. And except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So the Lord has sped time up. And he's shortening these days. This is why your weeks seem much faster. Your months seem like they fly by and your years seem like it just started. Does it not, Sister McKay? What do you yeah, think? It's, I mean, I just can't even believe it's 2024 already. Already. And so when we're reading this, we're reading about the times we're in now. When we get in all, oh, excuse me, Shalaka, when you read Ezekiel chapter 38, uh, 34 through 30, 39, it tells you that we're in our land. We'll be in a city with unwalled cities. And not only that, because these people have walls everywhere, everywhere. Not only that, it says that when we are in our city, in unwalled cities, that their peace will be peace for a thousand years. And after that thousand years, that's when Gog, Magog, and Moab, Russia, Iran, and China, the remnant of them are going to come up against us. So this is talking about the people who are in that land right now who split it three ways. Get this. If any man shall say unto you, lo, here is the Messiah, or there, believe it not. For there shall be a rise of false, there shall be a, a false Christians, it's saying here false Christians and false prophets that shall show great signs and wonders so much as that if it was possible that they shall even receive what? The very elect. So, Makai, what do you get from that? 24, if you don't well, mind. Well, this is talking about the level of deception that's out here. That yes. even those who are the elect of the most high yes. could possibly be deceived, could possibly fall for it. Like, Yes. For example, mm -hmm. um, I seen a video circulating right. where this sister is talking about, and and I heard that a lot of our people are talking about getting on these UFOs when they see them. Mm. You know, mm. like, that's the thing. Discerning that's in this hour, we need to be praying for sharper discernment. Yes. yes. To be able to see through the many deceptions of the devil and his seed. Oh, praise right. the Most High! That is awesome because right now. I'm telling you, when the Lord showed me that that so-called UFO in the sky, it wasn't a chariot. It was a UFO. It was man-made. That thing turned over, and it had a big six on it. Folks, the Lord showed me straightway that's going to be a major deception. And if these people, you say you heard people saying that when they see them, they're going to go get on them? Yeah, some people are teaching people to get on them. Folks, you know? let me let me explain something to y'all. You don't want to do that. Really? get sharper discernment we got to pray to know yes which one of our which is of the most high and which is of satan you're not gonna have to guess if it's the most high you're gonna then he say you're gonna blow a chauffeur with the two witnesses who come up hither when the chauffeur blows that's what we know and not only that he's gonna take us up he said he's gonna gather us it ain't like we gotta walk out and then go get up there because because when you walk out and you go on something, that means you're volunteering. Remember, the devil yes. cannot do anything to you without permission. permission. Yes. So yes. Yes. how do they get that permission? They got to bring what inside of you to make you just want to do it? Fear. Yes. Fear is what? Bondage. Bondage. Once they give you fear, like with the mall, with these, these, these so-called dark figures that they're projecting out, and these so-called aliens running, but it ain't touching nobody. Nobody's hurt. Nobody's got a picture. None of this stuff. This is to deceive you. So you start having so much fear. So when they bring these chair, these UFOs in, you're going to be like, that's the Lord. He come to get us. Let's go out. But well, let's read what he says here. You should tell him about that vision you had 
where you you and it was like two other people had the same vision around the same time of us being yeah 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 up. so one day here. you know and this is why the lord says don't let any man deceive you they said in the mountains or the fields don't let them deceive you the lord is not gathering us that way the lord told me a vision and in my vision i was there and all of a sudden he took my spirit he took my rowak man it was so deep and whew, he put me in a place and i was standing there and as i'm standing there was i was like in the middle of a, all of a sudden i saw nothing but fire coming down to the earth fire and then i see walls of brimstone i knew it was brimstone because stuff was melting off them and when you light a piece of brimstone it melts like wax when you write which is sulfur brimstone is considered sulfur and it's 90 and on earth when you go to sodom and gomorrah if you go to youtube I want you guys to look up real Sodom and Gomorrah. You'll learn that in Sodom and Gomorrah that the sulfur is 98% pure, but the sulfur on the earth is only 35% pure. But for 500 miles, they have sulfur in that city that if you light it, it melts like wax, but it's so strong, the gas, you see a 12 by 12 room, a little piece like this, it will suffocate you. You couldn't even breathe. So imagine all that fire and brimstone raining down on Sodom and Gomorrah. And it was so strong that the people couldn't even breathe who tried to get away. And that city right now is nothing but ash, 500 and some miles. And so the Lord is going to do the same thing with the earth. He showed me these nuclear weapons are not going to work. That's why he said there are going to be wars and rumors of wars. Do not be afraid. These things must come to pass. Just like you saw when you see certain um, chariots come through from the heavens. And when they come through the heavens, you understand. What happens? They come through and they try to shoot them. Nothing happens. This is not, the, and they dismantle their weapons. These weapons are going to be dismantled, folks. I want you to understand what nuclear waste does. It contaminates. The Lord is not going to let them contaminate this earth because he's come to clean the earth. So what he's going to do is dismantle their weapons when they try to come on his holy mountain. Then what he's going to do is he's going to rain down fire and brimstone. What, is, what does fire do? What does it do? It sterilizes. It sterilizes. It purifies. And once it purifies, you need what to wash it away? Water. You got to have that water. So he's come to sterilize this planet because right now it's contaminated. It's contaminated, just like Sodom and Gomorrah was. Did he not tell the children of Israel that I'm going to take you into Egypt, which is considered what house of what, Sister Micaiah? Bondage. Spiritually what? Spiritually Egypt and Sodom. Spiritually Edom and, and Sodom and Gomorrah. And Sodom. This is what it is. And so, therefore, he's coming to clean this place just like he did Sodom and Gomorrah. But he don't want you to be deceived. A lot of y'all going to run out there. You're going to be jumping on stuff. Did y'all see War of the Worlds? Huh. Watch that movie. They put it right in the movies. Maybe. When people got up in that ship, what came down? The remains of them. The remains of them. Did he not say that they love what? Blood. Did he not say that? Since they love blood, he says what? Blood's going to chase them. Folks, this is deep. Don't be deceived. I'm going to keep reading here. Matthew 24, verse 25. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert. Don't go forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For as lightning comes of the out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the son of Adam be. Get this. And when you read Ezekiel 30, 39, he says that the stars are going to fall. The moon is not going to shine nor the, the sun, and the heaven going to roll up like a scroll when he comes. It just said here that he's coming like a bolt of lightning. You're going to know when he comes. You're not going to have to guess if this is the Messiah. You're not going to have to guess. You're going to know. Verse 28, for wherever so the carcasses is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Now we got to go to Ezekiel 38 and 39. He tells you that this day is going to be called the Feast of the Birds. It lets you know in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that this is the day that the Lord is gathering all the armies of the world to Armageddon. Armageddon is by what we call Mount of Olives. Mount Olives is by what? Hmm? Ashdod. Ashdod is where? It's by Jerusalem. That is where Armageddon is. This is where all the ships are right now as we speak, getting ready to go to battle. So when they start setting, letting these missiles off, that's the day that we are going to be gathered in the middle of the tribulation. He's going to gather us. As soon as they start shooting the missiles off, he's going to be gathering his children. All of a sudden, I'm sitting there, fire start coming down, brimstone coming down in that vision. And all of a sudden, I saw this lady being taken. I seen a sister being taken. Then I saw another brother being taken. And then another brother being taken. And these are our people I'm seeing. I'm not seeing these other nations taken. I'm only seeing in this vision, it was our people. And as I'm saying that, all of a sudden, the Lord took me 
And as I'm flying up, I say, Father, stop. Abba, please stop, stop. I say, Abba, can you let me see what's going on in the earth? Please let me see. I want to know. I want to be able to report it. Let me know. And I remember he said this. I'm going to take you towards the temple. And I remember he was taking me eastward towards the temple, the old temple that was destroyed. And as I looked down, he let me. And I remember he put me where I could look down, just like Superman flying. That's how I was. I'm telling you. And I looked down. I saw big balls of brimstone and hell and fire coming down. The whole earth was getting hit with fire and brimstone. He says, I'm gathering my children, but judgment is on this earth. So what I'm telling y'all is, it's not going to be the way you think. You thinking nuclear weapons and all this going to destroy this earth? No, 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 no. The Lord is going to do this. He's going to cleanse this earth with fire. But he don't want y'all to be deceived getting on some chariots or some, excuse me, some ships or UFOs. He wants you to wait for the chariots that are coming. He wants you to wait for the ships of Tarsha that is coming. He wants you to wait for what he promised you, not what man is going to show you and tell you they're going to give you. It says here in verse 27, Matthew 24 and 27, for as lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the son of Adam be. 28, for whatsoever the carcasses is, there will the eagles be gathered. And that is that battle of Armageddon, Ezekiel 38 and 39, immediately after the tribulation. I want y'all to get this, all you pre-rapture people. All you people who keep telling I'm going to be raptured, I'm going to be raptured, I'm going to be raptured. That's Christianity. That's not the scriptures. Let's read. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon shall not give its light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Then shall Adam, then shall appear the sign, the sign of the son of Adam in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth do what, Sister Micaiah? Mourn. They're going to mourn. This is when you know he's coming. Everybody going to be mourning. And they shall see the son of Adam coming in the clouds of heaven with power and what? Great glory. You're not going to have to guess that this chariot is for me. You're not going to have to guess that that UFO should I get on it. If you don't see these signs, you better not move your big toe. You better not move your big toe. That's real. Hmm? Remember Ephraim and Manasseh, Joseph's two children? What did Manasseh's children do? 40,000. They tried to go ahead and, 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 for, and enforce the prophecy and leave Egypt before Moses took them out. Didn't go well for them, did it? All 40,000 died. This is why we got to read scripture. My people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. knowledge. Let's read. Yeah. Let's read. Let's get knowledge from the most high, not man. Man will deceive you. Yeah. And men are what? They're beast. They're mm. beast. Let's keep reading. It says, and then shall, we're in Matthew 24 and 30, then shall appear the sign of son of Adam, having, it says, the son of Adam in heaven. And then shall the, all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the son of Adam coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a chauffeur. That's that trump. The two witnesses come up hither. And then it says with these two witnesses, the northern and the southern tribes, when we leave and we go up. Great fear is going to fall upon all of them. That's when fear is going to fall upon all these other nations who persecuted us, who's called us a byword and a proverb, who's taken our land, our money, and all our riches. Fear is going to fall upon them. Let me keep reading. Verse 30, then shall appear the son. Uh, no, let me keep reading. Okay. Then shall appear the son of Adam in heaven, and there shall be, then shall all the tribes of earth mourn. They shall see the son of Adam coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a chauffeur. They shall gather his elect from the four winds and from the end of heaven, from one end of heaven to the other. So let's read that again. Me, it's just Micaiah 29 says, when is he coming? Immediately after the tribulation. I thought everybody said that he's going to do a pre-rapture tribulation. He's coming to everybody. Mm -hmm. See, people don't read this word. This is why Christianity has got people turned around. This is why it's a cloudy day. Everything's confused. But we're going to go through this and read scriptures and dismantle that confusion. That's what the word does. The truth will do what? Make you free. It will set you free. I'm setting y'all free today according to the Holy Spirit that's in me because I'm not doing this. The Holy Spirit in the most high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have no power here. I have nothing. These are words of the prophets and the most high. I'm just a disciple repeating them. Yeah. A vessel. Me and my wife are vessels. It says 31. He shall send his angels with great sound of a chauffeur. Then they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. That's when he's going to gather people, folks. No pre-rapture. That's your churches. That's the same people who taken Israel out of the book and put themselves in. They're the ones prepping people to get on them alien ships. They're the ones prepping you to get on these alien ships, okay? Mm -hmm. All praises. What are we at, 31? 
32. Okay. It says, now learn a parable of the fig tree, which is the branch is not yet tender and puts forth its leaves. You know, <clears throat> it says, <clears throat> now know the parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you see the fig tree and you see the leaves are coming on the fig tree. Oh man, summer's around the corner. Look, the leaves on the fig tree now. So likewise, ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even where? Even at the door. And so Hallelujah. we need to understand that like a fig tree, when it put forth its leaves, you know the summer is near. With these signs that are here right now, the earthquake, the famine, the pestilence, and all these things, nation against nation, and all these people lining up in the valley of Jehoshaphat right now, because they're there right now. You need to understand that it is what? Even where, Sister Makai? Even at the door. This is even at the door, folks. It's time to get yourself right. This ain't time to play right now. You see, we're taking all of these myths out and giving you guys nothing but straight words of the most high to give you understanding. Everybody will wonder, when is tribulation? When does it happen? When is this? We're giving it to you right now, according to the words of the most high, according to Matthew 34. And I say, amen, I say unto you, this nation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Now, I've had someone say, oh, so they was talking back then that, you know, did that nation went past till these things be fulfilled, you know, but that doesn't mean that he was talking about back then. He said during the tribulation period. He says during the tribulation period, when you see earthquakes, famine, pestilence, and you see all these things happen in the first place at one time, nation against nation, rumors of wars. He said that generation, exactly. that generation would not pass until everything had been fulfilled. So this is that generation. Because for the first time, when we read Revelation chapter 16, verse 12, you say, you know, when the end is here, when the river Euphrates is dry. That didn't happen back then in that generation. That's happening in this generation. It says, in the last days that Edom and Rome would have Jacob's children under them, and his symbol would be the eagle. Huh? That's this generation. It says, in the last days, men would be lovers of themselves, covetous. You understand? Disrespect. With no disrespectful, with no disrespect to parents and with no natural what? No natural affection. No natural affection. There's a lot of parents don't even speak to their children. A lot of children not even speak to their own mom and dad who birthed them. Folks, there's no natural affection right now. We're in those perilous times as we Every speak. Sign. Every sign that is written that Yeshua spoke about in Matthew, Mark, Matthew, Mark, John, and Luke, all these here, all the signs they talked about, they're here. Even Second Timothy. Even Second Timothy. All of them, man, they're here. Who 34. Amen. I say unto you, this is the nation that shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But the day it says, but of that day and hour knows no man. So if anybody tell you they know when the Lord is coming, they don't know. All he said, I'm going to give you a sign. You see Russia, Iran, and China, when they come up against my holy land. And we know the river Euphrates in America is also called the Mississippi River. We've learned that Utah was called the land of Judah. We're learning that Goshen was Florida and Tennessee and all those other areas when you look at the old ancient maps. We're learning that also California was called the land of Israel. We learned a whole lot of stuff. We learned that ancient Egypt was the Grand Canyon and also ran into Tennessee with the pyramids. So, so much we're learning. So all the things that we've been told, you understand, all the lies we've been told, the skirts have been lifted now. And now we're learning and things are starting to make sense where they didn't make sense before. All praises. 36. It says, but of that day and hour knows no man. No, no, not even the angels of heaven. But who? My father only. No man can tell you they know the day when, when the end is here. All he said, I'm going to give you signs. And remember, the disciples asked you, sure, can you give us a sign? He said, I'll give you a sign, you adulterous generation. I'm going to give you the sign of Jonah. The sign of Jonah was simply three days of darkness. Just like he said in Ezekiel 37, the two witnesses were time, a time, time to have. They would be asleep. Then he said that the two, excuse me, that the, um, when you deal with the dry bones in Ezekiel 37, he said for a time, a time and a half, that these bones would be dead. And then when you go into the two witnesses, you learn for a time, a time, a time and a half, that they'll be prophesying for thousands of odd days. And then on the third day, they'll what? Stand on their feet. See, we're on our feet now, the northern and southern tribes. And now that we're speaking of the end, these nations are what, Sister Makai? They're afraid. They're afraid. They're totally afraid. They know this word, too. They know it. They know it better than us because they've been reading it longer. And a lot of these movies and stuff, they come out. Yes. With, they Bring it out, Sister Micaiah. Bring it, Sister Micaiah. Even from come the on. hidden books, the come apocryphal books, a lot of this stuff they take. They make movies about it. Yes. They make movies. 300. 
That's when we took 300 mil and killed, killed 3,000. They just use our stories, folks, to make their money. They they use it. Think about it. When they did the new Black Panther, the Black Panther movie, they said that they came up the Black Panther movie because Hollywood was about to be bankrupt. And they needed to make money. So who did they go to? Us, yeah. again. And we pulled them out of the bankruptcy. The same people demonize us. We spend money like no other nation. Like no other nation. Imagine we spend it with ourselves. Exactly. And cut them out. For real. That's what their fear is. Now, why do you think Black Wall Street was destroyed? Why do you think they came through and killed their commerce? They, that was a model of how other areas could be with us. They had to destroy that model. They had to destroy that blueprint. They had to destroy that because they didn't destroy that. Oh, my God. They couldn't make money off of us. We couldn't be that cattle or that goyim. You got to understand who took our identity, the ish. They're the main ones with the blueprint behind this, folks. They're the ones who orchestrating all of this stuff. Your so-called Rothschilds, your so-called... Uh, you know, all these bloodlines, supposedly. And then what they do is they change their names so you want to know who they are, the puppeteering. And we've gone through these things. And, I've, and I'm saying this for a reason. There's real deception. You guys don't really understand who runs this world. The ones who really run this world are the ones who kiss the, the Pope kiss their feet. Those are the ones who really run the world. That's ancient power. Those black men who feed he kiss, those are ancient, ancient, ancient Greeks, ancient Brits, ancient banks. That's why the Antichrist is described as having two leprous spots on his right, one on his right hand, one on his left. You cannot have a leprous spot unless you are of color. So this is pretty deep. Deception is all being fed now. Verse 35, it says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But that day and hour knows no man, not even the angels of heaven. We're in the book of Matthew, chapter 37. Mm -mm, chapter 24, verse 36. I'm sorry, Shalakia. We're in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 36. Um, but that day and hour knows no man, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. But but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of Sa uh, son of Adam be. How's the days of Noah, Sister Micaiah? Just like today. What does that mean? You know, it was very wicked. The yes. The had reached up to the heavens. Yes. They had um, all kinds of giants. Yes. And, and the giants were eating people. Yeah. They got restaurants here right now where they serve human meat. Yes. Yeah. Or There's a Nephilim spirit in these people. Come on, man. This is pretty deep. And so another thing it means also when it says, um, it says, but the it says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the come to some Adam be. Remember when Noah, when you read Jasher, you're gonna read that it was 780,000 people surrounded the ship at that time, about the amount of people on the earth. When they surrounded that ship, didn't Noah told them something? He said, Did I not speak to you and Methuselah, my grandfather, 120 years back? Right. And told y'all to get prepared. He said, I spoke y'all 120 years back because the ark was built in about five days. When you start really reading the scripture, you'll learn that the angels came down and helped them build the ark. But it spoke to them 120 years back. Then take 120 years to build the ark. And so once he built the ark, it's the same way as now. What's the ark today? What's the ark today to you, Sister Makai, in your mind? What do you think it is? It's spiritual now. Yes. Be covered under but who where's the temple at? Who's the temple? We are. So if the Lord took me up, what vessel was he taking? This vessel. It wasn't a boat. We are the ark right now. And the only way that you're going to be saved this time, you understand, it's going to be through Yahusha's blood. And just to be clear. Yes. Because Yahusha said when we're taken up, we'll be changed in an instant. instant. Yes, in a twinkling this of an eye. flesh has already been judged. It's already been judged. Thank you, sweetheart. That we is cannot beautiful. please the most high. Why? Because he's what? He's spirit. In order to serve him, you got to serve him in what? Spirit. spirit. You got to serve him in what he is. You can't serve him in fleshly ways. That's why he says your sacrifice and all that don't mean nothing to me no more. None of that stuff mean nothing to me no more. I want you to be obedient. What he told Samuel told Saul. Saul was slaughtering animals and all of this stuff and slaughtering them. And he said, Samuel. So he said, Saul, what are you doing? I thought you were supposed to kill those animals. Well, I kept them so I could do sacrifices. I thought you were supposed to kill the king. Yeah. Well, I kept him. I, I didn't want to kill him. You know, I like him. <sighs> okay. I'm going to kill him. But listen, you telling me you're doing this because you want to please the most. Does the Lord want sacrifices or does he want obedience? Exactly. That's what the Lord wants. He wants us to be obedient. He don't care about your worldly stuff. He just wants you to follow this word. He wants us, you understand, to have everlasting life. He don't want us to be deceived. This is why we're reading you these scriptures right here. Mm -hmm. He wants you to listen to him so you can be prepared to be gathered. You have oil in your lamp. You got something on that wick so he can see the light. 
so he can come by and scoop you up. If you're in darkness, he will not see you on that day. You better get some oil in your lamp. Get our you got to right. get your spirits right. And this is why 700,000 people knocked on that boat and the animals attacked them. You have no book right now. The only way you're going to be saved right now is you got to learn this word, get this spirit, and know that there's deception coming. And a lot of y'all are going to be failing because you're going to run out there, get on these vehicles because they're going to say, come on, you're going to do it voluntarily. The devil can't do nothing to you without permission. You're going to run out there, get on these ships. You're going to run out there, get on these other areas. But we just read, he says straightway, when he comes, it's going to be lightning and thunder in the sky. You're going to see, you're going to know when he comes with Michael and 10,000 saints. You're not going to have to guess if that's him. If you got to guess if that's him, that's not him. 36. But if that day and hour knows no man, not even the angel of heaven. 37. But as the days of Noah were, so also is the coming of Adam. So also is the coming of the son of Adam be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until what? The day that Noah entered into until the ark. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. So this means simply this. 38 is telling us that we're going to be eating, sleeping, marrying and partying. Well, y'all worry about wars and rumors of wars and who's doing that. And there's an alien deception and all of this stuff. Well, y'all doing all of this stuff because he's telling you things are going to be normal. He's going to come like a thief in the night. Why is he going to come in while things are normal? Because he's outsmarting them. They think that they're going to kill everybody. But he says, no, I'm going to go gather my leg before you fulfill your plan. While they're eating, sleeping, marrying, and partying, while you're going to plan this stuff on them, I'm going to come gather them from the four corners of the earth to the outermost parts where they were scattered through slavery. Yes. I'm going to gather my children. I'm going to fool you. You think you got me fooled, Satan, but you know not the ways of the Most High. This is deep. You know, and even going back to tribulation, you know, mm -hmm. our nation have been in tribulation for a very long time. Yeah, how many people talking about, well, Jacob's trouble is ready to start? What? Wait, wait. Jacob's trouble is ready to start? <laughs> Well, you what planet you on? If we was as numerous as the sands of the sea, and that book I got called American Holocaust tells you the 145 million so-called Negroes in the Americas when the so-called Europeans came. Immediately when they came, smallpox took out a hundred million. A hundred million. That's just sickness, that's pestilence. And we just read that pestilence is gonna cleave to the people, right? So also let's think about all the other people who died. You know, going through the seas when they did the slave trade in reverse, taking them to Ghana, Nigeria, from America. They took them to also Fiji Island from Florida. Just think about the people who died. Let's think about the hangings that happened. Let's keep going on and on and on. Jacob's trouble started a long time. Did not Yeshua say, if they persecute me, they're going to do what to you? When he died, our persecution started. He said, you my brethren. As they hate me, they're going to hate you. Our persecutors started long. Jacob's trouble been started. But Jacob's trouble's finna come to an end now. He's taking that cup of dread out of Jacob's hand, and now he's put it into theirs. That's why all these nations are perplexed. They're scared. They're fearful. Yeah. They know their time is up, and they know that our God, our living God, is here, and he's real. How do they know? Because men like me, women like my wife, and people like you guys right now are spreading the word. Because with one body, one mind, and one what? Spirit. In the Rowak Kodesh. We are family now, and we are awake. The we speaking. Witnesses. We're the two witnesses, northern and the southern tribes. We're on our, our feet. Spilling fire out of our mouth right now. now. And it's burning them right now. Burning. It's burning them right now. We're the two witnesses. we on our feet. we speaking boldly. <laughs> and they can't stand it. All Ooh, praise the most high. That. All praise the most high. I got chills myself. All my praise it. Verse 38. It's for, it says here, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day of Noah entered to the ark, and knew not until the flood came and then took them where? All the way. So shall also the come of the son of Adam be, because when he comes back and you don't have no oil in your lamp, you understand, he's going to leave you. He's going to leave you. And when he leaves you, you're going to have weeping and what? Yes, Mashing the teeth. Verse 40, then, sh then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be um, grinding in the mill. Then one shall be taken and the other will be left. Watch therefore and know not what hour. It says, watch therefore, for ye know not what hour at a night come. We do not know when he's coming. Not even the angels know. This is why the scriptures tell you, if a man was going to rob your house, when you prepare? Hmm? If the great gathers came and you knew they was coming, would you not do something? He says, we need to prepare because we know that these men are trying to do what? Rob our house. So we need to prepare because we also learned in the book of Esau or Edom, uh, what I call Obadiah, that Esau would not give us anything. All y'all wait for 40 acres in a mule, read Obadiah. You ain't getting it. 
40 acres went to your slave owners, the same people right now who run the stores, Walmart, Facebook, CNN, and all of that. And we became the mule. You're not getting nothing from them. The Lord tells us that the Persians are going to give us money. The people overseas are going to give us money. Why? Because they know who we are. They know that we're the elect. I mean, even the king of Egypt said that. I can't respect those people. They left black, but came back YT. So what did they do to him? Sadat, they took him out. They killed him when he said that. There was a hit put on his life. But right now, it doesn't matter because the whole world knows now. So they can do what they want. It's too late. Verse 38, Matthew 24, verse 38. And those, it says, where's the days that were, mm -hmm. I got it. Let me read. Okay. I like to go over things again. Oh, okay. That's what I just like to do. Okay. Thank you, sweetheart. Matthew 24 and 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, married, and giving in marriage until the days of Noah and into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of Adam be. 40. Then shall there be two in the field and one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour or at your Adonai comes. But know this. That if a good man of the house, there it is right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was ahead of myself. It says, know this, that if a good man of a house known that which, that what, which had known in what watch of the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not the son of Adam comes. So when you don't even think he's coming, that's when he's going to come. It says, who then is a faithful and wise servant who is who is Adonai has made rule ruler over his household to give him the food in due season? What's that food, Sister Micaiah? That's that manna, that's that manna we're getting right now. Now, this is what he's saying. It says here, who then is a faithful and wise servant? Who is that? Whom his Adonai has made ruler over what? His household. Wow. It says to give him food in due season. See, this is that season. Before, when you go to your pastors, your deacons, and your elders, and you ask them questions, they couldn't answer it. We were starved. We were spirit. You know, we went in hungry, but we came out starved. But right now, the Most High is giving us what? Spiritual food. That's right. Why? Because we're in that season. Yes. This is the time of the gathering. This is the end time. This is the time where there's many highways of what? Knowledge. Many highways of knowledge. 46. Blessed is the servant whom his Adonai, when he comes, shall find him doing so. It says here, amen, I see unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But if if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Adonai delayed is coming, he ain't coming. They always been saying that. Every time we turn around, they'll tell he coming, he coming. Oh man, I ain't done that. Get this. And it shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and to drink with drunken. It says, it says the Adonai of that servant shall come in the day when he looks not for him and in the hour that he is not, not aware of. And he shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. You better get your house right. Because Yeshua said, I'm going to judge you with the sword of my what? Mouth. I'm going to cut you asunder. And they're going to be weeping and gashing of teeth. A lot of y'all going to be sitting here. And you're going to be sitting here looking at these men and listening to these men. Not understanding the hours here, even at the door. Even uh, just thinking about how all this judgment is falling on a lot of these false pastors yes. who were supposed to be feeding the sheep but weren't doing so. And now judgment is falling on them and they're being exposed as yes. well. Yes, yes. And, and that's for a reason. You know, I was listening to something and, um, you know, one of the comedians, I like he, he cursed a little bit, but I like Cat Williams. And the only reason I like Cat Williams is because it's obvious this young man has not sold his soul. And he speaks highly about how Hollywood and these stars and these people have sold their soul, but now it's time for the reaping. And he's like, they're afraid right now. That's what he said. They're afraid. He said, I ain't sold my soul. Everything I've done, I've done because the Lord has given me. I don't look at a man's wife. When I see a man's wife, I don't even look up. He said, I don't want to be content no way and, and, and mess up with the most high. And he said, but I'm listening at all these. He was talking about Puffy. He was talking about T.D. Jakes. He was talking about all these stars. He said, these people sold their souls. He said, now the reaper is here. And now they worry. He said, I know I'm out here with them. He said, I'm listening to them. He said, they worry. He said, I don't have to worry. My house already been swept clean. I don't have to worry like them. They don't sold that sun. They don't took the sunrise for a sunset. I haven't done that. You know, he says, and look how the most high don't prosper me. He said, I'm one of the richest people on earth. He said, people don't even know my net worth. He said, when they mention my net worth, he said, I had that in my pocket. People don't know. They're on the outside looking in. But the most high, he says, on the inside looking out. And I reverence the most high.
Now, this is a person in the industry, and he's listening to these people who sold their souls. And now the Reaper is here. And now they understand that, man, I messed up. They sitting there worrying about this treasures on this earth, and understanding it's like a puff of smoke. The Lord finna burn this up. But the people of the Most High, the ones who store their treasures in heaven, we look for eternal life. There's a deception going on they right now. Deceived. They've been deceived. Lord, I mean, some have been deceived, deceived, but a lot of them, but a lot of them are not deceived. They already know going in. Why? Since I do armed security and I protected these people, one thing I've learned, um, and I've been around these folks, is they come to you three times. They come to you in threes. So I like you, my wife, at these. So when these men in black, when you see men in black. In the movie, they put it in the movies, folks. They come to you, three men in black come to you. When they come to you, what they do is this. Their primary thing is, is to ask you, do you want to join them? This is why they come in threes. Hmm? Because it's got to be a thing where you do a blood oath. It's not that you sit there and cut your wrist, you mix blood like they do on TV. Like you saw this one pastor. I saw him with some mega pastor, the guy with the evil eyes. I forget his name. You guys might remember who he is. And um, he cut his wrist. And um, somebody here on YouTube, you know who that is? You guys maybe can tell me real. He cut his wrist and they mixed their blood together. And he told me this is the blood coming. Then they poured it in a cup and they were drinking it. Now, we know the Lord tells you straightway that blood is sacred. And any man who drinks or tastes blood is cursed. That you had a pastor showing people this stuff. The blood covenant is when you sign on the dotted line. That's considered a blood covenant with these folks. Why? Because the only way you're going to get out is through blood. And the thing is, is that you have to sacrifice somebody in your family or you have to do a ritual where they got you on camera with a pill. They don't give you something and you got things you're doing. And what they're going to do is play it back to you. This is how all your politicians are controlled, because most of them de um, de deal with. I don't want to say this, keep it. They deal with little ones. And I'm going to just say that. But when they do all that, they put them on film. Once they got them on film, they say, OK, you go ahead and you're not going to do that. You're not going to do what we say. Watch this. And a lot of them are intoxicated. They don't realize they're being filmed. And the guys, they do the same thing with. They'll have men on them. And what they do is they film it and they play it back to them. And they're so embarrassed that they don't want anybody to know they do what they tell them. And so a lot of people, you understand, are selling their souls knowingly. And then there's others who are doing it unknowingly. If you're selling your soul unknowingly, and I had a young man who did that. He was tricked by a segment of questions that Satan threw at him. And he was tricked. He was able to repent of his sins because he was tricked. He did it unknowingly. The Lord is a loving God and understanding. But if you do something knowingly, you've already sold your soul. You've sold your soul. There's no way coming back. Remember, James Brown said, I straight a sunrise for a sunset. When he wanted to stop being in the industry, what happened to James Brown? They took him out. The same thing with Prince. Prince started telling too much and talking too much. And it was his time. He made a pact with him a long time ago. So it was time for the call that card in. None of these people own the money that they have. The money does not belong to them. That's what they tell you. I'm not leaving it to my children. I'm going to leave it to charity. It's not their money anyway. Ask Whitney Houston that. What happened to her baby? Hmm? She left it to her daughter. Didn't go well with her. It did it. Folks, you can't serve two masters. You're going to hate, love one or hate the other. When you guys want to sit and get the riches of this earth when you want that Bentley, when you want that big old house, when you want fame, you understand, when you want the cars, you want clothes, you want to be able to shop like you want, that is garbage compared to what the Most High has in store for you. That's nothing. Your own, your own shopping malls and clothing stores and all of this stuff, whatever that in the kingdom, your own gazillions of them. We're we'll own kingdoms. You're talking about carnal things because you cannot see, foresee. You understand? You cannot foresee the things. This is why Moses had that veil on his face. He had that veil so the people couldn't see things to come. A lot of people cannot see the things to come. This is the problem. We have to foresee past what we see right now and think about things that are spiritual. That's why the Lord said, wherever your treasures are, wherever your heart is, that's where your treasures are. That's too, where faith comes in. That's where it comes in. Too many people right now, too many people right now are trade a sunrise for a sunset. And now reality's kicking in. They're seeing all these, all these demonic possessions on people. They're seeing all these so-called uh, signs and wonders in heaven. They're seeing that, you know, the river Euphrates is dry. They're seeing a nation against nation. Everybody's seeing Russia, Iran, and China, Gog, Magog, and Mogog, Moab, all of them joining together, and the Africans are joining them. Bible prophecy is playing out like a movie. Now people are afraid. Now that the two witnesses are on their feet, 
and we're speaking boldly and fire's coming out of our mouth, man, they are scared. That deception I told you about. Remember, I just told you guys, if you just joined, I'm telling you, I told my, I was given a vision that me and my wife, that I had with my wife, um, when I called her to me, she didn't have the vision, but I had it. And in the vision, when the Lord told me to go to the window, I went to the window and I opened the curtains just like this. And all of a sudden, the chariot was sitting there. It, was a, it wasn't a chariot, excuse me, chariots are what we have. I call them UFOs, which is an unidentified flying object. That's what man has. They have UFOs, we have chariots. The UFO sat there and I couldn't believe it. I ran and got my wife and she couldn't believe it. She was looking, she was like, oh, oh, I don't know if this is most, I don't know what this is. She didn't know because, you know, get excited. Not sure if it's the most high or what. So I'm thinking, I'm like, is this the Lord? Has he come to gather us? Even in my mind, I'm thinking this. All of a sudden, the Lord said to me, son, son, I want you to see something. He turned that ship forward and there was a big six on it. And I remember the six because the six was actually like, Oh, man, how can I do it? Okay, imagine you got a six, but then you got another six on the outside of it. Oh, that's why. What? It just hit me why I saw it like that. Oh, that's why the Lord showed me that. Oh, my goodness, it just hit me. The Lord, when he showed me that ship in the heavens, it had a six. But the six was like, hold on one second, folks. I got a little excited on this one real quick. I just thought about it. I just thought about that. That's why it was like that. The six was like this, but it was in three different colors on it. And it was like this, and I'm probably not doing it good. It was like this. It had like, it was a six, but it had three different colors on the six. So basically it was six, six, six. It just came to me. Mm -hmm. That's why the six had three different colors within the six. Now it just hit me as I'm telling this story. So that's why that six had three different colors. It was six, six, six. The Lord just showed me that. In this instant, I just got what it was. Because I thought it was just a big six with three different colors in it. But they all were in a circle together to make the one six. Wow. Now I get it. So he was showing me that that is man and that it is dirty and it's unclean. Right. I just got why I saw the six in that, that way. That's why I saw the six in three different colors. It was six, six, six. What does that mean? Let's go to Zechariah chapter five, because there's a deception. And this is what happened in Miami. And I believe wholeheartedly. And um, we was going by one of my sisters, Miss Pantica. We like to sh uh, share things with her, too, and talk to her. She's a very spiritual lady. And I was just talking to her about, you know, Michelle was talking about something spiritual. She's like, I bet there was a heart machine. There's something that the Lord showed me. It's deception. Why? Nobody took pictures. Nobody got anything about it. And nobody got any proof. It's just a lot of heat hearsay. So what does the scripture say about, remember I told you in Genesis 25, I want you guys to read it. You'll learn that Esau, Esau was born red and hairy like a hairy garment. He's Jacob's twin brother. But Esau was given Mount Seir. Mount Seir is, is this, uh, what you call the Seir, Mount Seir. When he was given Mount Seir, he went to Bajra from Bajra. He went to U what you call Ukraine. He mixed it with Japheth's children, the 10 European nations. So when you deal with Mount Seir or you deal with Seir, you're dealing with Edom. Zechariah chapter 5 says, I turned and lifted up my eyes and I looked and behold, a, a flying roll. And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof 10 cubits. Then he said unto thee, this is, the, this is the curse that goes forth over the face of the whole earth. For every one that stilleth shall be cut, be cut off on this side according to it, and every one that sweareth shall be cut off as at that side according to it. Okay, this is actually, I'm reading um, King James Version. Oh, okay. I'm reading the King James Version here. Okay, go ahead and read your version. Go ahead and read it for me. Verse 3. Just read the whole thing. Start over. The reason I'm saying this is because this says here. No, verse 3 is the only one that reads different. Okay. okay. I'm just saying this is the curse that goes forth over the face of the whole earth for everyone that steals is innocent according to her and everyone that swears is innocent according to her. Right. Basically lies. Verse 4. I will bring it forth, says the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of a thief in the house of him that sweared falsely by my name. All right, Zachariah, hold on, hold on. 
five through eleven. Okay, got you. Mm -hmm. I'm in the wrong area. I'm, I'm supposed to be Zechariah, Zechariah chapter five. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse five through eleven. Okay, that's why I'm in the wrong area. I'm reading from one. That's fine. Okay, it says, "I will bring forth," says the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him that swears falsely by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of the house, and shall consume it with timber thereof and stones thereof. Verse five. Go ahead and read five, please. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now your eyes and see what is what is this that goes forth. And I said, What is it? And he said, This is the measure that goes forth. He said, Moreover, this is how they appear through all the earth. So mine says this, and behold, there was lift up a talent of lead, and this is, get this, a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And he said, this is wickedness. What is it he said, Sister Kaya? Mm. It's wickedness. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah and cast the weight of lead upon the mount thereof. And then I lift up my eyes and look, and behold, there came out two women in the wind. So yours says to what? It just says two of them. Two of them. Uh -huh. Okay. And so it's in the wind. And their wings, it says, and in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork. So these two things he saw, these two discs flying out, they were flying just like a stork. And it says, and it says, read, what are you going to read? It says, and I'm on verse nine. Go ahead. It says, and they lifted up their measure between the earth and the heaven. Nine, it says, then I lift up my eyes. Did, you, did yours read that way? Oh, so it says, then lifted I up my eyes and looked, and behold, there came out two of them, the wind in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork. Yes. And they lifted up their measure between the earth and the heavens. So they lifted up, they were between the heavens, what you call the firmament, because he called the top of the firmament, what heaven? And they was in the earth. So they was up top flying high. Go ahead. The verse 10 says, then said I to the angel that talked with me, where are they causing the measure to go? So where are these measures going? Where are these UFOs going? Where are these discs of metal with lead with fire from and that fly like storks? Where are they going? Read. Verse 11, and he said unto me, to build it a house in the land of Shinar, and what? it shall be established and set there upon her own base. Her uh own -huh. what? Base. So Shinar, Mount Seir, which is Shinar, Mount Seir, they have bases. So it's basically saying it's going to the land of Edom. And it's going to sit on her what, Sister Micaiah? Bases. Her bases. So the military bases have chariots, what you call UFOs. Who runs the military? Hmm? Edom. Edom does. They have They have chariots, and it's talking about it right here in Zechariah chapter 5. It says they're disc of lead that goes through the whole measure of the earth. They fly around, and the Lord calls it what? Wickedness. That's why you have people with so-called alien um, encounters where they've been abducted and these things have happened to them. These people do experiments. And the Lord, in Zechariah, he told us a long time ago that this is wickedness, and it flies through the earth. He saw two of them flying, and they have bases in Mount Shinar. That is where Edom lays. So I want to go to this, folks. Do not be deceived when you see these ships, these so-called chariots, and they fly in the sky, they land, and you guys start running out getting on them. Mm -hmm. Because the devil cannot do anything to you without permission. That's right. And what you will be doing is giving them permission. This is why I wanted to read this. Now, it, when you go into the King James 1611, it reads a little different. It reads a little bit more as far as it says. It says here, I've seen a talent of lead. When you go to verse 7, what is your saying 7? Behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead. What is your saying 7? Okay, mine says. This is in the Sefer. Go ahead. Right. Mine says, behold, there was lifted up a disc of lead. So that's even more descriptive. Yeah. It's letting you know it's and around this they're flying. Yeah, it says there's a fire sits in the midst of the measure, so like you said, it was yes, the stop, yes, the fire coming out the middle, yeah. So basically, the Lord is letting us know that this is evil and wickedness on the earth because you guys probably know that UFOs was in the Bible, it's right here in Zechariah chapter 5. And he's letting you know that they sit on bases in Mount Sinai, which is Mount Seir, which is where Edom roams. But even that flying roll that's mentioned at the beginning, yes, is also because I've seen that on video, yes, as well. yes, yes. Yes. And so when he said about the flying roll, though, the flying roll, um, you know, it's you can be curse. fooled, too. Yes, it's a curse. So you got to be very careful with these deceptions. I want to go over that. All right. Where we at? Fear. Um, so kind of, uh, we're going to Hebrews 2, chapter 2, 14 and 15, because this fear is enveloped a lot of people. 
And people don't understand that they'll be doing a lot of things because of fear. And I know a lot of you guys took that miracle jab because you were scared. I know you also was worried about your money, not understanding that the Lord takes care of you, not man and not these so-called jobs. If the Lord wants something to go for you right, it will. And if he wants to take feed you, he will. And if it's in his will, you will be fed. And if you follow him, you will eat and you will also have housing. But if you don't have, if you have fear, which is bondage, you understand, that means that when you pray to him, you're praying to him with a double tongue and a double mind. And he says that that person, I don't say with some of their ways, but all their ways. So well, go ahead. What I was going to say mm -hmm. is um, people need to understand that what we're talking about right now, fear and deception are the devil's two Those main weapons. tools, man. These are what he's used from the beginning of time. Yes. He deceived Eve, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. That's that was, right. From the beginning. So he's using fear and deception. That is what has worked all over time so if you know how the enemies what his what his vices are his vices are, are yeah you know how to defend yourself right and prepare against it that's why lord someone told you in the wilderness but what i'm going to do is give you a blueprint so when you're in the wilderness you know how to go around that tree you know how to go over that lake you know how to go over that pit that's dug in the ground i'm going to teach you how to go around that wall you understand and then if you need to i'm going to show you how to go over that wall that's right you understand that is what this Bible is. It's a blueprint to his children to maneuver in his wilderness. You understand this place that he calls the fire. He said that we're in a place of fire. That's why he calls us a brand plucked out of what? Plucked out of the fire. Yeah. We represent him. So while we represent him, we got to walk right. We got to talk right. And one thing we need to do, we got to educate ourselves. Not to educate, not the knowledge of this world. He said the knowledge of this world is what? Foolishness. Foolishness. Wisdom comes from above. So we got to get ourselves this wisdom that's in these books. We're going to um, Hebrews chapter 2, uh, 14 and 15. Hebrews chapter 2. We're going to verse 14 and 15. Sister Makai, you go ahead and read. All right. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. It says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. Yeah, that is the devil. So this is mm -hmm. talking about Yahushua's ransom sacrifice. That's right. He sacrificed. And how he defeated death. And how he had to come through the blood so we wouldn't say he was an angel. That's and we right. can't do right. Because yes. he was an angel. So he came through the blood just like us to show us if I can fight sin, you can do the same thing. That's why he had to come through the bloodline. That's why he came through the seed of David, the offspring of Jesse, sperm. He came through the same Joseph blood through Joseph. You understand that he had to come as a man so that we would not say, well, he was an angel, you know, that was a, you know, that's the immaculate conception. When they tell you that the angel came down or whatever, put the spirit in him and that, no, no, that was a bunch of pagan stuff given us. That was Nimrod's, that came from Nimrod. Yeshua came through the bloodline of Joseph. Matter of fact, my Bible says that it shows you he's the father, not by way of Mary that these new books got, even the Sefer don't have that, you know? And so we got to understand that he came through a bloodline, but he had to come as a man so when he did things, we wouldn't say, well, you were perfect. You, you know, you came as an angel. No, I, I'm just like you. I'm flesh and blood. But the difference is I'm the word. I'm the Lord's bosom. But I'm going to show you as I'm tempted, you're going to be tempted. As I've been given these things, you're going to be given. But you can get over them just like I have. Go ahead and read. This Hebrews is, 2 verse 15. Go ahead. It says, and deliver them who, who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So, all of you are who are afraid to give up your life, all of you are afraid to die because you're going to have to leave this body anyway. You're spiritual creatures, folks. You just put in a carnal body. But when you are when you are afraid of dying, when you're afraid of death, then what, Sister Micaiah, what does 15 say? You're in bondage. How long? How long? For how long? Lifetime. For all your life. All your life you're in bondage, just like Haran was when in that fire. He had those spiritual bands which represented bondage. He was afraid. Yeah. He was afraid that the king was going to kill him. He didn't want to die. So he said, if it goes well with the king, I'm going to side with him. If it goes well with Abraham, I'm going to side with him. Yeah. But he had fear in him. So not only he burned up, but the bands too. But Abraham, only the bands which represented him being in bondage. Because he had no fear. They were burnt off his arms. Yeah. We got to understand something, folks. This deception stuff is to bring fear. These so-called holograms, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. These so-called holograms, these so-called um, 
the so-called sightings in the sky with these heart machines, so forth and so on that's going on, where they're going to mix heart machines with real things. And so what they're going to do is they're going to have a fake alien deception going on, but they're going to have real chariots up there too to actually destroy people. And they're going to make you think they're everywhere. When they have a few ships doing this, then they're going to make you think that you can come out and get on certain ships and be saved. But we just read in Matthew 24 that he says, let no man deceive you. If you don't see the heavens roll up like a scroll, if you don't see the sun go dark and the moon not shine, the stars fall, don't be fooled. That's not me. You're going to know when the sun the, the most high is coming. It says it's going to come like lightning. The whole sky going to light up. And then the Bible says, how do you know when the angels come? And they say they light up the sky. It says when an angel comes from heaven, they do what? They light up the sky. Folks, we're seeing the sky lit up a lot. There's a lot of angels here on this earth. A lot of angels here right now. A lot of them for protection, but then a lot of them are here to do the Lord's will, to destroy. This is why the earthquakes are here, the tornadoes. When you see a big tornado coming, you always see like a big old ship. It looks like a big ship in the sky. All of a sudden, you got fires and earth, I mean, you got earthquakes. In California, you had dry lightning, 432 strikes, but no clouds. And start the fires. Folks, this is the Lord sending down the angels to do judgment. Also to make sure that his so-called children are wise. Did not bamboozle, hit, hoodwink, ran amok or led astray. He want to make sure that we know what we see. And that we see that we know whether it's a Lucifer. That's why you're going to have what? Spiritual eyes and spiritual ears. Or if it's of the most high. You're going to have to be able to discern these things, folks. And you will not be able to discern if you're not reading these scriptures. That's why I just read you Zechariah chapter 5, 5 through 11, where it goes into a disc flying around, and they're going to fool people. He said this is a disc that sits on Mount Seir's base. Mount Seir is Esau. Esau has many bases, 2,400. They own many waters. That's why the Lord calls her daughter of Babylon. She sits on many waters, many merchants buying trade with her. But they're all turning on her right now. But her main base is where she keeps these so called UFOs in Mount Seir, the land of Edom. Mm -hmm. And they're underground. They're in caves. Caves open up, all of a sudden they fly out. They may have them under the water. When you watch a movie like um, James Bond, and under the water in the old days, they would show you go underneath the water, there's a cave, but underneath the cave, there's a whole other system. And they fly out. This is ancient technology, folks, that the fallen ones gave. It's not the same technology as what's from the heavens that the Most High have. Remember, he says in Ezekiel 39, 38, he's bringing his weapon of indignation from the, from the north. He said the moon is where he keeps his weapons. So he's going to bring his weapons, you understand? Mm -hmm. And these weapons are going to do danger. They're going to do damage against the evil. And these so-called UFOs, they're going to be able to touch them. They're going to take them all out. This is why we're giving you guys the scriptures. Um, Romans 8. I'm going to read Romans 8 all. I guess I'll read Romans 8. Okay. No, no, you're supposed I'm to read Romans 8. Yeah. yeah, I read Romans Matthew. You're supposed to read Romans 8. Yeah. Y'all got to understand that. Yes. Uh, fear is a spirit. And so what, Sister Micaiah? It is a spirit. And and what is Satan? A spirit. And what does he push? He pushes fear. That's he, one of his biggest weapons. It's one of his biggest tools. He wants you guys to be afraid. And the Lord does not want us to be afraid right now whatsoever. And they try to manipulate us to, to invite that spirit in. Yes. Romans chapter 8, we're going to read in just a minute. So we, we really want to stress you guys. That's why we're going to read the book of Adam and Eve. We're going to go over it a little bit. And what we're going to do is just read a few chapters in it and show you guys how Satan from the beginning has always used fear to keep us in bondage. And I want you guys not be bamboozled by these deceptions that are going on. I want you guys to understand that Satan comes to you in the outward, but the Most High comes to you on the inside. And this is how you'll know when it's from him. He will let you know that it's from him. You don't have to guess. Now, on the outside, Satan can fool you and add the sky so it's an angel of light. So we got to be very careful. Bondage is the spirit. This is something we need to understand. We're going to read. I'm going to have my wife read Romans chapter 8. I think I read Matthew 24. Yeah. So uh -huh. read Romans chapter 8 if you don't mind. Sister okay. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Mashiach Yahusha. Yes. Who walk not after the flesh but after the Ruach or the spirit. Yes. For the Torah of the Ruach Chaim, which yes. is the spirit of life, yep. in Mashiach Yahusha has made me free from the Torah of sin and death. So what has made you free? Uh, the spirit, the spirit of, the of, of Yeshua. Right. 
All praise the most. His spirit has made us free. It's called the Rowak Kodesh that's in us. It's made us free from the letter of the law is what it's saying. Go ahead and read. Verse 3, it says, for what was impossible under the Torah for the flesh to do. Yes. Yahuwah did in sending his own son Come in on. the likeness of sinful flesh. He came in a what? The, in the likeness, likeness of sinful flesh. flesh. Go ahead. And for sin. To do what? Condemn sin in, in the, the flesh. flesh. Yes. This is why he came. Go ahead. Verse 4. That the righteousness of the Torah might be fulfilled in us. The righteousness of what? The, of the Torah. The first five books of the law might be fulfilled in us. We're not doing the letter of the law, but we should be doing it what? The spirit. Because he is spirit and we should be serving him. What? Spirit. spirit. Go ahead. Verse 4, it says that the righteousness of the Torah might be fulfilled in us. Yes. Who walk not after the flesh, but after, but what? after the spirit. Wherever, boy, I love it. Wherever your treasures are, wherever your heart is, that's where what? Your treasures are. Mm -hmm. Our treasures in heaven. So we're going to walk everything in the spiritual light, not in the carnal light. Go ahead and read. But see, this is what's mm -hmm. important, that the Torah is in us Yes, now. yes. Okay. Well, it's already in us. Mm -hmm. He engrafted in us on Mount Horah and Sinai. What the Holy Spirit does is activates that Torah. Yes. She brings all things back into what? Remember. Remembrance. We already got the Torah in us, Israel. My Horah and Sinai, he said, I'm going to implant something in you. I'm going to put the Roach, I'm going to put the scriptures in you. I'm going to put the whole Bible in my people. So the Lord already put it in our DNA. We already know this. That's why we hear the word. You understand? It's a reminder of things we what already know. But the Holy Spirit reactivates it and brings all things back into remembrance. This is what this is saying. When we become one with Yahushua. That's what this is saying. Keep reading. Verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Yes. But they that are after the Ruach are the spirit, the things of the Ruach. Yes. The yes. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. So when you're thinking about things of this world and worried about things of this world, it's death. It's death. This stuff going to pass away like a puff of smoke. Keep reading. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yeah. And what life and what else? And peace. Because you have peace when you follow the Lord. You have peace when you see wars and rumors of wars. Yes. And there's going to yes. be famine and pestilence. And you worry. But when you follow the Lord and know you got a promise. Yes. You have peace. This verse here reminds Come on. me of a movie I saw where the man mm -hmm. was asking another man, right. you know, if you've lost everything that you have in this carnal world, yes. who are you? Hmm. And the man couldn't answer, you know, he didn't know. Yes. You know, so that's the thing. We should not be defined by this flesh, these fleshly things, these carnal things. They're going to pass away, folks. We're spiritual creatures. We have everlasting life. All this stuff that you put in your hopes and your weight in and, you know, even the people that are around you that you so-called trying to convince to be right and they're not right and the spirit's not right. The Lord said they're going to be the chaff. You won't even remember them in the new world. You won't remember none of them. All that stuff's carnal. All that stuff right there is vainness. You won't remember none of this stuff. Go ahead and read. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 7. It says, because the carnal mind is enmity what? against Yah. Wait a minute. So when you think carnally, it's enmity. What is enmity, Sister Makai? You're an enemy. You're an enemy of the yeah, Most High. That's what enmity against. means. That goes against him. All praise the Most High. Go ahead. It says, for it is not subject to the Torah of Yahuwah, neither indeed can be. Yes. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yah. Wait a minute. So if you walk around in the flesh, you cannot do what? Please, yeah. Man, come on, folks. This is why when you fast and you start doing those things and you become more spiritual, that's when the Lord starts giving you revelations. Yes. Because you're more in the spirit. You're coming out of the carnal side. If you starve the body, you feed what? The spirit. And so when you starve that body and you start fasting, you start praying, now you're in a spiritual state. Yes. Now the most high comes, he sucks with you and teaches you things. Now your dreams and your visions start coming. They become more clear. You cannot serve him with flesh. It has to be a spiritual mind. Go ahead and read. And you get more clarity. Way more on clarity. The scriptures when you're reading. Yes. Verse 9, Romans chapter 8, verse 9. It says, but ye are not in the flesh, Come on now. in the Ruach, or yes. in the spirit. Yes. If so be that the Ruach Yahuwah dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Ruach Mashiach, he is not his. Come on now. If you ain't got that Holy Spirit, you ain't his. Come on now. Let's Verse keep going. 10. 
And if Mashiach be in you, the body is dead because of sin. So if he's the Holy Spirit is in you, you're not going to sit and have to fight so much with the fleshly things. You're going to kill that flesh. You understand? Because the Holy Spirit is in you. You're working in the spirit, not in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So the things you used to desire in the flesh, you cast them away. That's right. You understand? You cast them away. Go ahead and read. I'm still on verse 10. It says, but the Ruach is life. The, whole, the, the Holy Spirit is what? Life. Because of what? Because of righteousness. Because of righteousness. When you walk in righteousness, when you come out of sin and you put on those white garments, that's why we get baptized. It's symbolic of taking off the old garments, putting on white. But you can't truly purge them pure white until you come out of sin and don't go back to perdition. Perdition simply means you don't go back to sin. You repent. That's the first thing of all your sins. And then you go to the Lord and you say, Father, because remember, we have no, we have a daddy on earth, but we only have one father and that's in heaven. And you talk to him and tell him all the things you've been doing and you profess them to him. And then what he'll do is he'll forgive you. And once he starts forgiving you, you don't want to go back to sinful things. You get seven more demons. This is why we go in the closet, why we repent. And this is how we get our clothes washed clean by what? Going to this word. This word is living what? waters what does water do it washes you clean that's right keep reading please and that, you know i just want to touch on yes ma'am was just talking about um being in sin yes and how it leads to death that is all the ultimate goal of these demons yes Once they get inside of you they want to kill and destroy you what when i asked that demon that time i was yes. cast, when i was casting oh, him yes. out of that young man yes. and i was praying over him and i say who are you who are you what's your name the first thing he said before he said, Lucifer, Beelzebub, Lucifer, whatever you want to call me. He said, death, death, death. He said it three times. Yeah. Because his job is to bring you death. Now, that's not just a mm -hmm. physical death. It's the spiritual death. Because a lot of people, when they sell their soul, they're dead inside. They're dead inside. They feel nothing but darkness. Where we at? Verse 11. This is Romans, Romans chapter 8. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 11. Go ahead. It says, but it's the, I'm just going to start over. It's but right. it's the Ruach of him that raised up Yahushua from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Mashiach from the dead shall also quicken Come on now. mortal bodies Come on. by his Ruach that dwells in you. Oh, what praise. does it mean to quicken? It means to make What's alive it means, or give life. That's what quicken means. It means he will make you alive. He'll bring you back to life. How many of our people have been walking around, man, in a slumber, slope? But man, when you find out you Israel, when you find out you the 12 tribes, you find out you the children of the blessings and you're not Hell cursed. Yeah. And then you find out, OK, they took my land, my money and we broke and we going through this. But the Lord told me that I don't want the rich. I want the ones who are rich in faith, not in money. Those are the ones in my kingdom. And then when you find out that there's a promise that's given to us and that, you know, we are the chosen. No longer do you walk slooping down. Now you walk with your chest up. Now you look at everybody. I'm a king. I'm a king or a priest. I'm a royalty. Now you walk with your head up. And not only that, now these other nations are even addressing us different. Now they're speaking to us, where before they wouldn't even speak to us. And now they want us to join them now, where they wouldn't even join us before. Now everybody wants to march with them. Now everybody wants to say that they're Israel in the 12 tribes. Now all these people calling me, hey, are we part of the 12 tribes? Are we on the chart? I seen that 12 chart of Israel. Are we on the chart? Now everybody wants to be on the chart now. Everybody wants to be. Everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon. Now that we're in the end days, the truth is coming out, and everybody knows that we are the elect. We're the chosen. Not only that, we're the ones who bring the truth out. Now everybody else wants to come in, and they want to graft themselves on the natural branch. Hallelujah. Come on, let's keep reading, please. Verse 12, Romans chapter 8, verse 12. It says, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh yes. to live after the flesh. Yes. For if ye leave, live, live after the flesh, ye shall die. Because through sin you inherit what? Death. Death. What is sin? First John, write it down. First John 3 and 4. For sin is transgression of the law. For transgression of the law is sin. Y'all been told that the Torah is done away with. The letter of the law is, but we should be doing it spiritually. And he says that you don't even sin unless you don't follow his laws. The only way you sin is when you don't follow his laws. Otherwise, you're not in sin. He says, how do you show me love? First John 5 and verse 3. You show me love by following my laws. This simple, folks. Yeah. It's simple. We just make it complex. 
And this is why we teach having the importance of you having your own personal relationship over following man's religion. That's right. Because man, man's religion gives you their law. That's right. And they say that's your Jesus. you're righteous or not by that's your their Jesus. measurement. That's when they brought you Jesus. Not by the most high. Come on. Come on. Come when, on when they gave you Jesus, they said the laws are done away with. When they gave you Jesus, they say you can worship on Christmas. When they gave you Jesus, they say you can come in church on Sunday instead of the Sabbath, keep it home. When they gave you Jesus, they told you, you know what, you don't need to be baptized. When they gave you Jesus, they told you, Lord, love all sinners. Come on, now. Come on. That's what your Jesus brought you and your Christianity you brought you. you but Yeshua said this. He says that I'm going to kill all the sinners. My garments are going to be white when I come back, but they're going to be like in a wine press. The blood going to go up to a horse's bridle. I left you as a lamb, but I'm coming back as a conquering lion. That's right. Come on, folks. Let's not mix this up. He's coming back with a sword. Bring it out. And he's going to take that sword and he's going to cut people asunder. We just read this with the sword of his mouth. What is the sword of his mouth? That word. Because if he said it, if you do it and you don't follow his laws, I'm going to cut you. We're doing some cutting today. So that's why we're cutting you right now. Let's go. All praise. Where you at, sister? Come on now. My, my partner on it now. Let's go. Come on, baby. Let's bring it. Let's bring it, baby. All right. All For praise. If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Come on now. But if ye through the Ruach do mortify the deeds of the body, what does mortify mean? You shall live. You have to kill these. Mortify means to kill. Deeds. You got to kill this fleshly stuff. All that stuff that, that you've been, oh man, I had a problem with women. You better let it go. That's right. You better let it go. These women, oh, I like a six foot four man or five. Oh, Even though fine. I got a man, he fine. He look like he can do. He something. like he can do some, and you, you know? and you got a, and you got a man, and the Lord is hearing your thoughts. That's right. You finna be judged you for that. See, Yeshua said, if you think it, you've already done That's it. Right. See, this is a lot deeper than just the fleshly things. You see, He says in Jeremiah fourteen, "I knew you before you came out what the womb." That's right. So saying that, the Lord knows every thought you have. He knows every hair on your head. He counted them. As a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, the Lord says this, in the end times, I'm going to do what? I'm going to judge according to what? All your ways. That's right. He's going to weigh everything in what? The balance. And so right now, you better keep your mind right. All right. Where you at? Um, Romans chapter 8, verse 14. It says, for as many as are led by the Ruach Yahuwah, or Spirit of Yahuwah, they are the sons of Yahuwah. So when you're read, led by the Holy Spirit, you're showing that you're the sons and daughters of the Most High. Go ahead. For ye have not received the ruach of bondage or the spirit of bondage again to fear. So bondage, the Lord is telling us that true bondage is what? Fear. When you're worried all the time. If you're walking in the light, and I, and I got a young man I love so much, I've been ministering to him. One thing that young man always had is a lot of fear about his bills, about that. He had four kids. He's worried about one of this and that. And the Lord told me he's been like that all his life. So all his life, he's been in bondage. And one thing I had to teach this young man through the grace of the Holy Spirit is that you got to let all that go because you cannot make one hair white or gray, white or black, and you cannot add one stature to your height. Your whole life is in the hands of the Most High, and he's handling you according to your ways. If you know you walking right and doing right, what are you afraid for? What are you worried for? Did you not say don't worry about tomorrow? I'll give you what's sufficient for tomorrow if you're my child. So what are you worried for? Why are you worried about your woman? If you're walking and talking with her and doing things right, you shouldn't have to worry about what she's thinking or what she's doing. Otherwise, you got to do that. You got the wrong spouse. But he's got a good lady. And so he realized in his mind, wait a minute. What am I worried for? Why have I been doing this? What's going on? And then he was wondering, too. He was wondering why. And his mom came to me. And she was like, why is it that they're getting short of winning? Is this an attack? And all I said, ma'am, it's not an attack. Your son who just, your second son who just went to the hospital? He went in there for a reason. What the Lord is doing is he's refining them. The things that they were doing in the past, just like I did when I was looking at stuff I had no business, he took my win away. He's taking that win away and doing things because he's bringing fear on them. He wants them to fear him. So he's refining them. Fear of the Lord is beginning to what? Wisdom. Wisdom. He doesn't want you to be afraid of them. He wants you to be afraid of him. That's right. So he's refining them. She said, oh, I said it had nothing to do with curses or, or, or y'all being attacked. No. He's refining his sons, and that's one of the main ways he refines his children. He takes that win away from them. He puts fear in them so they don't want to go back to what they were doing. He wants them to understand this is why I'm doing this. 
She had makes and now she she called and she said both her babies are doing good. They're doing great. Well, I talked to a young man the other day. As a matter of fact, he got married recently. Oh, how he just got yeah. married. Oh, praise it. Hey, congratulations. Um, and I won't say your name, but I won't put you out there. We'll, we'll talk about it later. But congratulations. We had a few young people we ministered to that have gotten married yes, recently. I'll praise because they realized when they talked to us that they were in sin, they were fornicating. And if the Lord came like a thief in the night, he was gonna judge them. And so they went and got married. This has been a beautiful thing. This ministry has been a beautiful thing because oh, the Lord has brought light to us, but he's had us bring a lot of light to other people too, Hallelujah. by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Well, we have Sister Mackay. We're in Romans chapter 8, verse. 8, verse 15. Go ahead. It says, for ye have not received the Ruach of bondage again to fear, yes. but ye have received the Ruach a mock. What is, it is the spirit, spirit of adoption. adoption? Spirit of what? Adoption. Woo! Whereby we cry, Abba, Abba Father. Father. Come on now. Yes. yes. 16, it says the what does it mean to adopt the spirit of adoption? Hmm? Well, we had to be adopted uh, again. Right. Since our Divorce. ancestors broke the covenant. That's right. It was broken. Know, yeah. This covenant is being renewed. restored again. It dropped and back so again. Most yes. Is choosing us yes. individually. Yes. And just, that's why we always say just because you have bloodline does not mean that's automatic guaranteed salvation. What does scripture say? Not all of it, Judah, all of Israel is Israel. Why? Right. Because some got Jacob's spirit, but some got Lucifer's that's spirit. Right. Just because you're the bloodline, do not make you one of his. Yes. That's why you don't boast against other people, other nations, too. Talking about because when you sit there on judgment day, and you sitting there and this so-called white tea man or this Arab man or this Chinese man or this other guy over here. And you see them in the kingdom because the Lord said, I'm going to take handmaids to service, didn't he? He said those who took you to captivity must what? Go into captivity. But you talking about him and them talking about that stick in there when you got five boys in your own. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be just like Lazarus when he was sitting down there. But you're going to be like the rich man. He looked at Lazarus. Can I get in? How did this poor man get in? You sat there and looked at his outer appearance, but the Lord looked at his inward appearance. Come on now. This is what he's doing with these other people who you're going to be pointing at and passing judgment. And on judgment day, they're going to make it in and they're going to see you waste away. Mm, bring it out. They're going to see you waste away. Yeah. You ain't got no oil in your lamp. That's right. None whatsoever. Matter of fact, when you had the oil because of your hate, because of that spirit you had in you, you put holes in that lamp and the oil spilled out. Walking after the flesh. Walking after the flesh. Instead and of the spirit. the spirit, all praises. That's why he said, judge ye not, you're going to be judged the way you judge. Come on. I talk about Edom, yeah. I talk about how they're going to be judged, but the Bible talks about that. But at the same time, I know there's good people of all races. I want y'all to understand that. And the Lord knows who these people are, not us. So it's not our job to pass judgment on nobody, no race, no people, and nobody's religion. Because everybody is just a product of their environment and how they were raised. We have to do things out of love. And that's how Yeshua is going to judge all these people. He know a lot of them inherited lies. He's going to judge them on themselves and how they treat people, how they walk. Not that religion they're in, not that place where they've been doing things they have no business. Why do you think he says he's going to forgive the multitude of Israel's sins? I want y'all to understand this. The Lord does not think like we think. We think carnally, but he's a spiritual being. He's long-suffering. He's loving, but yet he's a just God. Yeah. That's why he says, I'm going to handle you according to your, your ways. Way. So stop judging people by their race, their color, their religion. Let the Lord do these things. Go ahead and read, please. I'm on Romans chapter 8, verse 16. It Go ahead. Says, the Ruach itself bears witness with our Ruach. Come on now. This yes. is what, folks, you, you, yes. I, I want to say this with people. Y'all ever be around people just like y'all with us right now? You see how your spirit is bearing witness with our spirit? Hmm? You know how many people say they've had dreams and the most I put me in their dreams? And it brings them right here? Because their spirit is bearing witness to what? Our spirit. We're one body, one mind, and one spirit. We're a family. We're a family. The Lord's just bringing us together. That's, it. That's all he's doing. He's just bringing us together. You know, another example yeah. of how so many people have said, man, the stuff y'all be saying, it's like I just thought about I that. Prayed I prayed about it. it. I yeah. prayed about it. And here's the answers. Questions, and here go the answers. And all praises. Hallelujah. You know, and I remember my wife said, man, you keep reading this and you will gump off. And I say, I'm jumping off because. You know, I'm a, what's this guy? X-Men? What's the guy's name? No. Oh. Uh, the one with the bald head. Yeah, the professor. Professor. Mm -hmm. And our professor would be there with his people. And all of a sudden, they put it in the movies, folks. This is how the you Holy Spirit works. No, you wouldn't hear these thoughts. You can see these spirits out there. You can see them and hear their thoughts. You can see them also. It's almost like the Lord will show me their faces. And then they'll also give me their thoughts. And so what I'll start just saying things because I can hear what people are asking questions. And I'll be saying this. And all of a sudden, the lesson is done. 
And then people say, man, brother, I was on a lesson. I had so many questions. I, matter, matter of fact, people text me, brother, I had a lot of questions <laughs> I was going to ask you. Uh, but all of a sudden, they all answered in yeah, the lesson. Somebody said, that's them. They come on. Them come on. <laughs> somebody else had visions too? Somebody, no, people just said, or just a person. Yeah. Heaven bound X, no, all praises. And I had those come on. Visions. They be having visions. This is the Lord doing this. Job 33 says, come to you in a dream and a vision, and he seals your instruction. The Lord is bringing us to each other. He knows who's going to be in the new kingdom. That's why we're here. Not just us, but the handmaids and service of other nations. This is why I'm telling y'all, that same person that you're looking down on because they have another nation, be the same one right there helping you in the kingdom. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man. This is how this works, Or folks. in a difficult situation. Come on. Right before the kingdom, before the kingdom comes. comes. These are the ones who got to help you because they have provisions, which you don't have. Come on. So this is why be careful how you judge other people of nations. Be careful what you say out of your mouth. Be careful your thoughts because the Lord is sifting you right now. That's right. He knows all your thoughts and your ways. And if you're, this is why you think he said, if you, somebody take your coat, your jacket, give him a coat. Then he said, if they slap you, turn the other cheek. Then he said, do what with your enemies? Do what? Pray for them. He said, if you forgive them, then I got room to forgive you. Folks, I want y'all to get this. This is way deeper than what we see. Sure this is way deeper than what we think. You cannot get on these new chariots that are these chariots that are coming. You can't get on these arcs that are coming that are under the sea that the government is talking about that are activated. But the only people can get on minorities. These people have been talking about this stuff. Say they're everywhere under the ocean and they're miles long. It says in order to get on them, you got to touch the bottom of them. But you have to have a spirit. It says spiritual. This is what these men have said. And they're military folks. They said they're spiritual. And your spirit got wrecked, but the only people who can get on them are the minorities. Well, who are the minorities? Who they call minorities? Israel. Folks, all of this is coming out. This is why we're giving you all these lessons to make sure your spirit is right and that you don't get bamboozled, hood raped, and that you don't be led astray because too many people are going to be led astray. Well, um, Sister Makai, let's go ahead and read. And we want to make sure that the most, uh, Yahusha knows us. That's you right. Know, we can say we know him. But yeah. But we don't want to hear, get away from me. I never, I never, never you. knew you. We don't want to be what? Wanting. Come on. You don't want to be wanting. You don't want to be them five virgins with your lamps empty. That's right. You don't. Even if you go at the last second, the last minute, just like the one virgin did, and knock on the door, and he said, he opens it. You might even get him to open and look at you. But you don't want him to say to you, get away from me. I never knew you. You will have weeping and gashing the teeth. Yes. You know how hard in them you sitting there thinking you're gonna be in the kingdom, you're gonna make it, and you just know in your heart. That's why he said pride comes before a great what? Wow. Once you became puffed up and think you got it, that means you're not seeking no more. You think you got it, you know all the answers. It's so much we don't know. Even the things we think we know, the Lord will refine us daily and give us revisions on those things so we have clarity because this is truly a cloudy day. So Mikhail, Romans we're in, 8, verse 16. Romans 8, 16. Go ahead. It says, the Ruach itself bears witness with our Ruach. Yes. That we are the children of Yah. That's it. Go ahead. And if children, then heirs. Uh, heirs of what? Heirs of Yahuwah. Come on. And joint heirs with Mashiach. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So here we're learning Israel that if we walk right in the Holy Spirit, and it says here we're heirs. What does an heir mean? That means you're going to get an inheritance. You got an inheritance. We have an inheritance. We had a promise to Abraham, to Isaac, and then we had a promise to Jacob, who he chose, that we have an inheritance. Yeshua, this is why they won't give us 40 acres in a mule. Yeshua is the heir of this whole earth. But who's the joint heirs? We are. We own this earth. Did he not say I made the world for what? Your That's sakes, true. our sakes. The Lord made this world for us, folks. I want y'all to get this. We are joint heirs with the Messiah. That's why no nation, these people won't give us nothing. They already know that we're going to hold up and we're going to control the whole earth. All nations got to pay tithes to us. All nations. This is deep, man. Just keep reading. Verse 17, it says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of Yahuwah and joint heirs with Mashiach. Yes. If so be that we suffer Come on. with him. Come on. That we may be also glorified, glorified with him. This is why we suffer with him. Hallelujah. Just like he suffered. Just like he went through hell. Why do you think the so-called Negroes, black, colored, African-Americans, all these names we've had with Israel, why do you think we suffer so much? Because all the prophets suffered. Yeshua suffered. 
And by us suffering like this, we're going to be glorified with him. That's right. We'll forget no none of this stuff no more. No more pain. No more anguish. No more worrying about bills no more. No more worrying about how you're going to pay a car note. No more worrying about how you're going to feed your children. No more worrying that. about, you know, I want a summer house and a winter house. I want that nice boat. I want that car. I want an RV. I want this. We're going to own the whole world. This is why these people were confederate against us in Psalms 83, verse 1. Come on now. What does he say? Yeah. Keep not thy silence, O Lord, and hold not thy peace, and be not still. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. Yes. And they that hate thee, they don't love us. They hate us. They say, come, let us cut them off of being a nation, so that the name of Israel will be in no more remembrance. When they came together with one consent, they are confederate against thee. And then he names all the nations who came to confederate. Edom, Rome, Tyre. Then he names Ethiopians. He named all these people who came and said that they're us, or they took our identity and they sold our people. And he says they were called the Confederacy, and a symbol would be what? The eagle. Let's go. Come on, man. This is deep. Romans 8, verse 18. Let's go. It says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy yes. to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Come on. This suffering ain't nothing compared to the glory that should be what revealed in who? In us. us. This is the glory we're showing right now. Come on. We're showing the light of the most high. He said we're a brand plucked out of a fire. So we're representing him right now as we speak. All of us sitting here. We're representing him. We're a brand plucked out of the fire. Well, are we not going through perpetual hell? Yeah. Huh? Is this not fire every day when we worry about this and that? But we represent the most high. Keep reading, please. Romans 8, verse 19. It says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of Yahuwah. So he said that the creature, man, he creation said, is what he said are. all of creation, everything, the birds, the animals, the bees, all these other men of other nations, all of them are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of Elohim. And we are the sons of Elohim. Let's Oh, we're the daughters of Elohim, yeah. sons oh. and daughters. We're a nation of kings and priests, and now we I prophesy. We're on the order of Melchizedek, a nation of kings, nation of priests, and a nation of prophets. And it was ordained from the Most High, yes. not on the bloodline like the Levitical priesthood, where you had to come through Aaron, you understand, or you had to come to um, Zadok's children, you understand, like the Essenes. That was a bloodline to a woman. But then when you're under the Levitical priesthood, it's ordained from the Most High. That's right. And he said, we're a nation of kings, nation of priests, and a nation of prophets. And the difference between the Levitical priesthood, it has an end. 75 years old, they retired. But the order that we under, it never ends. The order of Melchizedek never ends. It's eternal. We'll be kings, priests, and prophets forever. We're joint heirs that. of this earth. Let's keep reading, Sister Micaiah. Romans chapter 8, verse 20. It says, for the creature was made subject to vanity. Yes. Not willingly. But yes. But by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Yes. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. The creature going to be delivered from what? The bondage of corruption. Because this world's corrupt. Yes. We're going to be delivered from this bondage. Keep yes. reading. Keep reading. Into the glorious liberty of the Woo. children of Yahuwah. Into the glorious Hallelujah. liberty of who? Yeah. The, the liberty of the children of Yahuwah. Wow. Didn't he not say that we're on the liberty of what right now? We're under the law of liberty. Law of what? The law of liberty. What is the law of liberty? That's the law that Yahuwah left all us. All praise the most high. See, these words go back and forth with each other, That's folks. That's right. They go back and forth with each other. All praise the most high. What number are we on? Verse 22. Romans chapter 8, verse 22. Go ahead. It says, for we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. This is why you see Japan going through so much with the earthquakes. This is why you saw Turkey being shaken and also the buildings falling on all the people and the children. This is why when you go into China, they got the floods. They got all of these things. This is why in Europe, right now when you go into britain right now they have floods that completely cover the whole place and they, they all thousands and thousands of people had to leave their homes right now in britain he's attacking all of europe remember a year ago all of europe caught hell all these europeans are finna catch it all the ones who are taking our lands you got to remember we own britain france scotland spain russia all of the americas saudi arabia we own all of what you call israel over there we're as numerous as the sands of the sea at one time and these people all came in and took our land killed off our people and systematically put us in slavery not only physically but mentally it's pretty deep romans chapter 8 verse 20 20, 23. go ahead 
It says, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Ruach, yes. the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, yeah. waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. So I sure have been groaning. Mm -hmm. I've been groaning too, waiting on this adoption, man. Yes. I've been groaning and moaning. Go ahead. Romans 8, 24. It says, for we are saved by hope. We're saved by what? By hope. So faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word. So you can't get hope unless you read and get your faith up because faith and hope are one and the same. They're synonymous. So you got to start studying and get your faith up. That's how you say it. Because once you get that faith up, you're no longer what? Bondage. Mm -hmm. You're no longer under bondage of this world. Keep reading. Verse 24, it says, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. Come on now. For what a man sees, why does he get hope for? Yeah, well, what you see is going to pass away. Everything we see gonna pass away. Why are we hoping for this? It's gonna vanish. Go ahead. And on another note, yes. if we're hoping for something, that means we can't see it yet. That's right. You that's know, right. that's the basis of faith. Faith is the substance of things, things hoped, hoped for, for but, but yet, not seen. Yet not seen. You know, that's what faith is all about. Yes. Go ahead. Verse 25 it says, But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Yes. Likewise, the Ruach also helps our infirmities. So the Holy Spirit does another thing. She she helps our infirmities. What infirmities? Sickness, but also yes. sin, sin is sin referred is to as an infirmity. That's right. Sickness, sin, all the things that we battle against on the inside. Go and ahead. a lot of times sin brings infirmities Absolutely. to illness. Well, it is because through sin, sickness. you inherit what? Judgment. And when we look mm -hmm. up judgment in Hebrew, it means crisis. Yes. You constantly go through crisis. When you're doing sinful things. Yes. Verse 26, it says, For we know not what we should pray for as we are, but yeah. the Ruach itself makes intercession for oh, us with man. groaning that, that cannot be uttered. Oh, that's beautiful. A lot of times we don't even know what to pray for. But your spirit is going to supersede. And it's going to start praying to the most high. And all of a sudden, you're saying words out of your mouth and everything you're yes. going through. With groanings and moanings, it's going to what? Supersede. That's right. Your spirit will take over when you walk with the Lord. It'll start petitioning him because that's the same thing that's going to come out of your body on judgment day. Turn around and bear witness to the things your body did. Yes. Romans chapter 8, verse 27. Go ahead. It says, And he that searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Ruach or spirit. Come on now, because the heart and mind are what? Interchangeable. Yes. They're one and the same. Go ahead. Because he makes intercession for the Kodeshim. Who do he make intercession for? The saints that are set apart. For the saints. Saints simply means set apart. Those who are not part of this world. The Lord say, get out of this world. Don't do what she do. You're going to take on what? Her plagues. The Lord say, those who love this world have what? Are what? Enmity with him. Yeah. You understand? He says that you're his enemy if you love this world. And you have no part of the next one. Let's go. Hold on one second. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. One moment, folks. Bear with us. No problem. So, okay. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Verse 27. It says, and he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Ruach because he makes intercession for the Kodashim according to the will of Yah. Yes. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yahuwah. Yes. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Called according to whose purpose? To the most high. I thought purpose. according to our purpose. To the most high. Well, I don't hear the Lord. I ain't heard him. I ain't spurred his voice. I ain't heard the Holy Spirit. I ain't felt the Holy Spirit. Why don't get dreams? Why don't get this? Because it's according to the most highest purpose, not your That's own. Right. And we got to understand that he calls those not on your time, but on his time. It's even like when you pray to him. You ask him, you need this, Father, I need that. And you be wondering why it ain't happening. Why this? Because it may not be that it's time. And it may be another situation. It may be a situation where if he gives you those things, that it may cause you damnation. And so what he'll do is he'll wait. And when he gives you certain things, he gives it to you on the right time when you need it. That's right. So it doesn't take you down and put you in a snare hole or trap where you fall in the ground. Yeah. And where you're covered up by this earth and this world and you're in darkness. That's so this is what he does. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And that's why what we read in verse 25, mm -hmm. patience you is have patience. so essential. It's yes. a virtue. Well, look at the most high. Are we not? Is he spirit, right? Exactly. Is he not long suffering? Mm -hmm. Remember this, Moses, this and Noah, them, they, they spoke 120 years back. But we've had 2,900 and some odd years to get it right. That's right. You're telling me he ain't patient and long-suffering? Huh? His ways are equal. Our ways are unequal. Yeah. We need to remember that. What number are we on? 
We on verse 29. Are you good there? Romans 8, 29. Uh-huh. Did he explain things to you? Yeah, he just moved it. Okay, okay all praises. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. It says, for whom he did foreknow. He what? He for, for whom he did foreknow. So basically, when we read Gad last night, and, and I don't know we didn't get to that part, but we didn't, I was going to read it, but I didn't get to get to it. You're going to learn there's a book of life, the book of the living, the book, the book of those who petition the Lord, and the book of death, those who are damned. But the Lord said those who are written the book of life, he already knew from the beginning and the end who it would be. Yeah. Just like he said with us, we were with him from the beginning. Israel, the 12 tribes, he gave us to Yeshua to bring here to be judged. That's right. We already, he knew us before we even came to the earth. You understand? Just like he knows those who are going to be in the book of life because yeah. he said it's foreknown. I already That's know right. we're going to make it. That's why a lot of you guys out here, just like with Job, just like with Abraham, when Lucifer was having a conversation in heaven about you, when he's having this conversation, the Lord has, has what? Foreknowledge. He already know you won't turn on him. He know you're going to serve him. Even though Lucifer will go to him and be all above Satan or the adversary and say, I can turn him. I know I can. He may be saying to him, go ahead, try him. Just like he did Job. Just like he did Abraham with Isaac. Go ahead and try him. How do you know you're not having a conversation about you? He has foreknowledge that you're going to be with him. How many times is people, this is why they say you don't want to be sown on rocks. That's you right. get the word, you know the word, and you follow it and start doing right. But then your root takes root, but it cannot get in soil because it's on rocks. And then it dies out. When, when? When Satan comes, steals it away. Mm -hmm. Don't let Satan steal your crown. Don't let him take your crown away from you. We're a nation of kings and priests. And the Lord has foreknowledge of who you are and what you're going to do. Satan may say he can turn you, but the Lord knows he will not turn his children. Yeah. He has foreknowledge of this. Go ahead and read. Romans 8, 29. It says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did <sighs> predetermine to be Come on. conformed to the image of Come on. his son Come on that now. he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Oh, praise the most high. So we have to emulate his son. That's right. When we start walking in the spirit, we're emulating him. We're doing the things he did, talking like he did, walking like he did, and even looking like he did. We're watching how we dress, how we move, how we talk, all these things. Go ahead. Romans 8, verse 30. It says, moreover, whom he did predetermine them, he also called. Hmm. And whom he called them, he also justified. So the Lord says many are called, but a few are going to be chosen. That's right. These are the ones that he's called. This is why it's called a called out what? Assembly. And he's calling right This now. is why we're assembling right now. We're a called wow. out assembly. He's calling us right now. Keep reading, but please. But then it says after he called, he, hmm. he, he does what? Then makes you justified right? yes what does that mean hmm. to be made righteous made righteous come out okay. of sin yeah. and whom he justified them he also glorified yes verse 31 what shall we then say to these things if y'all be for us okay who can be against us? That's why I told my wife last week when she was the other day and we was talking about the spirits. And I said, y'all come. What you going to do? Demons. I don't care about none of y'all. All y'all people spirits, bring it. What you going to do? Because if he's with me, who can be against me? Let's go. Bring it out. I'm not worried about no spirits, these witches, these demons, these warlocks, these people out here who are casting spells. You can't do nothing to me. Joseph had the same thing when he was sitting there and part of his house, and the woman gave him this food with roots on it, and she put spells on it, thinking that she can do get Joseph to sin against our Father in heaven, not understanding that Joseph knew the power in him. He knew that if the Lord was with him, nobody could be against him. So he didn't even eat that food that day. He knew she put a spell on that food. He knows she put roots on it, enchantments. So he waited for her to get there, and guess what he did? He ate it right in front of her. This is what I'm doing right now. I'm eating the food right in front of y'all. Go ahead, bring what, what you got. You can't do nothing to me. Hmm? The devil can't do nothing to you unless you ask him. If you ask the devil to come into you or something like that, he got permission. If you ask the devil, you know what I'm saying? If you say to the devil, you know, I want you to come into me, never ask the devil to come into you. Never empty your mind. That's why you don't do that yoga. When you're in yoga, they put their three fingers up, six, 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 and then they empty their minds. Once you empty your mind, Satan comes in. Come on now. Idle mind is what? The devil's, the devil's workshop. workshop. That's when Satan comes in. Folks, y'all better know the work is of Beelzebub, Lucifer, the adversary, because he will trick you. What does Satan mean? Liar and what? Trickster. Mm -hmm. Liar and deceiver. He will deceive you. So I want y'all to understand how this works. 
all praises. Where we at, Sister Kaya? Romans 8 31. It says, what I'm sorry, y'all. I got a little fire in me right now, boy. Right. A little fire in me right now, I boy. I feel this. it. This is my, one of my favorite chapters all praises. right here. Yes, all it praises. Says, uh, what shall we then say to these things? If y'all be for us, who can be against us? Nobody. Period. Go ahead. He that spared not his own son, but Come on. delivered him up for us all. Come on. How should he not with him also freely give us all things? He How let him die. Him? He let his son die for us. He could have saved him. I could have saved my two boys. You understand? Judgment came and they delivered up, but they're sleeping in the earth. But the Messiah, he had the, the most high had the ability to save him, but he didn't do it for our sakes. He didn't do it. He said, when he went to Matthew, he says, take no food, no rain, he told the disciples, but I want you to go to what? The house of Israel. He came to save us from our sins. Then later on, because of our transgressions, it was opened up to what we call the handmaids and servants. That's why he said, I'm pouring my spirit out of my children and also the handmaids and servants. Because they believed a lot of more than we. Yeah. Let's keep going. Romans 8, verse 33, it says, who shall lay anything to the charge of Yahuwah's elect? Come on now. It is Yah that justifies. Come on now. Who is he that condemns? It is Yahusha Hamashiach he, that died. He's the only one that's going to judge us, folks. The Lord said, I'm not judging nobody. I'm putting all things in my son's hand. He died for you. He's going to judge you. His yeah. blood was shed for you. So it's only right that he's the one that judge you. Yeah, he sacrificed himself for you, so it's only right that he's the one that judge you because he's the one that sacrificed himself for you. That's why I'm giving it to him and nobody else. Yeah, go ahead. Verse 34 it says, It is Yahusha Hamashiach that died, yeah, rather that is risen again, hmm. who is even at the right hand of Yah. I thought they were the same person who is even at the right hand. Of so Yah. he's sitting on the right hand side of our father, he's his breath. His word, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God because that is what he put into his body and made him a soul, a living soul, a being. And he's sitting on his right-hand side. He can't be him. How can he sit on the right-hand side of himself? That's his son. Go ahead. Who also makes intercession for us. He's He makes what? Intercession for so us. So that's why he's called the mediator. He's the one that intercedes to go to the most high for us. That's why when you pray, you say your prayer, but you say you finish it in the name of your son. The sure I pray, amen, because it has to go through him in order to get to him. He is our high priest. He's our high priest. Mm -hmm. He's our king, our priest, and also our prophet. And so we got to understand he's the intercessor for us. You got to go through him in order to get to the father. That's right. this is how you know it's not the father. Him are not the same. In order to even get to the father, you got to go through his son. Yes. He's the intercessor. Keep reading. Romans 8, verse 35, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Mashiach? Come on. Shall tribulation, shall tribulation and all this go, distress, distress, or persecution, or persecution, or famine, or, famine, or nakedness, come on. or peril, come on. or sword? Come on. Verse 36. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, go ahead. All those things you just heard. Yes. All those things we all go through. Read them again. Okay. Read them. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Mashiach? Who's going to take this love away that we found? Shall tribulation? All this tribulation we're going through in the times, the missiles, and the, and the nuclear wars, and wars, and rumors of wars, keep reading. Or distress? All this distress with bills, and worryation, and their parents, and, and you got your mama, your children giving you pure hell, your spouse ain't right. And every time you're trying to walk right, somebody else is bringing you back, and you're like, man, I don't want to turn to my old yeah. self. They're bringing me back to that. Yes. But they, they can't bring you back not when you got the Holy Spirit and you the road walk over. That's read. Or persecution. When you get persecuted and everybody's always putting you down or talking about you. You understand? Mm -hmm. When you're pointed at, even on your job, or when you when you're walking in the streets, your family, your friends, so-called friends. Yes. When they're talking about you, keep reading. Or famine. Or when you're hungry and going through it, can't figure out how to feed yourself. Huh? Keep reading. Or nakedness. Or when you ain't got clothes and you're trying to clothe yourself, you ain't got money to go buy your new outfit even though you should be happy with what you got. Go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. Or peril. What is a peril? That's a trial. Okay. A trouble. You got going through your trouble and your trials. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Or a sword. Or a sword, which simply means when you see people die around you and there's death around you and you're constantly seeing death all the time. And then a lot of people, they stop believing in the most high simply because they see loved ones dying. 
And I understand that when, when Abraham, you understand when Sarah died, one thing the Lord told him, because he never blamed the Lord for his, her death, because she was old and her heart gave out when she was filled with joy. And he didn't blame Abraham. He never blamed the Most High. He said, because you didn't blame me for her death, you are truly my friend. Mm -hmm. Let's read. As it is written, I'm on verse 36, Romans 8, verse 36. It says, as it is written, for your sake, we are killed all the day long. Come on now. We are accounted as sheep. Come on slaughter. now. This is why people are killed all day long. Mm -hmm. This is why we slaughter. This is why these so-called cops, these other people pull us over, and all of a sudden our people are dead. You see our people hung in trees. This is why every time we turn around, they use our babies for alligator bait. This is why Planned Parenthood was put in our neighborhood. This is why every time you turn around, they give us these so-called medicines to wipe us out. But in Lord says every time they create a sword for my children i'm gonna take that sword and turn it around on them and that's why the planned parenthood was taken away because 80 percent of the women come in with yt this is why the so-called aids they got medicines now because most of the people catching the yt this is why every time this is why the laws planned parenthood was just taken they didn't just stop abortion they took them out of the neighborhoods they were created for us but these people are going everything they create the black swine flu Get this, in 1819, it was called a swine flu. It later became the Black Plague. Why? They created it in a Kentucky base for us to give it to us to wipe the Indians out because the Indians ran everything. We are the Indians. But what happened? It turned on them. Then they had to end up calling the Black Plague because they turned our color. They turned black. Folks, the Lord makes mockery at them. He says, I don't, he said, I laugh at them. They try to take us out. And every time they try to take us out, it comes back on their head mm -hmm. tenfold, fiftyfold, and a hundredfold. Oh, no. Every time. They're decreasing and we're increasing. They're not even having babies. I have 32 grandchildren. A couple of them, four of them upstairs right now as we speak. The Lord said, how do you know when a man is truly rich? When his seed multiplies tenfold, fifty, and a hundredfold. That is true wealth. Why? Because in my father's house, there's many mansions. I got a many mansions going to be with all the children I got. Y'all understand me? We got to not look at this stuff carnally. This stuff is passing away. We got to get our hearts set on spiritual things because we're going to be spiritual creatures again. That world that we came from, Adam and Eve, and we're going to read a little bit. What time is it? This lesson went on a little longer. We almost done with first, yeah. uh, chapter eight. So that world that we came from, that world before they knew flesh, before they knew body, that whole world that they came from, I want y'all to understand something. That's what we're returning to. We're only given flesh and bones because of sin. This is why we know pain. This is why we know hunger. This is why we know what heat is from the sun. This is why we know what thirst is. And darkness. And darkness. We know Adam and Eve never even knew what darkness was. So saying that is only given us because of the sin. But when the sin is taken away and we're changed, we'll be mortal creatures. Then we can go back to where the area they call the North Pole. We got this big old mountain there with four rivers run off, like in, Gen in Genesis, where the, where the winds go around and nothing can go in. And I believe there's an angel right there wielding that sword. You call it the North Pole. And that mountain goes all the way into heaven. They used to call it Zion. They call it Black Rock today. Folks, everything's being exposed. We're going to be creatures going back to that spiritual state. We won't have to worry about none of this pain in this world, none of the sorrows. That's why the Lord says when he comes gather us in the first resurrection, this is when Gog, Magog, and Moab, Russia ran to China, and the Africans come up against this holy mountain. And then in that day, that's the day. Remember, we just read that he's coming to us in Matthew after the great tribulation. He's going to gather us. When he gathers us, he's going to make us immortal. And that's when we're going to go back into the lands. And that's when the gates are going to be open for us. That's when his body is acceptable to go into those lands that was given to our forefathers. That's what's coming right now as we speak. We're in Romans chapter 8, verse verse 37. Go ahead. It says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors Come on. through him that loved us. Through that Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit had to change us, folks. The letter of the law couldn't change us. We had the laws. Every, we slaughtered birds, calves, bulls, everything. There's so much blood around us, man. You understand? So the Lord had to bring something better. He had to bring something where we were sitting there reading and trying to do it. It didn't work. He had to put a spirit in us, a force in us to make us embarrassed at the person we used to be. To make us new. To make us new again. That's why John the Baptist say, there's one that's coming whose shoes I'm not even able to unlatch. He said, I can't unlatch his shoes. He said, I baptize you with water. But he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit or the Rowak Kadesh. Because once it gets into you, that is a true awakening. That's being re reborn. Now you're going to be wanting to do things in the spirit. Now you're going to get convicted. Yeah. That moral compass that the Lord said planted us on Mount Horai and Sinai, what the Holy Spirit does, or that, that Rowak Kadesh, she brings all things back to what? 
Remember it. You remember who you are. You remember how you're supposed to walk. You remember how you're supposed to talk. You remember that you're sons of the living God, sons and daughters of the living Elohim. You get convicted. And that's why Yahushua said it's necessary. Come on. We must be born again. Yes, you got to be born of water and spirit, he said. You got to be. And so when you're born of spirit, you're not going to want to do those things. The Holy Spirit is going to convict you. And it's going to be a driving force for you to go this way or that way. It's like he's going to move you this way and that way. She's going to take you. First thing she does when you get reborn again, she walks with you. And she tests you. You're going to be tested. Remember, Yeshua was tested after he came out of that fast 40 days. You're finna be tested. After you're tested, then the Holy Spirit starts walking you. She's called a what? Comforter. She's going to start comforting, walking with you like a mother, showing you and teaching you. Your first teacher was your mother. That's your first teacher. She's going to start showing you things. And then after that, she's going to start revealing things to you. Yes. This is how this works. Threefold. Just like that threefold cord, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works the same way. It's in stages. So Rock chapter 2 breaks that whole process down. No, all praise or Ecclesiasticus chapter Ecclesiasticus 2. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 or yes. Sirach chapter 2. All praise the Most High. Write it down. Um, go ahead, please, Sister Mikhail. Romans chapter 8, verse 38. It says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, mm -hmm. nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Yah, which is in Mashiach Yahusha, our at now do you understand Hallelujah. when I was telling you about these demons and spirits, I don't care about them. Yes. Now you understand why I say I don't care. We say well, you gotta be careful what you say. I ain't gotta be careful for nothing. What I gotta be careful for? Ain't nothing finna separate me from my father. I don't have no fear of no man, no no creatures. I don't have no pre no no uh, 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 no death, no uh, no angels, no principalities, no powers, or uh, none of the present things that are on this earth. I could care less about them. I have the spirit of the living Elohim in me. I don't go right. I don't go left. I keep my eyes single. If I was going left and right, then I would have fear. Why? Because I know I'm not walking right. But if I know I'm walking right, if I know I'm talking right, and I know if I'm not out there lusting after no other women, if I know I'm not out here taking people and taking gain for godliness, if I know I'm not out here, you understand, preaching the word out of order, you understand, trying to get people to come to us simply because yeah. we want to be followed. I know I'm doing things righteously. I know this. Oh, I know God. this. Hallelujah. So this is why when I said to you, I think it was the other night, I don't know what day that was, uh -huh. when you was like, don't say grab and come to you because oh, I said yeah, I'm not scared yeah, of no yeah, demons, no yeah. spirit, nothing. Bring it. What you going to do? Bring it. Don't say that. Don't say that. You know, Fear is bondage. This is one of the reasons I want to do it. This is not only for us, all for my wife too. I want to reiterate things with her. This is why the Lord does this. This is why the Lord said, if a man's not spiritual, his house is not spiritual. Yes. You got to bring these things out because a lot of our women have fear. Not of our men got fear, but our women more so. Who does Satan work on the first time? The woman. We're going to read Adam and Eve. He worked on Eve first. And so we got to realize the woman's also, what did the Lord said, woman's a weaker what? Vessel. A weaker vessel. And so that's why I tell men, stop talking about, well, I'm trying to show my wife this show. Well, a lot of women are trying to show their husbands stuff and they ain't getting it. This works two ways, folks. But one thing I want to stress and be paramount about this, you cannot have fear, period. Once you got a little crack in your armor, just a little crack, Satan, Beelzebub, the adversary, Lucifer, can come in. Yeah. But the Lord's children, we don't have no cracks. <laughs> I'm spiritually sealed. huh? I'm spiritually healed. huh? And the Lord has spiritually peeled me. He's taken the layers of deception to seat off of me. He's made me a new man. He's taking these old garments off and put on white ones. He's starting to wash me from the inside out. He's revived me from the dead and brought me to the life. Hallelujah. You understand? Yes. I have no fear of no man. I have no fear of the presence. I have no fear of death. I have no fear of demons. I have no fear of angels. I have no fear of nothing that come on this earth. The only fear I got is the one that's not on this earth. Yes. And that's Yahuwah. My heart is in heaven. That's where my treasures are. That's what my hope is. I'm a spiritual creature. I just happen to be in this carnal body. When you process things like that and you walk in the most high and he's walking mm. in you, you will fear no man and you have no fear and you will have no bondage. And the truth will truly set you free. Oh, praise the All praises. All praises the most high. high. All praises. Bring it out. Now here, did you go over these words at the bottom that here? What we're talking about. Did um, you go over any of this? Yeah. Okay, all praise the most high. 
Okay, all praises. All right, saying this, we're going to read the book of Adam and Eve. Uh, we got we went two hours in, which is early for us, so we're going to put some hours in. Uh, we do have grandbabies upstairs. We're going to read some, and then we'll come back. Um, Sister Micaiah, mm -hmm. you go ahead and grab the book. I have it here. I oh, actually, somebody was asking what this is. Too. Okay, this let me is show you. First okay. book of Adam and Eve. This is the first book of Adam and Eve. I'm going to have you read the preface, and I'm going to read. We're both going to just take turns reading. This is the first book of Adam and Eve. This is the book that all the ancestors would read, folks. This is traditional. This is an oral history of our Adam and Eve that was handed down to so-called Israel. And these books are ancient. It's a deeper account because when you go to the Bible, I want you guys to get this. When you read the Bible, the Bible is just the bones. The meat, you understand, comes from Jasher, Jubilees, Enoch, and these other books that are taken. The book of Adam and Eve, this is when the meat is thrown on. I always string the Bible is this. You can't have the old, the New Testament without the old. The Old Testament was carnal. It was the flesh. It was the bones. It was the bones, excuse me. Without the Old Testament, you would not have the bones to put the meat on, which is the spiritual part. The Old Testament's written laws, and the second Ezra say it was a blueprint to tell us how to walk. That's what it was. But since we couldn't follow the letter of the law, the letter of the law was a curse to us because we could all kept dying. If two people saw you do it, you was cursed because you judged. That's called like a curse. All two people had to do was see it. So the Lord had to do something. He had to start a new covenant. Moses was the one who gave us the old covenant, but Yeshua came to start a new one. It's not going to be completed until he comes back for his bridegroom. He's the bride. Remember, he's the heir of this earth. We just read this. And we're what? Joint heirs. So when he comes back for the joint heirs, you understand, this is when the covenant is going to be completed. So the Old Testament is basically the bones. The New Testament is bringing the meat. Because now instead of doing this, you understand by the letter of the law and to seeing it, now you got to be doing it in the spirit. Now, saying that, doing it in the spirit simply means this. You got something different that you didn't have a letter of law. You got grace now. You got a time period to get it right. But we just read in Matthew that no man knows the day at a time, Matthew 24. He says, that, 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 what did he say? That the Lord's come like a thief in what? Thief in the night. You're going to be eating, sleeping, marrying, and partying, and he's going to come. And you guys are not going to be prepared. I'm telling you, a lot of you are not because you don't think this is real. And then he said another thing I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a chance to repent. You did not have that under the letter of the law. That's why I say the Old Testament is the body of what I call the bones. You understand? Or what we call, you know, I look at it as Ezekiel 37. He said, I see these bones, but they don't move. And he said, prophesy bone to bone. That's what the Old Testament, the bones to bones. Then he says, I need you to prophesy flesh to flesh. That's what the New Testament brings. It brings that flesh and it puts it on those bones. Then he says, I need you to get the four winds into you. And do we learn in order to get the four winds, you got to go to who's got to do it? Yahuwah. His name is he who breathes life. Nail in hand. He breathes the four winds into you. So the Old Testament is the bones. The New Testament is the body. And then when you start using that bones and then you put the body on it, now the most high put the four winds in you and get you up and walk. This is how this works, folks. I'm explaining this in a carnal way and I'm explaining it in a spiritual way. This is twofold. So when you read the book of Adam and Eve, this is an ancient book. And I want my wife to go ahead and read. Um, she's going to read. Let me go ahead and get my book. Um, I actually bought it on Kindle also. Um, I got, actually, this is Joseph. I like um, Brother H. So we're going to read the book of Adam and Eve. And you might want to do a precursor here. Hold on, what's going on? For what, the book of Adam and Eve? Let me see what we got here. Uh, let me see. Let me go and read it here. I don't know how this was reading. Let me see how yours is reading here. All right, book of Adam and Eve, prologue. First book of Adam and Eve is Death and Life. I want to read that. That's the first chapter there. Uh, okay, on the third day, yeah. Okay, so go ahead and read the prelogue. Go ahead and read the um, prelogue first, and then go into the book. All right. All right, folks, this is the book of Adam and Eve. I want you guys to understand that our ancestors read this. Fear comes when you have no knowledge and no wisdom. Fear comes when you're scared. Fear comes from lack of wisdom. And so the Lord says the knowledge of this world is what? Foolishness. So when you read and get studied the knowledge of this world, it'll give you fear. But the Lord's true children don't have fear because we have knowledge. We have foreknowledge. Just like the Lord said he foreknew what we would be, if we're going to make it with him in the book of life or not. And so this foreknowledge that we're getting from these books, you understand, it casts away fear. And because why? We become in love with the Most High. We love the word. And love casts out what, Sister Micaiah? It casts out fear. It casts out fear. 
And so this is what we need to do. And so what people also need to mm -hmm. understand that fear and bondage are spirits that come together. Yes. And that's why the enemy uses fear to keep us yeah. in bondage. Take a break real quick. Go ahead. Oh, okay. okay. And so um, in breaking down the word fear in the Greek, it's G5401. It's phobos, which reminds us of the word, what, phobia, right? So fear and one of the words used in the very definition is terror, right? Isn't that what the the system that we live in? They're constantly talking about terror attacks, constantly, constantly, constantly. And we're going to see an elevation in that as well as uh, we see their system come to an end. We're going to see them doing more flat, false flag type things to put fear in people, right? So people will be willing to accept whatever bondage they come up with next, right? Um, and an example of that is like the 9-11 attacks. You know, we know they use that to bring in different laws that take away freedoms and people were okay with that. Same with the uh, 2020 yeah. situation where they used uh this pestilence uh, you know i'm talking just follow me yeah certain words i don't want to say but right. they use that to get people to say okay willingly we're going to wear the mask everywhere we go we're going to take this medicine they're offering well let's get deeper than that let's think about africa why are the africans kicking them out of that country <laughs> they did they start a lot of proxy what wars mm -hmm. so the wars brought what fear on them since the wars brought fear and they were worried about this other nation coming in, this other nation coming in, they said, you know what we'll do? We'll come in and protect you. So they come in, they bring their soldiers in, but what they do is, why they got their soldiers, they're the ones who started the wars on the other yeah. side. So they'll bring the problem, then they say they're going to come fix it, but they're the ones who orchestrated the problem. Right. Overt and covert ways. This is called overt and covert. So what happens is, the devil works in an overt way, which is openly, but a lot of things he does covertly uh, behind the scenes. Yes. And so what he does is he'll, the devil's a liar and what? Deceiver. That's right. He'll say, okay, you know what? If you do this, this, and this, I'm going to help you. But yet he's the same one implanting the problem that you have. Yeah. See, these people have figured it out now. The Africans have figured it out. They figured out that Esau and Edom and Rome were behind all their problems. As a matter of fact, these people, this is why the Bible says in the book of Open Diary, I'm going to take the wise men out of Edom. They went and destroyed the pipeline that Russia had, even though they were getting a lot of oil from Russia. They destroyed it. And then in their minds, they're saying, we're going to build a pipeline through Africa. Yeah. And we're going to go ahead and use that and mess them up. Not understanding, they don't know the ways of the Most High. The Lord told you straight away in Ezekiel 38, 39, that the Africans are going to join who? God, Russia. And so by them joining them, they said, you can't use those pipelines in our land no more. I dare you to come through here. I beg you to come over here. See, they've laid snares upon their own selves. They've taken a sword and turned it on themselves. That's He's right. taken a wise man out of Edom. They make decisions where they don't think. Why are you sending jobs overseas? Now the people here don't even have the jobs. Why is it that you're buying oil from Russia? Why are you buying oil from Iran? Listen, they still was buying, still to this day are buying it. But these are the same ones who are your enemies. That's why I said the daughter of Babylon, all merchants who borrowed and trade with her are going to do what? Turn, Turn on her. her. Now they're turning on her. This is all biblical prophecy, folks. This is biblical prophecy mm -hmm. playing out. These people use fear to control the world. They use ignorance, you understand. My people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. knowledge. When you don't know something, when I say ignorant, that simply means you don't have knowledge. That's right. We see the word ignorant. We think people just cursing us out or saying something that. No, no, no. Being ignorant meant simply means you don't have any knowledge. You haven't read. You haven't studied. What you're doing is regurgitating vomit of men. Once you say what they said, it's vomit coming out of your mouth now. Because it has no factual background to it. Read the prelog, please, to the book. Of All right. So we're in the first book of Adam and Eve. Let me show it again. Yeah. All right. This book here is the first book of Adam and Eve. You can get this book on Amazon by Rutherford Hayes Platt. I'm going to actually do a couple of books of Adam and Eve myself, and I'm going to publish a few books myself. I'm going to start putting some books online myself. And this is by Rutherford Hayes Platt. Okay. And so I want to go through this to give you guys an inception of fear, how fear works. Not only that, how the forefathers and all of them, what they went through because of fear, not just fear, because of following the most high, not following the most high. 
So let's get a deeper understanding of really what happened with Adam and Eve in the Bible, according to what the ancestors wrote. Remember, the Bible is just the bones. You don't get the meat till you go to these other books. That's why the Lord said in the last days, there'll be many highways of knowledge to give us understanding. Um, I'll let my wife read first, and then I'll pick up after that a little bit. Right, we'll let so you read a few. prologue here, the first book of Adam and Eve. It says, the first book of Adam and Eve details the life and times of Adam and Eve after they were expelled from the garden to the time that Cain killed his brother Abel. Mm -hmm. It tells of Adam and Eve's first dwelling, the cave of treasures their trials and temptations. Yes. Satan's many apparitions to them. Many, not some, many. Yes. The birth of Cain, Abel, and their twin sisters. Mm -hmm. and Cain's love for his beautiful twin sister, Lulua. Now, on that note, a lot of people always ask, how do they multiply? What do they get? What, what, we don't hear. The Bible, when you read the Bible, folks, I want y'all to get this. It never really mentions the women because the bloodline comes to who? The men. So a lot of times when you read the Bible, back then those women, they didn't really, they didn't, not that they didn't, um, they, they loved the women and they revered them, but they knew according to the Most High, it's about the men. Because the men are the ones who bring the bloodline, the men are the ones who bring the judgment on the nation, the men are the ones who, remember, it wasn't because of Eve with Herod death, but because of who? Adam. Adam. The man is who sin come through. That's why the Bible always does. It doesn't talk about the women. It always omits them pretty much. And it talks about the men because death came on earth because of what? A man. Also, salvation is coming because of what? A man. So he goes through the bloodlines. Even though his women are beautiful and sacred, don't get me wrong. The Bible just doesn't mention it. But later on, we get through other books. It brings it up. And this is one. Let okay. it keep reading. It says, whom Adam and Eve wished to join to Abel. This book is considered by many scholars to be part of the Pseudepigrapha. Mm -hmm. The Pseudepigrapha is a collection of historical biblical works that yes. are considered to be fiction. Because of that stigma, this book was not included in the compilation of the Holy Bible. Mm -hmm. This book is a written history of what happened in the days of Adam and Eve. It's Eve. what? It's a written it's, history. Uh -huh. Our ancestors is all ready. Go ahead of what happened in the days of Adam and Eve after they were cast out of the garden. Although considered to be pseudepigraphic by some, mm -hmm. it carries significant meaning and insight into events of that time. Yes, It is doubtful that these writings could have survived all the many centuries if there were no substance to them. That's right. This book is simply a version of an account handed down by word of mouth from generation to generation. Just like Jasher, just like the Book of Jubilees. Mm -hmm. They hand accounts from generation to generation. That's why in Jasher and Jubilees, you have certain accounts by Esau, certain accounts by Canaan that are changed. But the meanings and understanding are the same in the end. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Linking the time that the first human life was created to the time when somebody finally decided to write it down. Mm -hmm. This particular version is the work of unknown Egyptians. Mm -hmm. The lack of historical illusion makes it difficult. Remember, we were in Egypt at that time. Mm -hmm. Joseph ran Egypt for 70 years. So I'm sure our people wrote it when we were in Egypt. Go ahead. It says the lack of historical illusion makes it difficult to precisely date the writing. However, using other pseudepigraphical works as a reference, it was probably written a few hundred years before the birth of Yahusha. Mm -hmm. Parts of this version are found in the Jewish Talmud and the Islamic Quran, showing what a vital role it played in the original literature of human wisdom. So the Quran has it, a lot of this stories, the Talmud has it, and a lot of the ancient Egyptians has all this stuff written down also as well. So there's different sources to collaborate this book. Go ahead. It says the Egyptian author wrote in Arabic, but later translations were found written in Ethiopic. The there present goes. English translation was translated in the late 1800s by Dr. S.C. Milan and Dr. E. Trump. That's good. All right. That's good. Let's go ahead and go. That's good. It's perfect. So I just want to give my brief understanding of the book, okay. where it comes from. So let's read the book of Adam and Eve. Let's go ahead and go. All right. Chapter one, the crystal sea. God commands Adam expelled from Eden to live in the cave of treasure. Now I told you guys the garden of Eden. I'm almost positive it's in the North Pole. I'm almost hundred percent. That's where the mountain sticks through the air. It's exactly as this book explains it. It sticks all the way through the air. As a matter of fact, all comes this point North. It's a totally magnetic mountain. They used to call it Mount Zion. The four rivers, when you read Genesis 1, that come off it are coming from there. The old maps, and I got this in my book, America, the True Old World, they actually show it. They show it in the middle of the flat earth, in the middle, 
with four rivers running from it. And then get this, when you look at NASA, the winds go around it, nothing touches it. It's a spiritual place. Okay? So this is, I believe, the Garden of Eden where the angels got the sword and he's wielding, you can't go back. They came out of that place into the land. Once they left that area, that's when fresh came on. This is what we're going to start reading. Go ahead. All right. It says, on the third day, Yah planted the garden in the east of the earth, on the border of the world, eastward, beyond which, towards the sun rising, one finds nothing but water that encompasses the whole world yeah. and reaches to the borders of heaven. Yes. And to the north of the garden, there is a sea of water, clear and pure to the taste, unlike anything else. So that through the clearness thereof, one may look into the depths of the earth. So it's so clear, you can look straight into the bottom of the earth. Go ahead. And when a man washes himself in it, he becomes clean of the cleanness thereof and white of his whiteness, even if he were dark. That's something they put in there. Right. <laughs> Verse four. Just like they did with the Book of Mormon. You recognize. This is, see, folks, when yes. you get these books, you got to take the meat throughout the bones. There you go. This is when they put this in here. Because in the Book of Mormon, it says that they were dirty. But they, they became clean, even though they became dark, even though they were white. This is what it was saying by the Indians. They became dark, even though they were white. Because So when you see this, this is when they interjected something in there. Right. Go ahead. Verse 4, it says, And Yah created that sea of his own good pleasure, for he knew what would come of the man he would make. So that after he had left the garden on account of his transgression, men should be born in the earth. Among them are righteous ones who will die. Whose souls Yah were raised at the last day, yes. when all of them will return to their flesh, bathe in the water of that sea, and repent of their sins. Mm. But when Yah made Adam go out of the garden, he did not place him on the border of it northward. This was so that he and Eve would not be able to go near to the sea of water where they could wash themselves in it, be cleansed from their sins erase the transgression they had committed and be no longer reminded of it in the thought of their punishment. As to the southern side of the garden, Yah did not want Adam to live there either because when the wind blew from the north, it would bring him on that southern side, the delicious smell of the trees of the garden. <laughs> Wherefore, Yah did not put Adam there. This was so that he would not be able to smell the sweet smell of those trees, forget his transgression, and mm. find consolation for what he had done mm. by taking the light and the smell of the trees and yet not be cleansed from his transgression. Again, also, <coughs> because Yah is merciful and of great pity and governs all things in a way that he alone knows, he made our father Adam live in the western border of the garden because on that side, the earth is very broad. Mm. And Yah commanded him to live there in a cave in a rock, the cave of treasures below the garden. Mm, prizes. Um, What's wrong? It was something I wanted to. Oh, when it mm. talks about verse eight, when he says that, because Yah is merciful and mm -hmm. great pity and governs all things in a way that he alone right, knows. Right. You know, and that's the problem. He knew what was people. best. He knew what was best for us. A lot of people yeah. are trying to mm -hmm. mock the most high into their way of logic. That's and right. Thinking, and that's you right. can't do that. Why? Because he alone knows what's best for you. Exactly. Did he not make us in his image? So he knew what would temptation be and what would he could do to keep us from temptation. Did he not say that he's putting temptation on what? The whole world, but he'll keep us from the hour of what? Temptation. So he's putting a temptation on the whole world, but he said with his children, he'll keep you from that hour of temptation. It's pretty deep. All right, chapter 11. Adam and Eve faint when they leave the garden. God sends his word. Chapter to 2, you mean? Them. Chapter 2. Chapter uh -huh. 2. He said 11. Go ahead. Oh, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, but when our father Adam and Eve went out of the garden, they walked the ground on their feet, not knowing they were walking. They didn't even know they was walking. When he put them out, they didn't realize that. This is the spiritual place they came from. When he put them out, they didn't realize it was walking. That's deep. Go ahead. And when they came to the opening of the gate of the garden and saw the broad earth spread before them, covered with stones, large and small, and with sand, they feared and trembled and fell on their faces from the fear that came over them. And they were as dead. <laughs> because whereas until this time they had been in the garden, land beautifully planted with all manner of trees 
they now saw themselves in a strange land which they knew not and had never seen. Come on now. And because when they were in the garden, they were filled with the grace of a bright nature and they had not hearts turned toward earthly things. This is the same example for people. When you read these, the same things with Israel. When we were in our land, we had a plentiful, beautiful places. We had things full of trees. We had our own wheat, our own fields. You understand? But when we came into a strange land that we not, do not, he said he's going to take us to a land that our forefathers do not and what? Never seen. And then and, and, and get this. Our bright nature that we used to have in that kingdom was changed and diminished, just like Adam and Eve were mm -hmm. when they came out. This is symbolic of them and symbolic of us. All of this is symbolism, folks. Our nature changed when we came into a different land. We started doing as what? The heathens do. We stopped doing the things that we did in our own nation, in our own land, mm -hmm. when we had the bright nature of the Most High. This is symbolic. It's symbolism. Go ahead. And so many people's hearts have been turned towards earthly things. So many. Not heavenly. Not heavenly things. Verse 5, it says, Therefore, Yah had pity on them. And when he saw them fallen before the gate of the garden, he sent his word to our father, Adam and Eve, and raise them from their fallen state. This, how does he raise us from our fallen state today? He says what? What does he say? His word. Mm -hmm. What is his word? The Rorak Kodesh, the Holy Spirit that Yeshua left. And it raises us up from what? Our fallen state. This is deep. Keep going. Chapter three. Chapter three. I'll go ahead. This is why it's important to read yes. his word as well. When you start reading these words, they're going to resonate with you guys. This is not just like with them. It's also what we're going through today and what happened with us, too. All this is spiritual. All the Lord doing is mirroring things. It's all he's doing. Y'all said to Adam, I have ordained on this earth days and years. And thou, it says, and thou and thy seed shall dwell and walk in it until the days and the years are fulfilled when I shall send the word that created thee. Mm. And against which thou hast transgressed the word that made thee come out of the garden and raised thee. When thou was fallen, yea, the word that will again save the will save thee when the five days and a half are fulfilled. And when Adam heard these words from Yah, and of the great five days and a half, he did not understand the meaning of them. For Adam was thinking that there would be five, but five days and a half for him. So Adam, like, man, I'm gonna live five days, that's it. <laughs> so he was scared. He thinks he won't live five days for him to the end of the world. And Adam wept and prayed to Yah to explain it to him. Please, Lord, explain this to me. Five days I got to live. Please explain. Then Yah, in, then Yah in his mercy for Adam, who was made after his own image and similitude, explained to him that these were 5,500 years and how one and how one would then come to save him and his seed. How many years did he say? 5,500. 5,500. And one was going to come to save him and his seed. Okay? But God, but Yah had... It says, but Yah had before that made this covenant with our father, Adam, in the same terms, era he came out of the garden when he was by three, by three, where by it says where he was by a tree, by the tree where Eve took the fruit and gave it to him to eat. And as much as when our father Adam came out of the garden, garden, he passed by that tree and saw how Yah had taken changed the appearance of it into another form and how it was withered. And as Adam went, and as Adam went to it, he feared and trembled and he fell down. But Yah in his mercy lifted him up and then made this covenant with him. And again, when Adam was at the gate of the garden and saw the cherub with the sword of a flashing fire in his hand, and the cherub grew angry and frowned at him, both Adam and Eve became afraid and the thought he might, and they said, and thought he might put them to death. So they fell on their face and, and trembled with fear. But he had pity on them and showed them mercy. And turning from them, went up into heaven and prayed unto the Lord and said, Lord, thou didst send me to watch the gate of the garden with the sword of fire. But when, they, when thy servants Adam and Eve saw me, they fell on their face and they were as dead. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do to thy servants? Then Yah had pity on them and showed them mercy and sent his angel to keep the garden. And the word of the Lord came unto Adam and Eve and raised them up. What always keeps raising them up? The word. The word. I want y'all to get this. Get this. 
The Lord, the word of the Lord came to Adam and Eve and he raised them up. Well, why did they get on their face? What were they, what were they full of? Fear. Fear. So when you guys are full of fear, the word, what you call the Roa Kokodesh, what she left, it will come and it'll do what? It will raise you up. This is pretty deep. Verse 12. What, what number are we on? Let me make sure. Uh-oh, we are on Hold verse on. 16. Verse 16, okay. Okay, there we go. 16. And the Lord said to Adam, I told thee that at the end of five days and a half, I will send my word and save thee. Strengthen thy heart, therefore, and abide in the cave of treasures, of which I have before spoken of thee, spoken to thee. When Adam heard these words from God, or Elohim, he was comforted with that which Yah had told him, for he had told him how he would save him. Chapter 5. But Adam and Eve wept for having come out of the garden, their first their first abode. And indeed, when Adam looked at his flesh and it, that it was altered, he wept bitterly, he and Eve, over what they had done. And they walked and went gently down into the cave of treasures. So he said, what was altered, Sister Micaiah? His flesh had been changed. He's not, so he wasn't in the spiritual form no more. He said when he saw his flesh and he was looking and it had been altered, we got flesh on it, they wept. They're like, man, look at this. They wept. And as they came to it, Adam wept over himself and said to Eve, look at this cave that is to be our prison in this world and place of punishment. What does it compare to what the garden? What is it? It says, and what is this narrow narrowness compared to that space, to the space of the other? What is this rock by the side of those groves? What is this gloom of the, of the cavern compared with the light of the garden? What is the overhanging ledge of the rock to shelter us compared to with the mercy of the Lord that overshadowed us. Folks, this is how we need to understand. We were spiritual creatures. So this earthly place that you see right now, all these things you see is nothing compared to where we were. Nothing. Even Adam is going to it. He's like looking at this place that we have, what you call earth. He said, what is this compared to where we were? Six, what is the overhanging ledge of rock or to, our, to shelter us compared with the mercy of the Lord that overshadowed us? Verse 7, what is the soil of this cave compared to the garden's land? This earth strewed with stones and that planted with delicious fruit trees. And Adam and Eve, and Adam said to Eve, look at thine eyes and at mine, which are four beheld angels in heaven praising, and they too without ceasing, without ceasing. So Adam was like, look at me and look at your eyes. We used to be able to look in the heavens and we can see the angels praying without ceasing. But look at our eyes now. Hmm. Verse nine. But now we do not see as we did and our eyes have become a flesh. They cannot see in the like manner as we saw before. Adam said again to Eve, what is our body to, to today compared to what it was in former days when we dwelt in the garden? And after this, Adam did not like to enter into the cave under the overhanging rock, nor would he ever have entered it. But he bowed to, get to Yah's orders and said to himself, Unless I enter the cave, I shall not, I shall again be what? A transgressor. Come on now. And so this is what happens too with us. If we don't listen to the Lord's will and we go and do what we want to do, we become what? A transgressor. And so him entering to the cave is symbolic of us entering to that covenant with Yeshua so that we don't become what? Transgressors. Chapter five, go ahead and read Sister Micaiah. Okay, it says, then Adam and Eve entered the cave and stood praying in their own tongue, unknown to us, but which they knew well. Yes. And as they prayed, Adam raised his eyes and saw the rock in the roof of the cave that covered him overhead. This prevented him from seeing either heaven or Yah's creatures. Mm. So he cried and beat his chest hard until he dropped and was as dead. Mm. And Eve sat crying for she believed he was dead. Then she got up, spread her hands toward Yah, appealing to him for mercy and pity. So I want y'all to get this. Even Adam and Eve spread their hands to the Most High. That's not nothing new with Israel. The first people who came on the earth, when they would pray with the Most High, they would spread their hands to the Most High. I want y'all to get this. When you go, they never closed them, like you see in the movies and all of this stuff. Okay, when you go to my lesson, it's called the difference between Jesus and Yeshua on my YouTube page. You're going to see that your hand actually spells Yeshua in Hebrew, salvation. It's pretty deep. Go ahead and read. Yeah. 
It says, um, let's see. Where, okay, verse Three, four. four. Okay, go ahead. It says, then she got up, spread her hands toward Yah, appealing to him for mercy and pity, and said, oh, Yah, forgive me my sin, the sin which I committed, and don't remember it against me. Come on now. For I alone caused your servant to fall from the garden into this condemned land, from light into this darkness, and from hmm. the house of joy into this prison. Mm. And so remember in Genesis chapter one, the very Come first on thing now. the most high did was separate light, light from, from darkness. darkness. And then he cast Satan into what? Darkness. They didn't know Come on. darkness when they were in the garden. They never saw darkness before. Just like when we go into the new world, we'll never see dark. Remember he said that new city, Revelation 21, will never go what? We won't need the sun. He said it will so never go what though? I will light it. He said it will it never will go dark. dark. Never go dark. We're going to be changed right back into the Garden of Eden again. You'll never see darkness again. Go ahead. Verse 6, it says, oh, yeah, look at this. Your servant fallen in this manner and bring him back to life that he may cry and repent of his transgression, which he committed through me. Don't take away his soul right now, but let him live that he may stand after the measure of his repentance. And do your will as before his death. So you see how his woman is superseding and she's praying for him. This is another reason the Lord said, even if you don't have faith, that a man could be saved through a woman and a woman could be saved through her husband. You understand why? For the children's sake. They hadn't even had children yet. They hadn't even replenished this earth yet. So the Lord, she said, I need to pray for this man. And when I pray for this man, you know, he comes back. This is when they can have babies and children. But if he don't come back, I can't do nothing on my own. That's why a man can be saved to a wife and a wife can be saved to a husband. She was superseding in prayer to save her man. Go ahead and read. Mm. Verse 8. But if you do not bring him back to life, then, oh, God, take away my own soul that I be like him. And come on. leave me not in this dungeon, one and alone, for I could not stand alone in this world but with him only come on now for you oh yeah caused him to fall asleep and took a bone from his side and restored the flesh in the place of it by your divine power yes and you took me the bone and make me a woman bright like him with heart reason and speech and mm. flesh like to his own and you made me after the likeness of his looks by your mercy and power oh lord i and he are one and you, oh Yah, are our creator. You are he who made us both in one day. Yes. Therefore, oh Yah, give him life that he may be with me in this strange land yes. while we live in it on account of our transgression. Come on. This but, is why we had to be in a strange land and live in it because on account of what? Our, our transgressions. This is all mirroring Israel. All of this. Keep reading. It says, but if you will not give him life, then take me, even me, like him, that we both may die the same day. And Eve cried bitterly and fell on our father Adam from her great sorrow. All praises. But Yah looked at them, for they had killed themselves through great grief, but he decided to raise them and comfort them. He therefore sent his word to them yes. that they should stand and be raised immediately. Over and over and over and over again, you're going to see that he sent who? Yeshua, his word, which we have now as the Holy Spirit, the Rowak Hokadesh, to do what? Raise us up whenever we fall. I want y'all to get this. That's why it's Come important on. to read the Bible daily. Yes. Because what does it do? It quickens our spirit. It, it raises does. us and lifts us up. Well, it gives you faith. Period. Mm -hmm. And he keeps saying, faith come by here and here and come by what? The word. You're not going to get it unless you read. You're going to read? All right. It says. Verse 4. What are you on? Verse 4. You're on chapter 6? Verse 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Chapter 6. It says, and the Lord said to Adam and Eve, you transgressed of your own free will until you came out of the garden in which I had placed you. So the Lord gives us free will. So we can see the what? Fruit that comes from us. Keep reading. Of your own free will have you transgressed through your desire Come on. for divinity. Desire for what? For divinity. Come on. And what else? Greatness. Come on. And an exalted state such as I have. See, there you go. They became puffed up, just like Satan. Yep. That's why Satan want to be like the most high. He said, you, you did this for your own divinity. You want to be in an exalted state. You want to have the, the mindset that I have. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. 
so that I deprived you of the bright nature in which you then were, and Ooh. I made you come out of the garden Ooh. to this land, mm. rough and full of trouble. That's Ooh. where we've been right here. He deprived us of our bright nature that we used to have. Now we're in a land that's rough and full of what? Nothing but trouble. <laughs> Sure Keep reading, please. That's a real talk. Come on now. At verse 6, it says, If only you had not transgressed my commandment and had kept my law, come on now. and not eaten of the fruit of the tree, which I told you not to come near. Come on now. And there were fruit trees in the garden better than that one. Listen, I told you don't come near this one. I had fruit trees that was better, smelled better, taste better than that one. I just told you don't do it. But you didn't want to listen, did you? You, listen, I gave you life and I gave you death. I told you that I was going to give you the land of milk and honey. But y'all want to go to a land and argue with me and don't want to do it. That's why you walked 40 years in the wilderness. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Then I had something even better for you, but you couldn't even see it. Y'all murmured. That's why he hates murmuring. Keep reading, please. One thing I want to mm -hmm. point out real quick. Mm -hmm. This has been the issue with human because what do we do? Yeah. Focus on what we don't have. That's right. Instead of what we have. Now they had a garden full of trees. Come on now. I said, Come don't on. touch this one. Now we're yeah. finding out that they the other trees was better than that one. It was way better. But they was focused on the one he said, don't go near. Why? Because once we, he said, the idle minds the devil's what? Workshop. So the devil came to that workshop. And you got to think it too much. And he draws us out and entices us by what? Our, our desires. desires. They desire to eat from that tree. They desire divinity. Come on. To be like the most Yes, high. greatness. And they want to be in an exalted state. Yes. And so this is why they was drawn to the tree. He told them not. Even though he gave them a better tree over there. Come Just on, same now. thing he do with us. Keep reading. All right. Verse, uh, where am I? At? Six, verse seven. Seven, go ahead. Chapter six, verse no, seven. No, no, no. Yeah. You haven't needed six. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's the one where he said. Okay, go ahead. You're good. It says, but the wicked Satan did not keep his faith and had no good intent towards me that although I, ha I had created him, he considered me to be useless and sought the Godhead for himself. Mm -hmm. For this, I hurled him down from heaven so that he could not remain in his first estate. Mm -hmm. It was he who made the tree appear pleasant in your eyes until you ate of it, but by believing his word. Yes. Again, he's using deception. Mm -hmm. That's right. He says, uh, and this is what happens when you guys believe these people's words, these visions they show you on TV, all these so-called deities that they're projecting and all this stuff. You guys believe Satan. Satan will interject himself and fool you every time. Yep. This is why we have to have the I'm Lord inside of us to get discernment. We, yeah. have to, we need discernment. Go ahead and read eight. Are you on eight? Yeah, I'm on eight. It says, thus have you transgressed my commandment, and therefore I have brought on you all these sorrows. Come on now. For I am God, the creator, who when I created my creatures, did not intend to destroy them. I didn't plan to do that. Go ahead. But after they had sorely roused my anger, hmm. I punished them with grievous plague until they repent. Until they what? Repent. Folks, I'm going to say this over and over again. You got to repent. You got to repent. Chapter 7, I'm going to read. Um, 10, go to 10. It says, but if on the contrary, they still continue hardened in their transgression, they shall be under a curse. For how long? Forever. For how long? Forever. How you show me love? First John 5 and 3. You show me love by following my laws. First John 5 and 3. What is sin? First John 3 and 4. For sin is transgressing my laws. He broke the first law. And the only way to cover sin is with blood. Blood is the only way to atone for sin. Just keep reading. I'm going to read. Then, oh, oh, real quick, I want to bring mm -hmm. out here about that last verse. Yes. It says, if you continue hardening your transgression, mm -hmm. then there's a curse forever. Yes. That's when you're turned over and become a reprobate. Romans 124, what's good is bad and bad is good. And when you read Romans 124, he says, because you want to do these things, because you've hardened your heart, he says, I turn you over. I make you a what? A reprobate. What is a reprobate? A reprobate means simply this, what's good is bad, and bad is good. Folks, these stories are mirroring exactly what's going on right now. Yeah. I'm going to read. When Adam and Eve heard these words from Yah, they wept and sobbed yet more. But they strengthened their hearts in Yah because they knew, because they now felt that the Lord was, was to them like a father and a mother. And for this very reason, they wept before him and sought mercy of him. 
Then Yah had pity on them and said, O Adam, I have made my covenant with thee, and I will not turn from it. Neither will I let thee return to the garden until my covenant of the great five days and a half is fulfilled. Then Adam said to Yah, O Lord, thou didst create us and make us fit to be in the garden. And before I transgressed, thou madest all beasts come to me, that I should name them. Thy grace was, was then on me, and I named every one according to thy mind. And thou madest them all subject unto me. But now, O Lord, Yah, I have transgressed thy commandments. All beasts will rise against me, and will, and will devour me, and Eve thy handmaid, and will cut off our life from the face of the earth. I, I therefore beseech thee, O Yah that since thou hast made us come out of the garden and has made us be in a strange land, thou wilt not let the beast hurt us. When the Lord heard these words from Adam, he had pity on him and he felt that he had truly said that the beast of the field would rise and devour him and Eve because he, the Lord, was angry with them, those with them too on the account of their transgression. Verse eight, then Yah commanded the beast and the birds and and all that move upon the earth to come to Adam and to be familiar with him and not to trouble him and Eve, nor yet any, nor yet any of the good and righteous among their prosperity. Verse nine, then the beasts did, did obeisance to Adam. They all came and they bowed down to Adam according to the commandments of Yah, except one beast. This is why I can never understand how people can have pet snakes. I can never understand this with a life of me. I cannot understand how people can have a pet snake. One lady said that she had a snake and she didn't know why every day she woke up that the snake would be stretched out next to her. She thought that he was just sleeping with her. So she finally went to the so-called um, the, the veteran, the veterinarian and the veterinarian said, no, 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 no. They do that. He was sizing you up. He's going to want to eat you. So what he does, he stretches out to see if he's big enough next to you. That's why she said she couldn't believe it. And after that, she, she got rid of the snake. You never trust a snake. The only creature that would not go bow down to Adam was what? A snake. Get this. Verse 9. Then the beast did obeisance to Adam according to the commandments of Yah, except the serpent against which Yah had wrath. He was had plenty wrath against him, and it did not come to Adam with the beast. Chapter 8. Then Adam wept and said, O oh, Yah, we that dwelt in the garden and our hearts were lifted up. We saw the angels that sang in the praise in heaven. But now we do not see as we were used to do. Nay, when we entered the cave, all the creation became hidden from us. Then Yah, the Lord said unto Adam, when thou was under the subjection to me, thou, thou hadst to bright nature within thee. For that reason couldst thou see things afar off. But after the transgression, thy bright nature was withdrawn from thee, and it was not left to thee to see the things afar off. Man, that's pretty deep. Man, that's pretty deep. What did, what did Moses have on his face? He had a brightness. And what was it? A veil, right? Right? He had to wear the veil to cover that brightness. And cool. They could not see things afar what? Afar off. They could not see things afar off. It ties right into the veil that was on Moses' face. Wow, this is deep. But only near at hand, after the ability of the flesh, for it is brutish. And when Adam and Eve heard these words from Yah, they, were, they went their way praising and worshiping him with a sorrowful heart, and y'all cease to commune with them. Go ahead and read this, Micaiah. All right, I'm on chapter nine. Chapter nine, uh huh. It says, then Adam and Eve came out of the cave of treasures and went near to the garden gate, and there they stood to look at it and yes. cried for having come away from it. Yes. And Adam and Eve went from, the, from before the gate of the garden to the southern side of it and found there the water that watered the garden from the root of the tree of life and that split itself from there into four rivers over the earth the only place that fits that folks is the north pole the only place that fits that is the black rock that they got there there's four rivers that come from it it's completely surrounded winds can't even touch and it goes all the way through the heavens it's a dark mountain that's completely metallic it's called it was called mount zion but now it's called black rock and ironically black rock is a corporation that owns most of everything on earth why? It's some of us being joint heirs owning everything on earth. These folks put it right in our face, folks. Mm -hmm. They put it right in our face. Go ahead. Verse 3. 
It says, then they came and went near to that water and looked at it and saw that it was the water that came forth from under the root of the tree of life in the garden. And Adam cried and wailed and beat his chest for being severed from the garden and said to Eve, why have you brought on me on yourself and mm. on our descendants so many of these plagues and punishments? So Adam was okay with it at first, but now he's like, man, why you brought on us all this stuff? <laughs> why you brought this on us? You know? But we know he blaming Eve, but the Lord blame him. Right. But he blaming Eve. The Lord ain't looking at Eve, just like you men. He not looking. Your house ain't right. He ain't looking at your woman. He looking at you. He looking at you. He ain't looking at your woman. He looking at you, just like he looking at Adam. And what did the man do? We always want to blame the woman. Mm -hmm. You can't blame him for things you're supposed to be doing. Let's keep going. Verse 6. And Eve said to him, what is it you have seen that has caused you to cry? And what number are you on? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm on uh, chapter 9. Okay, I got it. I got it. Verse 6. Oh, praise us. Go ahead. It says, and Eve said to him, what is it you have seen that has caused you to cry and to speak to me in this manner? She's like, why are you trying me? Why are you doing all this, bro? But, bro, you're talking to me wrong right now. What's the problem? Go ahead. Then he said to Eve, do you not see this water that was with us in the garden that watered the trees of the garden and flowed out from there? Yes. And we, when we were in the garden, did not care about it. But since we came to this strange land, we love it. Come on now. To use for our bodies. But when Eve heard these words from him, she cried, and from the soreness of their crying, they fell into that water and would have put an end to themselves in it, so as never again to return and behold the creation. For when they looked at the work of creation, they felt they must put an end to themselves. So they want to kill themselves. It's like, man, look at this place. We came, we came from a glorious state, and now look at where we're at right now. Man, I want to drown myself in the same water that we used to drink. I don't like where we at. This is how we feel right now. We feel this way because we came from a glorious state. We were first and he made us last. We're spiritual creatures put in a carnal situation. And this is why we feel internally like we just want to leave. We don't like this place because we feel like we're missing something where we are. We're missing that glory that we had when we can look into the heavens and we had the light inside of us. This is why it's so important that you go ahead and study to show yourself to be approved so you can be filled with oil so you can see that bright light in you. Once you get that bright light in you, now you can see things that are hoped for, but yet not seen. This is so important. Go ahead and read, Sister Micaiah. All right, chapter 10, verse 1. It says, Then y'all merciful and gracious looked at them thus lying in the water and close to death and sent an angel who brought them out of the water and laid them on the seashore as dead. Mm. Then the angel went up to Yah, was welcome, and said, Oh, Yah, your creatures have breathed their last. Mm. Then Yah sent his word to Adam and Eve, who raised them from their death. Wait, wait, wait. Who did he send? He sent again, Yahusha. He sent word. Yahusha, and it raised from what? From the dead. Did he not say in Ezekiel chapter 37? That there's bones everywhere and they were dead just like them. And then he put flesh on them and sinews. Then he breathed what? He breathed life into them. The same thing is going on now. The only way that we can get life is the most high. He had to come breathe life into them again. The angels said, man, the angels didn't even want to deal with it. They said, can you please do something? The word who you call Yeshua breathed life into them again. Because he's the what? The father. The father's in him and he's in the father. Go ahead and read. Verse 4, it says, And Adam said, after he was raised, Oh, yeah, while we were in the garden, we did not require or care for this water. But since we came to this land, we cannot do without it. Then Yah said to Adam, While you were under my command and were a bright angel, Come on. you knew not this water. He called him a bright what? Angel. Come on now. Verse 5 said, I mean, verse 6 says, But now that you have transgressed my commandment, you cannot do without water wherein to wash your body and make it grow. Mm. For it is now like that of beasts and mm. is in want of water. Mm. So they never got thirsty. Never got thirsty. Us, when we become spiritual, did he not say I'm going to give you living waters, deep fountains of water when you are thirst? But when you're in the kingdom and made new, you will never thirst again because you'll be immortal. You will never thirst. You'll be just like Adam and Eve was in the beginning. They didn't yeah. know what thirst was. Seven. Verse 7, it says, when Adam and Eve heard these words from Yah, they cried a bitter cry, and Adam entreated Yah 
to let him return into the garden and look at it a second time. He just want to go back and look one more time. He please let me go back and look at it one more time. Please go ahead. But Yah said to Adam, I have made you a promise. When mm -mm. that promise is fulfilled, I will bring you back into the garden, you and your righteous descendants. And Yah ceased to commune with Adam. So he says, when a promise is fulfilled, what is the promise? That he's going to gather us from the four corners of the earth. Then he says, when it's fulfilled, he's going to bring us back where? Into the Garden of Eden. So the place that we're going to be going is going to be like an Eden. It's going to be like a garden, tilled, sown. It's going to be a beautiful place. Chapter 11. It says, so I can, Then Adam and Eve felt themselves burning with thirst and heat and sorrow. And Adam said to Eve, well, so we shall not drink this water, even if we were to die. Oh, Eve, when this water comes into our inner parts, it will increase our punishments and that of our children that all sh and that shall come after us. Both Adam and Eve then withdrew from the water and drank none of it at all, but came and entered to the cave of treasures. But when, but when it, but when in it, Adam could not see, he could not see Eve. He only heard the noise she made. Neither could he see Adam. Neither could she see Adam, but heard the noise he made. And Adam wept in deep affliction and smote upon his breast. And he arose and said to Eve, where art thou? And she said unto him, Lo, I am standing in the darkness. Then she said, then said to her, Remember the bright nature in which we live while we are bold in the garden? O oh, Eve, remember the glory that, re that rested on us in the garden. O oh, Eve, remember the trees that overshadowed us in the garden while we while we moved among them. O oh, Eve, remember while we were in the garden, we knew neither night nor day. Hmm. Think of the tree of life. From below, which flowed, which flowed with, which flowed the water, which flowed the water, that should luster over us. Remember, O oh Eve, the garden land and the brightness thereof. Think, think, O oh think, that the garden in which was no darkness while we dwelt therein, where it says, whereas no sooner did we come into this cave of treasures than darkness can pass us round about until we can no longer see each other. And all the pleasure of this life has come to an end. Then Adam smote upon his breast. He and, and they mourned and the whole night until dawn drew near. And they sighed over the length of the night in Miza. And Adam beat himself and threw himself on the ground in the cave from bitter grief and because of the darkness. And they lay there as dead. And Eve heard the noise he made and the falling upon the earth. And she felt about for him with her hands and found him like a corpse. Then she was afraid, speechless, and remained by him. But the merciful Lord looked up, looked on the death of Adam and Eve, silence, and from fear of the darkness. They had fear of what? Of the darkness. We fear in the darkness right now. With no laws, when you're in the law, what he says, darkness means you have no laws. Right now, that's why a lot of us are walking around in fear. Because we're in darkness, we don't have the word of Yah. Without the word of Yah, we have no faith. Without no faith, we're walking in the utter darkness. And the word of Yah came upon Adam and raised him from his death and opened Eve's mouth that she might speak. Then Adam arose in the cave and said, O oh, Yah, wherefore has light departed from us and darkness come over us? Wherefore dost thou leave us in this long darkness? Why wilt thou, thou plague, us, plague us thus? And this darkness, O oh Lord, where was it ere it came upon us? It, it is such that we cannot see each other. For as long as we were in the garden, we neither saw, saw nor knew what darkness is. I was not hidden from Eve, neither was she hidden from me, until now that she could not see me. And no darkness came upon us to separate us from each other. So that's pretty deep. He says that darkness did what with them? It came over them. And then what did it do? It them separated them. This is what happens when a couple... They don't have the laws. They don't have the rules. They don't have the Lord's ways. They don't know anything. They're not said and show themselves to be approved. What happens is darkness comes into them and it does what? It separates them. It separates them. Just like the Lord, he separated light from darkness in the beginning. They're different entities. This is what happens to us. It's deep. It says, but she, but she and I were both in one bright light. I saw her and she saw me. Yet now, since we came into this cave, darkness has come upon us and parted us asunder so that I do not see her and she does not see me. 
And this is what's going on now with so many yeah. marriages. Yes. Men and women can't see each other. They're in darkness. Understand each other. That's right. And this is deep when we look at these parallels. When darkness came upon them, when they knew the Lord and it was going, their heart was in heaven, they could see everything. But once they started doing things with this world, darkness came upon them. They couldn't even see each other. And this is a married couple. This is the same thing that happens with couples when they don't follow the Lord's laws, judgment, statutes, commandments. Darkness will overtake them. And so where they used to be one, they become separate. Oh, Lord, will thou then plague us with this darkness? Go ahead and read this, Micaiah. Okay? What, what verse are you on? You're on 11, 13? We're on chapter 13, 13. verse 1. Mm -hmm. The fall of Adam. It says, then when Yah, who was merciful and full of pity, heard Adam's voice, he said to him, Oh, Adam, so long as the good angel was obedient to me, a bright light rested on him and on his host. So we had the nature of angels before we came to the earth and became lords and angels. That's why the Lord said he made man what? Lord and angels. Because when he came into this earth, his countenance is lower than an angel. Our first state was as the angels. Our second state is man is lower than the angels. Go ahead and read. Verse three, it says, but when he transgressed my commandment, I deprived him of that bright nature and he became dark. Mm. And when he was in the heavens and the realms of light, he knew nothing of darkness. Nothing of it. But he transgressed and I made him fall from the heaven onto the earth. And it was this darkness that came over him. Yes. And on you, O Adam, while in my garden and obedient to me, did that bright light rest also. But when I heard of your transgression, I deprived you of that bright light. Yet of my mercy, I did not turn you into darkness. Yes. But I made you your body of flesh. Come on. Which I spread this skin mm. in order that it may bear cold and heat. So why did he give us skin? To bear the cold and the heat. This is why you have flesh, guys, who you don't know this. The Lord said he gave us this flesh. You understand, so it can bear the cold and so it can bear the heat. This is why we have flesh and bone on our bodies. Now, keep reading. Okay. Um, hey. Something else that I wanted to point mm -hmm. out Go ahead. here, where he says um, in the beginning, uh, was he talking about Satan here? What are you talking about? Where he says, um, oh, Adam. So yes, that's what he's talking angel about. was obedient yeah, to Yeah, yeah, he was. So, and this is, this mm -hmm. is another reason why yeah. the fallen one mm -hmm. hates humanity so much and the demons too, because they were utterly turned over to darkness. But humanity was not when Adam and Eve sinned. They were given a yes, but it's even deeper than that. Mm -hmm. Satan had earth to himself at one time, right? Him and his minions, he had he had earth to himself, so he felt like Adam came and took what was given to him. Uh -huh. So it's deeper than that. He feels like he took the earth which was handed over to him. So this is pretty deep. Keep reading. All right, it says verse seven. But when I heard of your transgression, I deprived you of that bright light. Yet of my mercy, I did not turn you into darkness, but I made you your body of flesh, over which I spread this skin in order that it may bear cold and heat. Mm -hmm. If I had let my wrath fall heavily on you, I should have destroyed you. Yes. And had I turned you into darkness, it would have been as if I had killed you. Mm. But in my mercy, I have made you as you are when you transgress my commandment. Oh, Adam, I drove you from the garden and made you come forth into this land and commanded you to live in this cave and darkness covered you as it did over him who transgressed my commandment. Yes. Thus, oh, Adam, has this night deceived you. It is not to last forever, but it's only no. of 12 hours. Yes. When it is over, daylight will return. Because Adam thought that he was going to be in darkness forever. forever. He's like, is it, I'm going to be like this forever? He said, don't let this daylight deceive you. He said, this night deceive you. Daylight will return, but you got 12 hours before this going to happen. It says, sigh not, therefore neither be moved, and say not in your heart that this darkness is long and drags on wearily, and say not in your heart that I plague you with it. Strengthen your heart and be not afraid. This darkness is not a punishment, but, oh, Adam, I have made the day and have placed the sun in it to give light yes. in order that you and your children should do your work. Mm. For I knew you would sin and transgress and yes. come out into this land. So he already knew beforehand, because he has before knowledge, that Adam was going to sin. He knew it before the earth was made. So he made these things, you understand, so we can come out into it. The Lord has foreknowledge of everything. 
but he gave his children. You said, why did he make us perfect? Well, Ezra asked that question. He said he didn't make his children perfect because he gave them laws, judgments, statutes, commandments for what? To see the fruit that comes from them. He gave them choice because he loved them as a father should. He didn't want to be a dictator. He gave his children a choice of right and wrong. Go ahead. Where we at? It says, for I knew you would sin and transgress and come out into this land, yet I wouldn't force you, nor be heard over you, nor shut up, nor doom you through your fall, nor through your coming out from light into darkness, nor yet through your coming from the garden into this land. For I made you of the light, and I will to bring out children of light from you. Come on now. To you. This is why, boy, read that last one again. For I made you of the light. So we made, we're made, we made from the light. That's why we call children of what? The light. Go ahead and read. And I will to bring out children of light from you and light to you. So he says, I'm willing to, uh, every generation, Ezra asks, why did you make us perfect? Why did you make us all born at one time? Ezra, can a woman's womb hold 10 babies at one time? Well, no. Nor could the earth hold all the righteous souls or children with light in it at one time. Every generation, I take certain children to be in my new kingdom. This is what he's talking about right here. Keep reading. Verse 15, it says, but you did not keep my commandment one day until I had finished the creation and blessed everything in it. Then concerning the tree, I commanded you not to eat of it. Yet I knew that Satan, who deceived himself, would also deceive you. The Lord said, I knew this. So I made known to you by means of the tree not to come near so, him. So since I knew he was going to do this, I told you don't come near him. I told you don't eat the tree. I told you don't go near him. Go ahead and read. And I told you not to eat of the fruit thereof, nor to taste of it, nor yet to sit under it, nor to yield to it. Yes. Had I not been and asked, I'm sorry, had I'm I not, not been yeah. and spoken to you. If I would have said nothing to you now, oh, it'd be different. Adam, Go ahead and read. The tree, and had I left you without a commandment and you had sinned, it would have been an offense on my part. For no. Not having given you any order, you would turn around and blame me for it. That's why the Lord said, if you see your brother doing wrong and you see him sinning, correct him. If you don't, it's going to fall on who? You. But once you did it, you delivered what? Yourself. The Lord said, I would have to blame myself if I wouldn't have told you. But since I told you and warned you, it's on you now. You made that choice. Every man is his own what? Adam. His own Adam. Keep reading. Verse 19, it says, but I commanded you and warned you and you fell. <laughs> Come on. So that my creatures cannot blame me. Don't blame me. But the blame rests on them alone. So stop blaming the most high for our death and our sins. Adam made that choice, just like he gives us choice. That's why he tells us straight away, every man is his own Adam. You got a choice just like Adam did. I'm going to give you life, which is these laws, or I'm going to bring death. That's right. So you decide which one you want. Go ahead. And this is why he gives us these commandments. They're warnings to us, yes. basically. Even if we don't always understand why yes. certain commandments are in That's place. That's right. But we are actually in a time where we can see yes. the devastating consequences of not of following not them. Yes. Living yes. According to his and when we follow his laws, we see the peace that we get. We see also how the Lord feeds us every day and takes care of us. We see how he walks with us and talks with us. We see the light that comes from only him. All praises. What Verse number are we on? 19. Go ahead. Says, but I commanded you and warned you and you fell so Come that on. my creatures cannot blame me. Don't blame me. the blame rests on them alone. I'm on them alone. And oh, Adam, I have made the day so that you and your descendants can work and toil in it. And I have made the night for them to rest in it from their work. And for the beast of the field to go forth by night and look for their food. So he said, do you see that? The Lord said during the day. I made it so you can work and till your fields. But I don't want the beast to be on you and all of that. So what I did was I gave night. That's why you see the animals go out at night and feed. Because the Lord made it that way so they wouldn't interact with man while he was doing his work. The Lord's ways are so perfect. Do you hear me? Yes. When you hear these stories, it makes all the sense in the world. All praise the most high. Let's go. It says, but little of darkness now What remains. number are you on, please? Verse 21. Go ahead. Uh, chapter 13. It says, but little of darkness now remains, O Adam, and daylight will soon appear. So what he's saying is, you know, this time is about to end, and the next day is going to come. Go ahead. Okay, it's my turn. Then Adam said unto Yah, O Lord, take thou my soul, and let not me see this gloomy, this gloom anymore. 
or remove me some place where there is no darkness. But y'all said, but y'all, the Lord said to Adam, verily I say unto thee, this darkness will pass from thee. Every day I have determined for thee until the fulfillment of my covenant. And when I save thee and bring thee back again into the garden, into the abode of the light thou long, that thou longest for, wherein there is no darkness, I will bring thee to it in the kingdom of heaven. Wow. And again, y'all said unto Adam, all this misery that thou hast been made to take upon thee because thy transgressions will not free thee from what from the hand of Satan and will not save thee. Jeez. Wow. Where are you at? I'm on verse uh, three, three. Okay. It says, but I will get this, but I will, when I shall come down from heaven and shall become flesh of thy seed, get this. He says, I will become flesh of what your seed. You know, who that's Joseph and take upon me the infirmity, which thou hast suffered. And then the darkness that comes upon thee in this cave shall come upon me and all the me in the grave when I am in the flesh of thy seed. Wow, because we know Yeshua, when he died, what happened? He was in the belly of earth for what? Three days in darkness. This is what he's talking about. It says, and I, who am with, without years, shall be subject to the reckoning of years and to times and of months and of days. And I shall be reckoned as one of the sons of men in order to save thee. And Yah ceased to communicate with Adam. Then Adam and Eve wept and sorrowed by reason of Yah's word to them that they should not return to the garden until the fulfillment of the day decreed upon them. But mostly because Yah had told them that he should suffer, that he should suffer for their salvation. Wow. So it hurt them because to hear their father in heaven say that he going to suffer because of that. Because when he put his son, his word, he put him in a body, he had to sit and watch his son suffer. And he suffered a grievous suffering for us and for our sins. Just Makai, go ahead. The first All sunrise. Right, we're on. Okay. Chapter, what is this, 16? Yes. All right, chapter 16, verse 1. It says, after this, Adam and Eve continued to stand in the cave, praying and crying. Wait a minute, what number are you on? Um, chapter 16, verse 1. It the first sunrise. slightly different from yours. Okay, go ahead. It says, after this, Adam and Eve continued to stand in the cave, praying and crying until the morning dawned on them. And when they saw the light return to them, they they refrained or retrained, I'm sorry, from fear and strengthened their hearts. It says then. So you missed the first part. Mm -hmm. It says the first sunrise, Adam and Eve think it was fire coming to burn them. That's what it started out saying. Oh, this is OK. That's just the title in mind. Oh, OK. Got okay. you. No problem. Got it. I right, see. Go ahead. All right. It says, after this, Adam and Eve continued to stand in the cave, praying and crying until the morning dawned on them. And when they saw the light return to them, they, they retrained from fear. Restra yeah, restrained. Restrained. Okay, restrained. Restrain, not retrained. Restrained. Okay. They restrained from fear and strengthened their hearts. Then Adam began to come out of the cave. And when he came to the mouth of it and stood and turned his face towards the east, and saw the sunrise and glowing rays, and felt the heat thereof on his body. He was afraid of it, and thought in his heart that this flame came forth to plague him. Hmm, he was scared. He then cried and beat his chest. Then he fell on the ground on his face, and made his request, saying, O oh Lord, plague me not, neither consume me, nor yet take away my life from the earth. For he thought the sun was, was God. Hmm. Because while he was in the garden and heard the voice of God and the sound he made in the garden, he feared him. Adam never saw the brilliant light of the sun, neither did his flaming heat touch his body. So it says when he was in the garden, he did what with him? He feared who? And the Most High. So fear of the Most High is the beginning of what? Wisdom. So he had wisdom at that time. He lost it when he transgressed his what? Commandments. That's when the fear ceased. Go ahead. Verse 8, it says, therefore, he was afraid of the sun when flaming rays of it reached him. He thought Yah meant to plague him therewith all the days he had decreed for him. For Adam also said in his thoughts, as God did not plague us with darkness, behold, he has caused this sun to rise and to plague us with burning heat. They never felt heat before. They didn't understand mm -hmm. it. Go ahead. But while he was Thinking like this in his heart, the word of Yah came to him and said, 
Oh, Adam, get up on your feet. This sun is not Yah, but it <laughs> has been created to give light by day, of which I spoke to you in the cave, saying that the dawn would come and there would be light by day. Do you know, remember, Abraham thought the sun was the Lord, too. Mm -hmm. And the Lord stood him on his feet, too, and explained to him who he was when he thought these things. Go ahead, 12. It says, but I am Yah who comforted you in the night, and Yah ceased to commune with Adam. The chapter of the serpent. How many chapters are you reading? Uh, where are we at here? 348. We're going to read for until four o'clock. Okay. Mm -hmm. The chapter of the serpent. Then Adam and Eve came out of the mouth of the cave and went towards the garden. But as they drew near to it before the western gate from which Satan came when he deceived Adam and Eve, they found they found the serpent that became Satan coming at. Wait a minute. Get this. It says, in Adam and Eve, they found the, it's a serpent that became Satan coming at the gate and sorrowfully licking the dust and wriggling, and wiggling on his breast on the ground by reason of the curse that fell upon him from God. And whereas the aforetime the serpent was the most excellent of all beasts, and I want y'all to get this, before he became a serpent, and I want y'all to understand this so people don't get this, that's why I say the Bible is just bone. Before Say, before this creature became a serpent, this creature was a beautiful creature that all every animal wanted to go to. We're going to read this. Get this. But as they drew near to, to it, before the western gate, from which Satan came, he, and he had deceived Adam and Eve, they found the serpent, which became Satan coming at the gate, and sorrowfully licking the dust and, 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 and wiggling on, the, on his breast on the ground by reason of the curse that fell upon him from God. And whereas aforetime the serpent was the most excellent of all beasts, now it was changed and became slippery and the, the meanest of them all. And it crept on his breast and went on his belly. If you x-ray a snake right now to this day, you guys can Google it. You can still see his arms here, front forearms and his back legs. The Lord took these arms and drew them up and he made them crawl on his belly. This animal was so beautiful that the Lord said, because all these animals was so beautiful that everybody loved, he made him a serpent when nobody wanted to deal with him. Let me get this, verse four. It says, and whereas it was the fairest of all beasts, it had been changed and would become the ugliest of them all. Instead of feeding on the best food, now it turned to eat the dust. Instead of dwelling, instead of his dwelling as before, the be in the best places, now it lived in the dust. And whereas it had been the most beautiful of all beasts, all of which stood dumb at his beauty. It is now a abhorred of them. And again, whereas it dwelt in one of the beautiful abodes to which all other animals came from elsewhere and were where it drank, and they drank also from the same. Now, after it became venomous by reason of Yah's curse, all beasts fled from it, its abode and would not drink of the water that it drank from, but fled from it. So everybody used to, whatever this creature was, was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to see it. Eve loved that animal. And that's why it was so much, now I can see why that, that, that deceived Eve, you know? It was a beautiful creature, you know? And then when it deceived Eve, what did the Lord do? It turned into a serpent. Let's keep reading. Go ahead, Sister Kaya. All right, chapter 18, it says, the mortal combat with the serpent. Mm -hmm. When the accursed serpent saw Adam and Eve, it swelled its head, stood on its tail, mm -hmm. and with eyes blood red, acted like it would kill them. Come on now. It made straight for Eve and ran after her while Adam, standing by, cried Come because on. he had no stick in his hand with which to hit the serpent and did not know how to put it to death. Yes. But with a heart burning for Eve, Adam approached the serpent and held it by the tail when it turned towards him and said to him, Oh, Adam, because of you and of Eve, I am slippery. Mm. Go on my belly. Mm. Then with his great strength, it threw down Adam and Eve and squeezed them and tried to kill them. Just like a python, a bullet constrictor. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. But Yah sent an angel who threw the serpent away from them and raised them up. Come on now. Then the word of God came to the serpent and said to it, the first time I made you slick and made you to go on your belly, but I did not deprive you of speech. So snake is talk then. Mm -hmm. Even though he did all those things, the serpent still could speak. Go ahead. 
This time, however, you will be muted and mm. your race will speak no more. Mm. Because the first time my creatures were ruined because of you, and this time you tried to kill them. Yes. Then the serpent was struck mute and was no longer able to speak. Yes. And a wind blew down from heaven by the command of God and yeah. carried away the serpent from Adam and Eve. Where to take him? And threw it on the seashore where it was. And where? In India. Does not the Indian people. Worship snakes? Do they not sit there and they got this so-called snake god? Hmm? They had their babies. They got a god with eight snake heads. Snake. They the babies play with snakes. This is ancient it's people who've been dealing with cobras and snakes yeah. a long time, folks. The serpent was thrown into India. Yeah. This is why you see those practices in India. Wow. But Adam and Eve wept before Yah, and Adam said unto him, O Lord, when I was in the cave, I said this to thee. My Lord, that the beasts of the field would raise and, draw, and devour me, cut off my life from the earth. Then Adam, by reason of what he had befallen him, smote upon his breath and fell upon the earth like a corpse. Then came to him the word of Yah, who raised him and said unto him, O Adam, not one of these beasts will be able to hurt thee, because when I made the beasts and the other moving things to come to thee in the cave, I did not let the serpent come with them. These he should rise against you and make you tremble, and the fear of it should fail and uh, fall into your hearts. For I knew that the accursed one is the wicked, therefore I would not let it come near you with the other beasts. But now strengthen thy heart and fear not. I am with thee until the end of the day. I have determined on thee. So the Lord said at the serpent and the snake, If he says one thing, he said, Here, fear not, because I'm what I'm with thee. And he says, I'm going to be with you until the end time, to the determined day. When Satan or the Lucifer or the Beelzebub or the adversary comes and he tries to put fear in you, you got to make sure you're not scared, folks. You're going to be falling into traps. You're going to be mm -hmm. falling into all kinds of things because fear is going to set on you. One thing Satan has always done is try to put fear into Adam and Eve and with the offspring. Go ahead and read this, Micaiah. Okay. Adam uh, wishes to protect 20. Eve. Go ahead. Uh huh. Chapter 20, verse 1. It says, Then Adam cried and said, Oh, God, take us away to some other place where the serpent cannot come near us again yes. and rise against us for fear that it might find your handmaid Eve alone and kill her. Yes. His eyes are hideous and evil. But God said to Adam and Eve, From now on, don't be afraid. I will not let it come near you. I have driven it away from you, from this mountain. Neither will I leave in it the ability to hurt you. So when you follow the Most High, Satan does not have the ability to hurt you, folks. He can't do nothing to you. The Lord will drive him away. That's why you call on him. When you call on him, what is he going to do? I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Yahuwah, in the name of Yeshua. You will drive that serpent away from you. Yes. Keep reading. Then Adam and Eve worshipped before Yah and gave him thanks and praised him for having delivered them from death. Chapter 21, Adam and Eve attempt suicide. Mm. Then Adam and Eve went in search of the garden and the heat beat like a flame on their faces and they sweated from the heat and cried before the Lord. Mm. But the place where they cried was close to a high mountain facing the western gate of the garden. Then Adam threw himself down from the top of that mountain his face was torn and his flesh was ripped. He lost a lot of blood and was close to death. Meanwhile, Eve remained standing on the mountain, crying over him, thus lying. And she said, I don't wish to live after him, for all that he did to himself was through me. Then she threw herself after him and was torn and ripped by stones and remained lying as dead. But the merciful Yah who looked over his creatures, yes. looked at Adam and Eve, as they lay dead, and he sent his word to them and raised them. This is what's happened in Ezekiel 37. He's looking at his creatures who lay dead spiritually and carnally. And what he's doing to raise us up, he's sending who? The word. The word is what raises us up. Just like then, it's just like now. And said to, to Adam, O oh Adam, all this misery which you have brought on yourself will have no effect against my rule. Yes. Will it alter the covenant of the 5,500 years? All praise is Adam, a chivalrous mood. What does it say? Um, well, mine says Adam in a gracious mood. Okay, this one says something. Adam in a gracious mood. Then Adam said to Yah, 
I wither in the heart. I am faint from walking and I'm, I am loath for this world. And I know not when thou will bring me out of it to rest. Then the Lord said unto him, O Adam, it cannot be at the present, not until thou hast ended thy days. Then shall I bring thee out of this wretched land. Adam kept trying to hasten this thing. He kept trying to speed it up. Right. Man, he kept trying to hurt himself, kill himself, whatever he can do to speed you time. Can't Folk, change the prophecy. We cannot change prophecy. We cannot speed time up. The Lord keep telling Adam that, just like he's telling us. Everything has to fulfill Bible prophecy. The Lord said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my words never will. You can't do any of these things, Adam, because once I said, I'm not a liar. Once I said and spoken it, it must come to pass. This is why Yeshua asked the Lord, Father, if this could pass me, please let this death pass me, if it's your will. But it wasn't his will because he had to fulfill prophecy. Then the Lord said unto him, O Adam, it cannot be, be at present until thou hast ended thy days. Then shall I bring thee out of this wretched land. And Adam said to Yah, while I was in the garden, I knew neither heat nor, nor languor, neither moving about, nor trembling, nor fear. But now, since I came into this land, all this affliction has come upon me. Then Yah said unto Adam, so long as thou was keeping my commandments, my light and my grace rested on thee. What does that mean, Sister Micaiah? He says, so as long as thou was keeping my commandments, my light and my grace did what? It rested, rested on me. thee. Yeah. As long as you're doing what? As long as it's showing basically how our life will be so much better if we're keeping this laws judgment statute command grace and light that's that light that will rest yes. on us but when thou didst transgress my commandments sorrow and misery befell thee in this land and that's what happens to us sorrow and misery follows up we do not follow the most high and adam wept and said oh lord do not cut me off for this neither smite me with the heavy plagues nor yet repay me according to my sins for we of our own will did transgress thy commandment and thy and forsook thy law and sought to become gods like unto thee. Wow. When Satan and the enemy deceived us. And so we got to be very careful. Even though Yeshua said, did I not say you're gods? When he said we're gods, it simply means he let all animals come before us. He made us gods to this earth. He made all animals bow down before us. He even had the angels bow down before Adam. Understand. This is why the Lord said we're gods, but that does not mean that we're Elohim over him. There's only one God, which is gods of this earth. We're joint heirs. That's why he calls us gods. Verse 6, then Yah said again unto Adam, because thou hast born, thou hast born fear and trembling in this land, it says, linger and, it says linger and suffering, treading and walking about, going upon the mountain and dying from it. I will, tell, I will take all upon myself in order to save thee. So he's talking there about coming mm -hmm. down as Yahushua. That's a Husha. That's right. The salvation. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to stop right there. Uh, what chapter are we going to? We, write that down. 22. Write that down, please. All right. Please write it down. And we need to make mm -hmm. sure we make a note of that so we can finish when we come back. One thing, I, while mm -hmm. we're still in this, though, mm -hmm. Kaliah, let me see, mm -hmm. Kaliah Yisrael. Uh-huh. I think I'm saying your name right, sis. If not, forgive me. Um, they seem to think that in the garden, it's, it, the tree of life, that whole test was sexual. And sexual? I mean, Where'd that come from? That's what I'll, I'll ask her to well, There was nothing, sexual, like, there was nothing sexual. There was nothing sexual period in the garden. The garden is pure. It's perfect. There's nothing sexual. There's nothing mentioned about sex in the garden. Period. I don't know where that That's come why from. I was asked, like, where are you, where getting, you getting that, that from? from? There's no such they thing as put, sexual. They put Genesis 1, 29 to 31, where it says the most high gave us all fruit. So one has to think, what was the tree of life about? What? You he just explained it. Point where he gave them a all choice. The, the trees of the yeah. garden, except yeah. that one. He said the other trees are even better than that one. Exactly. He only told them that. Because he already foreknew that they would forsake what he told them. He knew that they would want to be like him and get knowledge in the word. It had nothing to do with sex. It had to do with obedience. Exactly. That's what it had to do with. It had to do with choice that he gave his children. When Ezra asked that question, why did he make us perfect? He said, Ezra, the reason that I may let Adam do that because I gave him a choice. I want to see the fruit that came from it. Just like with Cain and Abel. He only wanted to take the best into the new kingdom. Had nothing to do with sex. Not even mentioning sex in that passage. That is some doctrine of men. 
It has nothing to do with yes, scripture. Yeah, because I haven't seen that in any nowhere, nowhere. Jasher, Jude, nowhere, nothing, nowhere. Nothing There's nothing mentioned about sex in the Garden of Eden. About sex. Period. Sex ain't mentioned until after they came out of Garden of Eden. Right. That's when sex is mentioned. I want you to fill the earth and multiply. That wasn't until they came out of the Garden of Eden. They were like the angels in the Garden of Eden. So, okay, all praise it. I'm going to turn these comments back on here before we go. Let's see here one moment. How do I do that? I'm going to go back in here in the settings and to comment settings. Turn them back on. All praises. All praises to Most High. All righty. All praise the Most High. Uh, we've been on about four hours now. So we want we went through these lessons. The first thing we went to is deception. We want to talk to you guys. We talked to you guys about the Miami situation with the mall, people running, saying they're seeing these dark entities. They're seeing stuff in the mall, but nobody's taking pictures. There's no account of nobody being hurt. And a lot of this is done with heart machines and other machines, so they give you fear. Saying that, there is a time and there's places and things where we have what we call fallen ones, what you would call aliens, that's what they call them, who are basically demonic entities in their bodies. Um, these are fallen angels who slept with women. Their children died. This is their spirits inside of these so-called creatures, their demonic spirits. This is why when you pray to the Most High, you pray to Yeshua, you pray to Yahuwah, these demons start screaming, they holler. So we're learning that there's going to be a deception. Then I read you Zechariah. Chapter 5, verse 5 through 11, where it says there's a disc of lead, and that lead disc has fire coming from it because I had a vision. And in the vision, the Lord showed me a ship coming in. And as he showed me the ship coming in, he turned it over, and it had six on it. But the six was in three different colors as a six. So it was actually 666. He showed me that that would be deception of man. And so when we read Zechariah um, chapter 5 and verse 11, it tells you that there's a disc that's flying around, and the Lord says wickedness. It's a round disc with fire coming from it. And it says that it goes and it lands and sits on bases in where? Seir. Mount Seir. We know that Seir is Esau, Edom. It says it's wickedness. They have UFOs. You call them UFOs? That's what we call the ones on earth. The ones from heaven, we call them chariots. Swing low, sweet chariot, carry me home. Because they're going to come in, pick us up, and they're going to carry us home. So, the ones that you have here on earth are UFOs. The ones that come from the heavens are chariots. The ones that you have here, the Lord said they're wickedness, and they all have bases in Mount Seir. We all know Mount Seir is Edom or Esau. So he's letting you know express way, the, the ancestors let you know that when you see this, don't be deceived. That's why we went through Matthew 24. And when he says, let no man deceive you, he says, I'm going to come like lightning. If you don't, if they say I'm in the mountains or the hills, do not believe them. When I come, the sun is not going to shine, nor the moon. The stars going to fall from heaven, and the heaven going to roll up like a scroll. You're going to know when I'm here. So don't let them deceive you, and you running out, and you jumping on these ships, and then you're going to be just like the War of World, uh, uh, what is it called, War of the Worlds. Right. Watch the movie, War of the Worlds, War of the Worlds. Watch it yourself. Um, Tom Cruise is in that. And when he takes these people up, what do they spew out? Blood. So you got to be careful. They put it right in the movies. They're showing you. You don't want to be deceived, folks. This is why we have to keep our faith up. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. And this is why we're going through these scriptures. This is why we went through the book of Adam and Eve and showed you guys how Satan has always come in to deceive. And he always uses who first? The woman. And he never changes. And the man typically follows that woman. Hmm? So all of this stuff is being explained through scripture. And this is why you guys need to get the first book of Adam and Eve. And I want you guys to read it for yourself. Now, did you not notice how all the things that happened to Adam and Eve parallel exactly what we're going through to this day? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? All praises. All praises. What name did you get the name of God and the son? I use the Sefer. This is in Hebrew. Remember, when you deal with Jesus, Jesus is Greek. That's when you got the new King James and all of that. I use the Sefer. His name is Yahuwah. Yahuwah means he who breathes life, nail in hand. Yeshua's name is Yah saves in Hebrew. It means Yah saves or salvation. That's why whenever you see Yeshua in the Bible, it means, it means Yeshua or it means salvation. They're interchangeable. So that's one of the books we use. That book is the most accurate Bible. That's the one we use. Jeremiah gave us that. Um, he had a scribe, Baruch, write it for us. It was a secretary. When Greek captivity. This is when Jeremiah, of course, 
um, was talking to the people when the Ten and a Half Tribes was carried away. He let them know that, you know what? You guys are going to captivity. Y'all become worse than even Israel. You know, y'all even got your kings doing all the wrong thing. And so he let the people know, and he went and spoke to Benjamin, Levi, and Judah. Um, this is before 70 AD, before they were cast out. So he gave us that book, We're in Greek Captivity. It's one of the most accurate books you can get. So it's a good question. Uh, what other questions we got, Sister McCall? You got questions here before we? Um, I'm looking here. I just, uh, there's a couple of people. Somebody asked here, Ms. D, speak to you. please explain about the eclipse. Um, we've gone over the eclipse. Sister McCall, go ahead over the eclipse again, please. Before you so go, you can you can actually Google it. You can Google three, it yourself. Three solar eclipses that that came yeah. are that are coming across yeah. America. So two of them have already happened. The first one happened in 2017. Okay, I think three have happened, right? It's four total. Well, it's one more coming. Yes, yeah, four total. Two no, are made. It's three. It was three total. Uh huh. Okay, the first two came to make the first symbol. Right. That's that's making the um mm -hmm. Aleph. No, it had to be four then. Because you think about the all of this two symbols that it makes. Google images. It's three of them on the image. Oh, really? Yeah. Three what? Three solar eclipses, and then there is a lunar eclipse. There's a lunar going eclipse to too. Coming. Yeah. Um, yeah. I forgot when that. Because you got in order for them to make the symbol, you need one to cross the other. Well, no. The way it, the way they How'd come the first across is like. One of them plays two roles. Oh, that's yeah. the question I had. Right. That's where I'm at. So that'd be the but first the, one. Yeah, but you can Google you yeah. can Google image it and you'll see. Yeah. And just put the three solar eclipse yeah. coming across America. The first one made the symbol of Alpha. That's the first one, which means the beginning. And it came over America. Why? I got a book, America's the True Old World. If what it tells you is America's the first body of land to come what? Out of the water. Mm. This is the oldest land. This is where it started. Then the other symbol coming off of America on April 3rd, I believe, is going to show the last symbol in the alphabet. What is that, Sister Micaiah? The first? The last symbol oh, in the alphabet. Tob. It's Tob. Mm -hmm. Which corresponds with the number 400, by the way. And we know we're supposed to be, Abraham was told that his children would be in servitude for how many years? Over 400 years, and then they would be free. So it's symbolic of the 400 years is over also. And it's the last letter in the alphabet. It means the end. It's the end of America. This is where it started. And this is where it's going to begin. Which is where it's going to end, folks. So that's what those symbols are representing. This is why you see the earthquakes in Japan. This is why you see the fires all over the earth. This is why you see the so-called aliens running through the malls and so forth and so on. Because the end is coming. So there's going to be a major deception that's coming on the whole world. The Lord said that there was going to be temptation that's coming over the whole world, but I'll keep my children from the hour of temptation. A lot of people are going to be tempted to get on ships in these vessels that we just read in Zechariah, um, which is 5 and 23, was it? What was it? Zechariah 5, Zechariah 5, 5 through 11, that there's going to be ships, and the Lord calls them wickedness. They're metal discs that flies around the earth, and they have bases in Mount Seir. We know Mount Seir is where Edom owns Mount Seir. It's telling you that they're going to be running these bases. These are the same ones that you call your government today. They have plenty of these ships riding around and a lot of people are going to be fooled. And so you guys got to wake up and start getting your wisdom up. If you don't get your wisdom up, and I'm telling you right now, you will be bamboozled. You will be hoodwinked and you will be led astray. And so this is why we got to get this wisdom in. And I'm, the main lesson we did this lesson today to get you is so you don't have fear. Fear is total bondage. Once you have fear, now they can come in and get you to take these jabs. Now they can get you to take these so-called um, um, whatever it, whatever it may offer. be they whatever offer. New poison whatever new poison, you're going to fall for it. Not, you know, in order to know the future, you have to know what? The past. Okay, YouTube and TikTok are freezing. Why would they be freezing? Okay. All right. I was not freezing. I just think it's certain people. Try turning your Wi-Fi off. I think that's whoever, certain people, phone. yeah. Try turning your Wi-Fi yeah. off because I notice when I turn my Wi-Fi off on my phone, you won't get that. Yeah, yeah turn your Wi-Fi yeah. off and use your network. If you're on your phone now. Because it's not freezing on our end, so it means yeah. it's all going through fine. So that means the replays are going to be fine. Man, somebody said mm -hmm. there, Mrs. She's dreaming she's having a miscarriage, and then it happens. This is the third time. Wow. Well, that's spiritual. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just the baby in the womb. The Lord's telling her she's going to take the baby. And so the Lord comes to you in Job chapter 33 into a dream and a vision. He seals your instruction. So the Lord is coming to her, letting her know that this baby is coming with me. And this is the third time. It's for reasons. 
you know? But does that mean quit? No. The fourth one might be right, you know? But for whatever reason it may be, and I don't know. You what, know, it's good to pray and repent pray on and it, ask yeah. the most high for clarity on yeah. what's happening and ask yeah. them to bless your efforts. Yeah. You know? I don't know what that lady did in the past. I don't know what you've done in the past. Right. So I don't know if this is from the most high or is it just simply because her body is weak and is rejecting the baby cells and is rejecting them. But we don't know what tomorrow may bring. You pray on it. You ask the Lord, you understand, to heal her when she has the baby. Because we know that when you when you start studying this word and when you go and even when you deal with science, you'll learn that every baby that that woman had, every baby child she had whenever she was pregnant, that those cells stay within her body. Then you're gonna learn that when a woman gets sick and when she's when she's going through something, guess what heals that body? What guess what cells go attack that sickness? Her unborn children, or her ones who were born, who died, aborted, or whom died. Their cells go attack that sickness. That's amazing. That is truly amazing when you read that. And science tell you that. It's the children that when she was pregnant, their cells is what go attack the sickness in that woman's body. And this is why, it's another reason. The Lord said that a woman could be saved through childbirth. Now, when it says that, it just simply means because Eve transgressed first. And by her transgressing, you understand the Lord's laws. You understand that what comes from transgressing his laws? Death. But the Lord says through childbirth, she can be saved if she's righteous and if she's following the laws. Because why? Through childbirth is the closest time a woman comes to death. The closest time. But the Lord said, even through that, because you're bearing these children, and he said, these children are my inheritance, I'm going to save you. So this is why the woman can be saved through childbirth, even though Eve transgressed and sinned. This is pretty deep. And it's amazing how the children's genes actually go fight the sickness in the woman's body, any baby she's ever been pregnant with, even those that aborted or died or whatever. Those babies are still with you. So let her know that these babies are still with her, you know, in spirit. And, you know, pray on it. And we pray that the Most High heals her womb where she can have a baby. But how do you know he's not doing this so the children don't see what's coming on the earth? Right. I want y'all to understand that. Because remember, remember that. closed the womb. A couple of times, couple of times. In, in scripture. Yes, he closed he'll wounds close wounds, wounds too. Yeah. So he closed wounds sometimes so you don't feel the pain or the grief. It's a hard time to have children on this earth right now. You don't know if they're going to make it, especially if you're Israel. They can go out in the streets in their car and they get pulled over. And the next thing you know, they're gone. Um, they can go and get shots from certain people. And the next thing you know, those shots, because we are the hunted race, you know, they're sick or they become schizophrenic at a certain age because of the toxins they put in the shots and they're on a time period. So sometimes when we, and, and, I, and, my, and my heart goes out to you when these babies are gone, so the Lord don't let them see what's coming on the earth. Because we're going to have a kingdom, you understand, we're all going to be together. And all the dead, even those babies that have, um, have died, you're going to see them in the resurrection. All praise the most high. All right, Maria White says, how can I get baptized when I am not affiliated with any religion? And see, this this the brainwashing that we got to Well, first of all, of. baptism has nothing to do with religion. You see, religion means you have organized knowledge or organized words of different organizations. Being religious means you follow one God with authority. So your biggest thing is you need to be religious. Hold on a second. What that means is you need to just follow Lord, follow his laws, judgments, statutes, commandments. We're not affiliated to no religion. Are we, Sister Micaiah? No. We're not affiliated with no religion. People, aren't you Hebrew Israelite? No, we're Israelites. Hebrew is a term that was coined by the ish. That's really a religion. That's a religion. The because these That's a lot of these really guys religion. who you call Hebrew Israelites, um, they omit love. It's Pharisees and Sadducees all. Yeah. Not all of them. Because you got some good brothers from good camps. But most of them become Pharisees and Sadducees all over again. The Pharisees didn't believe in the resurrection. They believed in the resurrection. The Sadducees or Sadducees did not. That was the difference. They all believed in the letter of the law. And what our brothers and sisters are doing now with these other religions, they're trying to follow the letter of the law. Yeah, you, you, you mark the edge of your beard. Oh, you ain't got your scarf on. Oh, you ain't do that. But see, those are just semblance of things to come. They're just a shadow of things to come. We should be doing things in the spirit. So saying that, you do not need to be following no religion to be baptized because we don't follow religion. We're just religious. We worship one God with a reverence. That's the difference. So if you want to be baptized, what did what did um who that Peter said that? What do you need to do? Repent. Repent. That's it. 
Repent of your sins and get immersed. Simple as that. No extra. People tell you you need to take a class. You need to do this. Okay, if the Lord says he's coming like a thief in the night, you're going to be still sitting in the class waiting, huh? Where did that come from? Is that doctrine of the most high or man? It's doctrine of men. All you need to do is repent of your sins and be immersed. That's it. And then the next thing you know, the Holy Spirit has to do the rest because you got to be baptized also by the Holy Spirit, which comes into you. And if you've been baptized one time, you need not be baptized again. You only need one immersion. I don't praise the most high. Um, this thing uh, somebody asked me, oh, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Oh, good. Somebody asked me, was the jab the mark? <laughs> All right. I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> Have you seen as many people on earth ever dying before? You, 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 you answer this question for yourself. Have you ever seen this many people dropping at one time? Hmm? They show that when you take it, there's also Bluetooth going off. Hmm? And then they show the people taking it, the Bluetooth rests in their right hand. I'm just talking to you right now. Right. It has what you call Lucifer. Uh, I got to be careful because they cut me. Okay. All right. The bottom line is this. I'm going to tell you about that. The Lord said you got to have faith. Even if it is that, the Lord said, well, bond, but it will not cleave. The Lord says, even when you do certain things, I will protect you. That's why a lot of people are not leaving this earth. Because you got to remember, especially if we're Israel, we got a DNA that rejects all this stuff they're giving us. The Lord, did he not say, I knew these things before what, Mrs. Micaiah? Beforehand. Yeah. Before they even came on the earth. The Lord already knew what he was going to try to give us. That's why he put in our DNA to fight all this stuff. That's why they use us every time they want to find a medicine, they want to come up with experiment, anything, they use us. Why? Because our women have the Eve gene. All races come from them. Did not Esau come from her? Did not Ishmael come from her? All these races come from our women. People don't understand this. And so saying that, there's something in your DNA that's going to stop a lot of the things that they plan on doing to you. So stop worrying. If you follow the most high, don't worry about that, that, that miracle medicine they gave you. You keep your faith up. As long as your soul is right, no matter what happens, you're going to be saved. And remember, he's going to cut time short. He says, why did he say going to cut time short? A lot of y'all are worrying about what? Losing your life. He said, I'm going to cut time short for what? My saints say, because they're going to seek to do what? Kill you. So it ain't going to work because he's going to come like a thief in the night. By the time they think this thing going to take its course, a lot of people are going to be translated in a twinkle of an eye. Don't worry about it. Do I believe it's a mark? Of course I do. One thousand. One thousand. <laughs> Revelation 9 tells you what it is. It says they had a face like a man, hair like a woman. A, uh, it said a, a tail like a snake. And then it said a tail like a snake. And they had a what? A scorpion stinger. A scorpion stinger is a hypodermic needle. Then it says the third part of the earth was going to do what? Be gone. And what did it say was going to come out of the pit, Sister McKay? Say that again. Okay. Sorry, I'm looking for more questions. Okay. It that? says it's going to come out of the pits, that these serpents and these, these spirits will come out of the pit. And when they do, a third part of the earth is going to die. So saying that, um, yeah, I definitely believe it is. But, well, the four angels mm -hmm. are released. Yeah, Reverend Fraser's, Fraser's dry. dry. Revelation 16, 12. Released. Yeah. So um, Apollyon had the locust with yeah, the stingers. That's right. Those scorpion stingers are a hypodermic needle. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm gonna that ask you a is. question. When you it's see the scorpion stingers, okay, let's get this. With that, you ask me that question. When you see people in the angel of death, because the angel who released the angels released, right? Right. The four angels. So when these angels, way, what the third part of the earth. So when you see these people, what are these people doing? They're all like this, like they see something. And they all go in the same circle. Same they all circle. do the same thing in a circle. Spin, yeah. And they be looking like they're trying to fight something off. That's the angel coming. That's those angels coming to grab them. Yeah. They see them before they come. Many videos yeah. showing this. They're called reapers. We're fishermen. Yeah. These are reapers that are going out. But do you worry about it? If you're reading this word and you're studying to show yourself to be approved, it's going to ward off all of that stuff. And reapers cannot come grab you. I need you to clear up something on here. This is huh? Elijah Yesharel. She clearly what? misunderstood something what? you said. About she's what? thinking you're saying Adam and Eve never had sex. And what? she's insisting on the um 
on the whole test that Adam and Eve had eating from the tree yeah. being about sex that okay. the uh, serpent uh, so, was a man and I'm like what, what are you getting, getting there from the Lord said he was a snake there. But she's reading what? the Mayan Bible and something else. Oh, well, that's why. Listen, listen, let's just stop. Let's stop. Let's stop. This is why the Lord told you don't be all over the place. Keep your eyes single. You're reading books you have no business reading. I don't know what you're reading. So I'm not going to. The first Corinthians 14 33, the Lord says, not the author of confusion. You're bringing confusion, sister. So let me clarify this real quick. In the Garden of Eden, there was a creature, and that creature was beautiful. It was so beautiful, everything wanted to eat with it. But that creature is the same one that Satan spoke to. Satan spoke to that creature and that creature went to Eve and talked to Eve and convinced Eve to eat from a tree she shouldn't, even though she had trees much better. Now saying that, it had nothing to do with sex. It only had to do with breaking the Lord's first commandments, eating from a tree that she shouldn't have. She ended up going to Adam. She convinced Adam to eat from it. Adam not listened to the most high, he listened to his wife, just like a lot of men do. Because a lot of men took that miracle medicine. Not They didn't want to do it. They listened to who? Their wives. And they took it. So he ended up, they both trans, They both transcended the first law. Thou shall not eat of the tree of what, Sister Micaiah? Good. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge. Right. Don't the eat of the tree. knowledge of good and, and evil. evil. They he weren't supposed want them to be aware of evil. That's right. He wanted him to have that wisdom and knowledge and not them. Because he knew once they did, they would start breaking laws backwards and forth, forth and backwards. So once they did that, and then you speak about no children or nothing in the Garden of Eden. Then he put flesh to flesh and bone to bone and took them out of the Garden of Eden. That's when he said, I want you to fill the earth and multiply. He never said into the Garden of Eden. It's not even there. So I'm not going to keep going back and forth because I'm going to tell you like the prophets. I'm going to give you the word. I'm going to give you the precept and I'm going to kick the dust off my feet. Now the dust is kicked off. If you want to go with this book of but Mayan you Indians, you or edify, but you're not telling us what where you getting this from. Where you getting that from? Thing, that's why I said I don't know where she's getting that from. About the word is going to line up, up with scripture, with each other like that. Yeah, where's that? Get, where's that, 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 that coming from? So, so we got thousands of books that say the same thing, but you got one to say opposite, right? And you like going with that one book. So don't worry about it. Listen, I don't even care about that. You know why? Because that means that it's not given. Many are called, but few are chosen. This is not given. But what we do do out of love, we're trying to correct you. And by this is why we just read the book of Adam and Eve, a deeper account. You don't see nothing about no Satan being a man. And, and then he coming in to sleep with Eve. And then, you know, Abel. Now we know that, you know, Cain, uh, yeah, you know, all this old bull crap. That, that is nowhere Cain in scripture. Satan, Where you get that from? He did have Satan. Come on. He had his spirit. But he wasn't his son. He was Adam's son. That's not part of the canons. Not in the Dead Sea Scroll. Not in the Sefer. Not in the. Not in the what you would call the. Um, Enoch, Jubilee, Enoch Jasher. Jasher. None of the, the books say these things. But you got one people. book of somebody who's an atheist or somebody who's a, buff, a buffoon, and you read that book and you regurgitate that vomit. That's vomit. It doesn't line up. Where do you get that from? Where do you ever see anywhere, anywhere written that Satan has sex with her in the Garden of Eden? Did you hear Adam and Eve have sex in the Garden of Eden? They didn't even have sex in the Garden of Eden. She was a companion, a helpmate. That's what she was for. They didn't have sex until they sinned. And they had to fill the earth. Doctrine of men. I'm going to leave it right there. I'm not going back over that no more. I'm going to do just like the prophets do. Give you the word and kick the dust off my feet and keep it moving. All right. Young lady, I pray that you get it. If you don't, it means they ain't giving it to you. That's all, all I'm right. going to tell you. Many are called, few are chosen. Simple as that. What else we got? All right. So somebody asked, are there any scriptures about infertility? There's a plenty of scriptures on fornication. Infertility, meaning mean? Uh, when you can't have children. Oh. You know, uh, I think about the book of uh, Samuel, First Samuel, where you it know, talks about Hannah. Hannah couldn't have children. Yeah. Uh, who else? Rachel. Rachel, Rachel couldn't have babies. While. Um, Sarah couldn't have a baby. She was ninety some years right. old. So, so the whole Bible speaks about infertility. Our ancestors, they yeah. prayed, and it yeah. was the Most High who opened their wounds. You know, there's herbs and things like that you can take to help. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's the Most High that gives. Life. I mean, because you remember Sarah was talking to Abraham. It's like, you know, what it is? You need to go pray to the Lord. 
you know, you need to go pray. He's like, did I withheld the baby from your womb? Was that Rebecca? That was Isaac's wife, I believe. When she entreated the Lord because she wasn't having a baby. Yes. That was actually Isaac's wife. And, and she said, you know, he said, woman, I've never held back from you. What you blaming me for? And she said, well, go to the Lord. You need to go pray for us. I can have a baby. And he did. Well, I know Hannah, Samuel's mom. She did the same she, thing. She, the priest thought she was drunk. Drunk, yeah. That was That's another how one. Yeah. Fervent her prayer was mm -hmm. to the most high about having him. And she actually said, you know, if you give me this child, I'm gonna give, give it to this the church child to you. Yeah. You know, to, to be and so and, and she's a great example of praying to the Lord. And you know, and, and the priest was that who was that priest? Ezra? No, that was uh what was the priest with her? Oh, man. Oh, man. I hate when I do that. Anyway, the priest told her he thought she was drunk. But what he did was he ended up, she ended up giving him to the church. It was Ezra. Samuel, yeah. And so she ended up giving him to him. And later, Samuel had to tell him even that his two children were going to be killed um, because they was guilty of um, sleeping with the women in the church. But, of course, we know later Samuel's children grew up and they was guilty of filthy lucor, which is simply that they was guilty of taking bribes. So, but he was prayed for. Samuel came about because his mama prayed earnestly. So there's plenty of scriptures that talks about infertility, you know, even to an old age, as Sarah was, and the Lord opened her womb as well. Um, let's think about um you had um I Jacob's two wives, Rachel and Leah. Um, what happened with Rachel, Sister Micaiah? Um, Rachel, she was uh oh, because because Jacob favored Leah. Right. I'm sorry, favored Rachel, Rachel over right. Leah. The Most High blessed Leah with uh, more children yeah. and also with the king and priesthood. That's right. She's the matriarch of, of the king and the priesthood line. And, and finally, he opened her womb up. And that's finally, when she had yeah. Joseph. And that's when she had Benjamin later. Exactly. But she ended up dying when she had Benjamin through childbirth. She was 43 years old. So saying that, the Lord will open your womb. Um, he can do those things through prayer. So that's a good question. Good question. Uh, somebody asked, can you baptize yourself if no one is around? There's there no such thing. That's some pavement stuff. A book, what? A book. What what book? The 54 book of Apocrypha. What? The Didache. You can't baptize yourself. We found some bones in that 54 book of Apocrypha. That's why I don't even really use it. But you cannot. I'm going to ask you a question. We, does the Lord ever change? Did anybody in the Bible ever baptize themselves? Just because I'm asking you that question. Did anyone in the Bible read, ever baptize himself? The There's no such yet. thing as baptizing yourself. How can you immerse yourself? Why do you think Yeshua said, John the Baptist, I need you to immerse me? What did John the Baptist tell him? No. John the Baptist told him, he said, I need you to immerse me. That's what he said. I need you. But what Yeshua said, no, 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 no. I need you to immerse me so all things can be fulfilled. You cannot immerse yourself. That's a pagan teaching, period. How are you going to dip yourself in water to my you baptized? Huh? It's always one of the Lord's children that does that. And it's always men, not women. Have you ever heard of a woman baptizing somebody? Who are the promises going through? Mm -hmm. Who get who's who's do, who's the ones in charge of all the judgments on the earth? Is it women or men? Right. Where are you getting this from? This is doctrine of men. It's not in scripture. Where have you ever seen anybody in scripture baptize himself? No such thing. Okay, somebody's asking about are we God? So, well, you, well, I just went over that already. What do you sure say? Did I not say you're gods? We're gods. We're gods of this earth. We're, he's the heir of this earth. We're joint heirs. We're not the most high. We're not like him. Of course not. We're not Elohim, but we're gods over his creations. That's why when uh, when you read a book about Adam and Eve, we just read it. We just read how he had the animals come down and bow down. The plants are obedient. The animals of the sea are obedient to him. Even the angels had to bow down to Adam. So when he say we're gods, that means we're gods of this earth, but we're not Elohim. We're not the God or the Elohim of all. He's over all. He created all. We're just gods over his creation because he allowed us to be. That's why he said, I made the world for what? Our sakes. He made the world for us. So we're gods in this earth or this world. That's what that means. Go ahead. Solomon said, "Well, I need you to uh, immerse me." <laughs> yeah, well, no problem. In March, we're having one towards the end of March. No, no, this is what we're going to do. Uh -huh. Next week, I'm going to have these lessons done. I'm already started on holy days because it's totally different from what they're telling you. 
So next week, I'm going to talk about the holy days and I'm going to have the dates of the immersions also. I'm going to go ahead and make that. I'm going to make that a priority. All praise the most high. And so we'll go over the immersion dates. We're going to have the immersions and we're going to go over also the whole the holidays, the holy days, excuse me. We're going to do both. So, but we will um, do another immersion. We're going to do it at a lake this time because it will be summertime. Should be warm, right? In March. That's why I said towards the end. It's going to be towards it's the end of March. Warmer. It's already kind of getting. It may be towards the end of March or April to make sure, you know? Right. Yeah, just to make sure because we don't want it to be cold, you know? Because we're going to do this one outside. Yeah, and then we got to be careful with April because you got April showers, a lot of rain coming in April. So, um, but we're going to go ahead and go through all of those things. And yeah, you, you got to be immersed. And if you're not immersed, you understand you're not taking off the old man. As simple as that. He said, isn't it blasphemous to call ourselves God? No. It's, Yahushua said we're gods. Somebody asked you or something. No, Yahushua said we're gods. The, the Messiah himself said we're gods. We're we not are, saying it. It's blasphemous to, to say we're equal to the creator. Yeah, it's blasphemy. Things. That's the difference. Somebody says, how do you do hold it if you're not part of a camp? How do you? We know how to do holy days. I'm going to go holy days next week. Um, you don't have to be a part of a camp. Well, we need to come together. The Lord says he don't want us to forsake coming together. So those holy days are for us to come together as a people. And you got to remember when we're doing the first one, which is what Passover, that's not a holy day for us. It's a holy day for the most high because he's the one who delivered us the first time. Just like he's coming back to gather us the second time. That's his day, the Passover. It's showing that he delivered us. And so what we do is we try to come together. If you can't come together, you know, you pray on it. You know, we want to make sure we do Passover. We're going to try to do Feast of Booths, go out, have a picnic, you know, and have camps, you know, set up our tents, you know, and certain things we're just going to try to keep. Some things we can't. It is what it is. We're in captivity. That's why the Lord straightway told you that no man judge you by Sabbath or what? Holy days. Because we're in the land and we can't keep up with everything. And guess what? The calendar is all wrong. The days are all wrong. You're thinking the day is Saturday. It may be a Tuesday. The way Esau and Edom and Rome changed things, you just don't know. And then we own the Gregorian calendar. It takes 11 days off, so they say 11 years off, it says. And not only that, it changes days. So we don't know quite where we're at, but what we do is we know the signs in heaven. We also know that when you deal with the new year, it starts on the equinox. That's March 19th, where you got equal times day, equal times night. That's exactly when the new year starts. From that day forward, we count 14 days to Passover. On the 15th day is unleavened bread, and we go from there. And when you go to Jubilees chapter 6, it tells you that the feast days are 13 weeks apart. And so we're going to go from there. So you don't have to worry. You just pray on it. If you can make it, you can make it. If you can't, the Lord said, don't let no man judge you by Sabbaths or holy days because you're in captivity. You can't do a lot of things. And this is why he gave us grace, repentance, and salvation. This is why Yeshua had to come. So that we wouldn't be under the letter of the law, because that's the letter of the law. All praises. Uh, for those who are still stuck on we are gods, read John chapter 10. Read it, just read it, please. Verses 34 to 36. Read it, read it, All just right. read it, just read it, please. All right. John chapter 10, verse 34 to 36. Now, this is Yahusha talking. This is the Messiah himself talking. All right. It says, actually, let me start at verse Sorry. 33. You might want to start further up. Start further up at 25. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to start at verse 30. Go ahead. You said verse 25. 25 okay. Start verse at. 25. John 10, 25. It says, Yahushua answered them. I told you and ye believe not. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. Yes. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. That's why. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So that's why the young lady who was sitting there talking about, um, you know, that Satan had a baby in, in the Garden of Eden and all this stuff. His sheep hear his voice. They know the truth, and they follow him. But other people hear him not. Verse Go ahead. And I give unto them eternal life, and yes. they shall never perish. Yes. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Mm. My father, which gave them to me, is greater than all. So he said, this is why he said we're gods. We're in the kingdom with the most high. Who did he give him to? Give us to? Yahushua. He gave us to Yahushua. Go ahead and read. It says, my father, I'm on verse 29. My father, which gave them to me. Who is, is in greater heaven. Greater than all. He's greater than what? All. He's greater than all. So and he's the Elohim. Mm -hmm. He's the God of what? All. He's Go ahead. The Almighty. He's the Almighty. He's the El. 
He's the I am that I am, and there's no other. Go ahead and read. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. No man can take him out of his hand. Nobody. Go ahead and read. I and my father are Ikad or one. They're what? Joined in unity. So the Most High and Yeshua, who's the Son, are one. Just like we are one. We're in the Father, the Son, and what? The Holy Spirit. Keep reading. Verse 31, it says, Then the Yahudim took up stones again to stone him. Our people want to stone him. The Jews want to stone him. Go ahead. 32, it says, Yahushua answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father, for which of those wor works are you stoning me? Stone me? I seen you many works, but they came from who? My Father. Go ahead and read. <laughs> but you want to stone me. Go ahead. Right. The Yahudim answered him, saying, For a good work we stone you not, but for blasphemy, because they were saying the same thing, you, you, but for blasphemy. You to my you the son of the most high. Because that you being a man make yourself Elohim. You to my you the Lord, he one and you one and the same. What you mean? So look what he said. This is what he said. Verse 34. Get this. Yahusha answered them. Is it not written? Is it not in written? Writing, yeah. I said, you are Elohim. Wait, he said, who said it? He said, he said in the writings, and he's talking about Old Testament. Get this. Said this I'm going to go to that scripture yes, next. Yes, go ahead. I said, ye are Elohim. I said, you are gods because you came from my father. You are with the maker himself. You were put over everything. The world was made for your sake. You are gods. I'm saying you are gods. Verse 35, it says that he called them Elohim unto whom the word of Yahuwah came. Come on. And the scripture cannot be broken. Come on now. Say ye of him whom the father has sanctified Come and on. sent into the world. You blaspheme because I said I am the son of Elohim. But you were called God yourself. And you mad at me because I say I'm the son. Exactly. Go read so Old now, Testament. Psalms 82 verse 6. Let's this go is read. what he was referring to. Come Psalms on. 82 verse 6. We bring this forward. Y'all need to get this. People take these scriptures and they mix them up. They'll take a precept and run with it. They don't read the forward and latter to give understanding. Without the Old Testament, you can never understand the new. They come hand in hand. One is the bones, one is the body. And they both, one is the bone, one is the meat or the flesh. And they make up the body, both of them. Go ahead and read. You know, I'm going to start at verse 1. Go ahead. Don't start. Read verse Go ahead. Two. Psalms 82, verse 1. Go it ahead. says, Elohim stands in the assembly of the mighty. He judges among the Elohim. He judges Wait. among the Elohim. So he said he judges among the gods. <laughs> verse 2. How why do you think? Did Charles Manson say it? Why are you trying to make them men? Were they not gods? Even the devil saying this. He's saying that we are with the most high, with his chosen, his elect, his firstborn. Why do you think they call us God? Did we not go with Moses and take out 21 nations? Did anybody die? No. You got to be a God's be for that to happen. Did Joshua, an Ephraimite, son of none, did he not go take out 31 nations and most were gods? I mean, giants? How can giants be killed if the people who did it were not gods? Are they not Fallen angels, offspring, which mixed between a god, yeah, an angel, and a, and a, and a man, a huh? Who can kill them? Only gods can kill them, and we're the ones who killed the giants. Even, Did not come on. Uh, even Paul said we would come be on, judging judges. angels. Come on, Paul said y'all take each other to court. He said, but if you're gonna judge God, uh, angels, should you not judge amongst yourself? And take the argument amongst yourself instead of going before Esau, Rome, and Ishmael, and all these other nations. Y'all gonna be judging gods. You're gonna be excuse me, you're gonna be judging angels. You are gods. Read one again. Uh, Start over. Verse one. Read again. Elohim stands in the assembly of the mighty. He judges among the Elohim. So he God himself, Elohim himself, judges among the Elohims. He calls us gods himself. Verse 2 says, right. how long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Come on. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Yes. They not, neither will they understand. They yes. walk on in darkness. All yes. the foundations of the earth are out of course. Yes. I have said, ye are Elohim. You're what? 
Elohim. So when you're talking about the children of Israel, we're considered gods. Why do you how do you think the people looked at us when we saw when they saw us marching in the desert with a pillar of fire before us? Man, them children, they're gods, man. Them the Lord's children. They're fire at night following us. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Not only that, let's think about this. When he said that, when he talks about the two witnesses, did he not say that they was going to be able to shut up heaven where it rained not? Rain down fire. Like did Joshua Elijah, not make it where it didn't Elijah. rain for what? Huh? Three years it didn't rain. He rained down fire from heaven. Who can only do that but God's? Did he not say that they're going to stick their staff in the water and it was going to turn blood red? You can't do that unless you are God. Hmm? Listen to me, folks. All of this that they're speaking about is talking about the Lord's children who have God-like characteristics. Okay, let's clear this up. Because he said, I always thought he was referring to demons. Okay, look at what verse 6 says. 6 tells now, you what it is. Psalm 82, read. verse 6. Psalms 82, 6. Go ahead. Said, Ye are Elohim, yeah. and all of you are children of El Elyon, or the Most High. So he's saying it's Israel. It says, but Keep you reading. shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. You're going to die like men and fall like one of the princes because you got carnal skin on now. Then he says, Come on now. arise, O Elohim, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all nations. Come on, we inherit what? All nations. So if Christ is the heir and we're the joint heirs, we're going to inherit what? All, all nations. nations. That's why we're called gods. I hope that cleared it up. I hope that cleared it up for you guys. I mean... People take scriptures and run with them all out of proportion, but we just cleared it up. We went old and new with you and showing you what it means. Simple as that. It simply means we come from the most high, that he calls us his firstborn. And that's why all the miracles happen to us because we're gods on this earth. But we do not supersede Elohim who made us all by no means whatsoever. Even the most high calls us gods. Yeshua calls us gods out of his own mouth. All praise the most high. Hallelujah. All right, y'all. Thank you all guys for joining us today. We appreciate y'all today. Um, and we really um, love you guys and thank you guys for joining these lessons. A lot was learned today. It was a good lesson, really good lesson by the grace of the Most High. We're learning about fear, how it's bondage, how there's a deception, even how there's UFOs that sit on Mount Seir or Esau's bases. We've learned that fear all is started in this incarnation, started with Adam and Eve with Satan, Lucifer, or Beelzebub, the adversary, who was the most beautiful creature in the beginning, you understand, and was turned into a snake and thrown into India. That this spirit is an ancient spirit that started in the Garden of Eden, you understand, with deception, and it ended in the world with fear. And one thing about fear is total bondage. And when the Lord's children have bondage, you understand, they have fear, they're in bondage. And once you're like that, you know, it's almost like he says this, once you're in fear, you can't inherit the earth. Why? Yeshua said, if you don't have faith, you cannot get into the kingdom. And so what Satan does, he wants to waver your faith. And this is why you have a lot of deceptions out here with this alien deception and all of these so-called um, blue beam things, the heart machines yeah. going off, and everybody will be running and running into these ships and these places. And you're going to give them permission to do away with you. So the Lord is telling you, do not be deceived. Matthew 24. If any man sell me in the field or the mountain, don't believe it. If you don't see the stars fall, the sun not shine, nor the moon, and the heavens roll up like a scroll, it has nothing to do with Yeshua. Now, we just went over why he calls us gods. It does not mean that we supersede. What are those two and precepts? people aren't to worship us. Either. Write those precepts. What are those two precepts you wrote Psalms down? Psalms chapter 82 and John chapter 10. Psalms 82 and John chapter 10. Yeah. Write them down, folks. And that doesn't mean that people are supposed to worship us. We're going to put these in the okay. lesson also. We have sons of God. No, by no means does it mean that people are supposed to worship us. What it simply means, remember the angels, when the angels came and, and they bowed down, and when when, the, when our disciples bowed down to the angels, they said, get up, get up, get up, stand up, stand up. I'm with your brethren, just like you. Remember, we was in the Garden of Eden, we was just equal to them. That's why they said, get up, get up, don't bow down to me. I'm like your brethren, because we're gods on this earth. That's why the angels say they are brethren, because we're spiritual creatures. We're the anointed, the elect. We're children of the light. Only when we do things that break the Lord's laws, we become children of darkness. That's why he said not all Israel is Israel or Jacob's children. Why? Some got Satan's spirit, but a lot of them got Beelzebub or the adversary. Excuse me. Some got Jacob's spirit, but a lot of them got Beelzebub or the adversary spirit. They have darkness all in them. Mm -hmm. And that's what separates you. Yeah. 
One thing I want to say too, and it goes back to what you always say about the King James being the bones. Um, and that's the one thing about the Most High. He is not the author of confusion. Everything that's of him is going to line up yeah. with his word. Yeah. Period. That's right. Like it's going to all line up. If it doesn't line up, it's not of him. That's Somebody, what you all have to remember when you're doing yeah, your research. Yeah. Somebody just asked me, are the ships of Tarshish going to pick us up first or are we going to go through the tribulation? We went through this whole lesson in Matthew 24. Read Matthew 24 at the beginning. He says, after the tribulation, he's going to gather us. This is when. The tribulation is what's the fire. That's part of what sets you apart. That's part of what lets the Lord know who's his children, who's not. Who's going to give up on him or who's going to walk with him. Read Matthew 24 all the way through. You'll see, and we went through that deception, that these ships and everything's going to come before the tribulation. The Lord say, after the great tribulation, then he's gathering us within a twinkling of an eye. But he's going to cut time short. Remember, everybody can be eating, sleeping, married, and partying when he comes. He's going to come like a thief in the night. So that question is a good question. Read Matthew 24. You guys need to start reading for yourselves. But if you want to go over the lesson, I already got the whole lesson. where We went over everything um, on my YouTube page, all my live lessons. Go to Y-A-H-B-R-I-L, Yehuda, Y-E-H-U-D-A-H. And then you can get the live lessons. Yeah. Um, we're going to be feeding the homeless. I'm going to mention the exact date in two weeks. We just ask people for donations for the homeless. Also, if you guys want to come to the baptism in March or the end of uh, beginning of April, um, we're going to look at the weather and see where you're at. Um, send me your names um, and your you need. I need your name, your phone number, please, yeah, and your and email. You want to, yeah, I don't know. Passover will be coming up too soon, so yeah. If you all yeah. want, want to, to do Passover, yes, physically right. here, you know, we need to get head counts and stuff like that. Too. Yeah. Uh, if not, it should be about April. Virtually. Passover is going to be April 3rd or April 4th when I looked at the calendar. Because the equinox starts on the 19th. Passover cannot be but until 14 days after that. You understand? And I think that came to April 3rd or 4th. Then we got the 15th is unleavened bread for seven days. So if you guys want to join us with the Passover, um, we used to do it here at the house with a, a few select friends and family members. And then I let some other people come, but I had a bad experience with a gentleman. So I'm not just letting people come to my house like that anymore. So what we'll do is we'll get a building or a place or a park or something where we all can come and celebrate the most high delivering us because he's getting ready to come back, to deliver us again. And so you're going to be coming back to do that. Um, somebody said April 22nd, Mr. Maddox Jr. Roy, I think that's a little too far out. I think I saw April 3rd. If you go to Equinox, this is how it works. You, you, your holy days start on the equal. You got to start the first day of the year. The first day of the year is March 19th. Google the Equinox when it starts. And I believe it's on the 19th. Then you got to go 14 days after that. And I think with me, um, my brother, Eddie Berg, um, who's helping me with the calendar, um, when we looked at it, that came April 3rd or 4th. And so um, I'm going to look at it again. Um, and then on the 15th of that, it's when unleavened bread for seven days, of course. And then we go 13 days after, at 13, uh, what is it, 13 weeks after that on the Jubilees? Yeah. yeah. Every 13 weeks is a new, a new holy, holy day. day. Every 13 weeks. Ju That's uh, based on the book of Jubilees. Jubilees, chapter six. You can read it for yourself. Go in the book of Jubilees, read chapter six. And so this is how we're coming up with these days. And we also know that we can't go by the Gregorian calendar. It's way off. We're doing the we doing like the scenes did. They always did what well, the first day of the week went, and they went from there. And that's why I went to the equinox. And so I had to find out when it's really the first day of the year. And this is when life springs forth, not when it's dead in winter. And that was about March 19th when I Googled it. All praise the most high. So, um, yeah. So anybody who wants to uh, join us, um, inbox me. Anybody who wants to um, donate, you know, inboxes or whatever. I put you my know. email yeah. on YouTube. Let me put it in yeah. TikTok too. And I probably should put it in the descriptions here also. Yeah. You know, I'll praise the most high. You know, our biggest thing is to feed the poor, the weak, the, the, the homeless, the will, you know, the widows. We need to help. We need to help people who are disfortunate. And so that our light shines bright. And that we you know, the only way to atone for sin, and the scriptures tell you, is with alms, you know, and charity. Charity is mean love. That's what charity is. Charity is not given to people like they'll turn it around today. When you read scripture, charity means love. Okay. 
Now, saying that, the Lord said the only way to atone for sin, you have to have give alms. Alms is giving to the poor, the weak, the widow, the homeless, the fathers and mothers, giving them money, food, clothing, whatever. But he said if you give these alms and you don't have charity, it don't even mean nothing. It don't mean nothing to give if you're not giving from your heart. It's like, okay, you're walking by a person and they ask you, can you give me something? And you know you got a 20 in your pocket, but you got a full tank of gas. Not only that, you know that your food family is fed and you got clothes on your back and you got heat in your home. But you know that 20 is not going to make or break you. But you say, if I give it to this person, they're probably going to go drink liquor with it or they're going to do something. That's not your, your position to be taken. Right. That's you. And you got the wrong mindset. The Lord says if they go do something wrong with it, whatever, that's on them. He'll deal with them. But with you, he's dealing with. He's looking at your heart. Remember, you could be entertaining angels and not even be aware that's of it. Right. Angels will disguise themselves as a YT person, as an Indian person, as a colored person, all of that. And you'll walk past them. It reminds me of a parable. And it said there was a man who was a tribe of Israel. And as this man was walking down, he, he was hurt and he was lame and he was sitting in the streets and he was hurting real bad. And so all of a sudden, a Levite, a priest came by and walked by him, didn't offer him nothing, didn't give him anything. But then all of a sudden, the man of Benjamin came by, looked at him and kept it moving. But then there was a centurion, a man who was not of his people. He came by when he saw him, he picked him up. Not only did he pick him up, he took him to a place where they could heal him. Then he told him, listen, I'm going to give you this money and this food, and I want to make sure he's clothed. So I'm going to ask you a question. As the scriptures say, who truly is your brethren? Is it those men of your bloodline, or was it the man who helped you? This is why we got to be careful, the people we judge out here. Those same people that you're judging could be the same ones helping you later. And I just want to give you that parable. I don't praise the most high. I don't praise this. So this is a good lesson today. All praise the most high. It was really good. And even myself, I usually don't say all that, but I felt like there was a good lesson with a real message in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kathleen Reed said, great, powerful, amazing, I'm praising. awesome. I open the lock teaching. All right. I learn and receive new information with clarification. Tell thy God, hallelujah. Oh, praise the most hallelujah. high. She said a key thing. Yes. I receive information with clarification. Come on. What? How many days have we gone into the churches? How many days we gone to these camps or these men? And we ask for wisdom. We ask for the word, and we get the word when we're hungry, but we come back for some reason starving. Yes. Hmm. We hear the word. We feel the word, but for some reason we have no understanding of the word. See, these words and these scriptures give you clarification. They give you life. The Lord said, "I'm gonna give you life, and I'm gonna give you death." Yes. If you listen to me, you understand. You'll have life. But if you omit my words, you're going to receive death. And a lot of people are spiritually dead right now as we speak. One thousand. One thousand. All praise the most high. Say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father in heaven, blessed be you, Adonai Yahuwah. Father, 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 you are the Father of light. Thank you, Father, for sharing your light on us today, Heavenly Father. Father, I pray all those who listen today, Father, that you lighten their hearts, Father, when it's heavy with the weight of this world. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you lift that darkness away, Father, and shine light into their loins, Father, to their bones, into their sinews, Father. I pray, Heavenly Father, today, all those who seek you with an open heart and an earnest mind, Father, that you come and you sup with them, Heavenly Father, through the grace of your Son, Yeshua, and the Holy Spirit that he left. I pray, Heavenly Father, all those things are in the dark, Heavenly Father, that you reveal to your children who are seeking, Father. I pray, Father, that you fill your children with faith and hope, Father, so they do not fall prey and fall into outer darkness, Heavenly Father, and fall to the hands of these men because they listen to doctrine of men rather than listening to you, Abba. I pray, Heavenly Father, for children who go through pains and suffering, Father, and these young people here who are on our channel, so many reach out, Abba, thank you, Father, to us and ask us questions. I pray, Father, that you give them this wisdom through these words so they can understand and step out of that darkness, Father. I pray for the couples here, the married couples, Father, that you Heavenly Father, put love in their hearts and peace in their heart. I pray that you put understanding in their hearts so they can talk to each other instead of at each other, Father. I pray that the women learn their positions and the men learn theirs, Father, so they can be evenly yoked, Heavenly Father. I pray, Heavenly Father, for those of our people who are older, Father, who've been studying a long time, I pray that you bless them. For as uh, you said, it's a blessing for the, the gray hairs to be there, Father. 
I pray that you bless them with your whole heart. I pray, Heavenly Father, you pour your spirit on them for their obedience to you, Heavenly Father. And I pray for the young father who've been so short on wisdom and understanding that you grant them, Father, everlasting life, Father. I pray for those who are sick, Father, with infirmities in their bodies, that us as a group of people right here, right now, praying before you, Father, that you heal them of their infirmities, that you show your power, your might, and your glory. I pray, Father, that you put your yoke on our people's neck. You said it's not, not, it's not only is not heavy, Father, but it gives them peace and it heals. I pray, Heavenly Father, for that light that only you can give to shine on us always. I pray for the handmaids and servants, your Father, today. All these people of other nations who are seeking you and searching out and have found a home, Father, in the refuge of your words, in the refuge, Heavenly Father, of your bosom, which is your voice, which is your word, which is Yeshua. I pray that you bless them, Father. You said you pour your spirit out on us and the handmaids and servants. I pray that you do these things, Father, abundantly, Father. You said that you will pour the form of rains on us, but even more. I pray for those rains, Father, to soak our garments and wash them clean, Abba, for you're the holies of holies. Bless you, Yeshua, our king and our priest, for without you, we would not have grace. Without you, we'd not have salvation. Without you, we would not ever be able to repent. Bless you, bless you, bless you. For you are the holies of holies, the heir of this earth. And thank you for choosing us to come here so we can be tried to be joint heirs with you. Thank you. And all things I pray these things in the name of your son, Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. All right. Peace and blessings. We thank y'all for joining us today. And on that note, I'm going to say, <laughs> may the most I bless you always. And I love you guys so much. Um, you guys have been a blessing whenever you guys come on and you text us and tell us how you having dreams and visions. And a lot of times I have to interpret these visions for people and these dreams. Yeah. And I see the light that's coming from. I just thank the most high for bringing that light out. I thank the most high for putting us in each other's dreams and visions. So now we're here together in the spirit. You understand? I thank the most high for just you know, waking us up out of that deep sleep and taking that drunkenness away from us, you know? And then now we can all come together as a family, study to show ourselves to be approved and not be boastful and prideful to think we know everything. No, we all fall short. I think the most high for putting love in us, not just for ourselves, you understand, but also for the fellow other people out here who serve the most high and love it, who are not of Israel. I think the most high for the light that he put in us because for so long, I know I walked around in darkness. For so long, I walked around in doubt. For so long, I walked around just not truly understanding, even though I knew the truth. A lot of times, there was no truth in me. I thank the Most High for taking that away. I thank him for showing me light. I thank him for humbling me. I thank him for making me a vessel. I thank him for giving me this beautiful woman, <laughs> that diamond that was in the rough. He's cleaned it off. He's chiseled. He's tapped. He shaped it. He shined it. And now what he's done is he's put it in my hand. My soulmate, I prayed for it as you should be praying for. And that everything I prayed for, he gave me and more. I just couldn't see it in the beginning. But now that we're in the latter ends, now that our eyes are open, I see it all. Just like you guys are seeing things now. The Most High is here right now as we speak. His spirit is here. He chose us. He simply just wants his children to choose him. Simple as that. Thank you. And may y'all have a very, very blessed Sabbath. And this is what we always need to do, come together, and the Lord will bless us always. I love all of y'all, and may he love you as well. Thank you. All praise the most high. I'm going to end the scream here.